A forecast first, sponsored by CIBM Bank. We are tracking severe weather. It has been calm here for the most part, but now we are about to enter into the time frame when severe weather is going to ramp up. And we're already starting to see that uh, we do have a new confirmed tornado warning that is in effect here for Cass County. This is going to be heading towards the Beardstown area before too long. We're tracking that right there as it uh, crosses over Highway 24 to the north and east, and these are racing to the north and east. This is just the beginning of what could be a long night for many as storms move across parts of central Illinois. We'll talk more about what to expect coming up. WCA3 News starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA3 News at 5. You're taking a live look at Springfield right now. You can see the camera shaking there from the wind. One of the many places in our viewing area under a tornado watch this evening. Good evening. I'm Brandon Morano. Jennifer's off tonight. It's a day to be weather aware. Our team's watching storms coming in from the west. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lighty joins us now. Kevin, you just told us about that new warning. What should people be concerned about right now? Well, here's the thing. Uh, all of us uh, kind of under the gun for the potential of severe weather. Tornado watch boxes were issued several hours ago, and you can see that here. These are called particularly dangerous situation tornado watch boxes and basically that is a heightened level of a watch that says this may be not just your ordinary tornado watch very strong long-lived supercells here are possible and we're just starting to see that you can see right now just for your purposes here champaign danville springfield effingham Bloomington, it's all calm, okay? There's nothing here right now. The big show is just coming in to our west. You can see the movement of those storms just coming into the far western portions of our viewing area, Cass and Morgan counties. But the big concern is with a confirmed tornado that we have here that is heading into portions of Cass County as we speak. Uh, we've had reports of almost three inch three inch sized hail that is baseball size a little bit bigger uh, with that as it's coming through now this is technically it the, the tornadic part of this is still in brown county there uh, east of mount sterling but heading towards beardstown uh, which is uh, right there on the cass county line as we take a look at this and put it uh, in motion there's your tornado warning that we've got um, we back it out just a little bit and notice how there are additional cells that are to the south and west of this uh, towards the st louis area um, back there uh, stretching all the way back into portions of missouri these are the cells that we're concerned about and watching that are eventually going to be moving in as we go throughout tonight let's just go ahead and, and take a look here at what we call the velocity scan of this tornado warm confirmed tornado and you can see there's a little bit of that rotation that's right there it's almost right there getting close to the accounting line where uh, those tornado warning boxes are adjacent to one another and so there's rotation showing up with this area right here so Beardstown you definitely want to be taking shelter uh, because this has been a confirmed tornado spotters out there seeing that and this thing is going to go right along the county the cast county line there to the north and east and that's kind of been the movement of all of these storms here so far and uh, latest movement on that storm uh, jacob have you seen a, a speed on the on the movement yeah, the last update was moving northeast at uh, 45 miles an hour. It seems to have slowed down a little bit, but so, uh, still moving at a really good clipper. And that's still pretty decent speed to move along. Beardstown will be there any moment. Yeah, some of these storms, and there's a new severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible tag on it with uh, some of those southern cells. That is going to include Jacksonville now. So that just coming out because of the cell that's to the south and west uh, there of Morgan County and so into Scott County there. So Jacksonville, you are technically under a severe thunderstorm warning, but attached with that is what they call the tornado possible tag. It says, okay, we've got severe thunderstorm criteria that we're meeting, 60 mile an hour winds. Uh, maybe quarter size uh, or larger hail, but there's also the possibility of some embedded rotation in there where we could have a tornado. So that just came out. Yeah, I see some uh, decent signs of strengthening rotation there west of Winchester on storm relative velocity, Kevin. Uh, that'd be into the Detroit area. That's still Pike County. It's a little ways away, but uh, you know, there's that little spot there. 
kind of popping up where it's been showing signs in the last few scans of strengthening, which is one thing. Uh, I'll mention too, Kevin, you know, we talked about this, the hail is likely going to be pretty large with both these storms as they move off to the east and northeast. So we'll watch all of these very closely here over the next little bit. So you can see some of that rotation with with this storm that's just coming in there. Um, so that's so there's I-72, of course, that comes right out of Jacksonville. Uh, there into Scott County. So this is going to cross there just into Morgan County here before too long. And there is a little rotation, which is why they put that tornado possible tag on where we definitely have some of that rotation it is a little bit more here to the north. And that's again our Cass County storm that's hugging right along the Cass County line. Uh, the tornado warning uh, confirmed still in effect, but Beardstown, if you're in Beardstown, you want to be uh, taking shelter uh, because that is pretty much the path that uh, this storm is taking right now coming right in to portions of Cat Central and northwestern portions of Cass County being impacted by this storm here. So uh, that is the largest concern that we have right now. As you can see, that is again our far northwestern portions of our viewing area that have this. I, again, I just want to stress because I know there's a lot of people saying, hey, what's going on? And it looks like they've just, uh, um, they've uh, put a new tornado warning out for some of these southern cells now as well. And this is still way back into Missouri. So this is what we were talking about that, that might occur. Or the storms coming out of Missouri may eventually cause us the biggest issues for tonight. So we haven't had much yet, but the show is just beginning with these cells. And I know you're saying, listen, I'm, I'm all the way out here in Decatur. How long before this is going to get here? Well, it's not going to take long before these storms actually cross into our region. I'll just show you here what the actual models have been predicting with this because I, I want you to kind of see. So here's all of our little cells coming across. Look how things begin to move in. Uh, after 6 p.m., they really ramp up there, I-55, and to I-57 there through 7 and 8 o'clock tonight. So that's the progression of these storms when they eventually get to us. So right now, we've got the storms in the far western portion of our viewing area that are moving in Cass County under the gun with that confirmed tornado warning. And that thing is going to be coming right into uh, Beardstown here in the next uh, five minutes or so because these are moving so fast that uh, it's not going to take long for these storms. And that's the thing, you won't have a huge amount of warning with any of these because they're moving at a very fast clip. The latest movement on this was about 45, but some of these storms are going to be racing to the northeast at 60 to 70 miles an hour, which is highway speed. Uh, so again, the rotation showing up just to the south and west of Beardstown right now and uh, lifting off there to the north and to the east. And that storm there, you can see it's also kind of, there's, there's a big line of storms that are trying to develop. So that's what we're watching is, does that turn into a line or do we stay with little individual areas of rotation as some of these little line segments could stay a little bit more discreet, but that stretches all the way back uh, into St. Louis where there is some of that uh, lining out. Looks like there have been some reports there, Jacob, of, of something there. Um, uh, I believe possibly a tornado or a funnel cloud there. Looks like as you've got your radar pulled up over there, showing when that line came through initially, um, what is it that you've got with some of those reports? Yeah, go ahead and pull me up on camera too if you can here. And uh, we want to talk about these storms. First off, uh, you see these little icons. These are reports that have come on in on camera two, please. And uh, we're going to keep with some, I think, Kevin, the plan at this point. Are we going to stay with us a little longer? Uh, yeah, a few minutes here okay. and um, kind of regroup it. And, um, We're supposed to have a newscast yeah. right now. Correct. The news today seems to be trending towards weather. Uh, these are reports of hail, first off, uh, in western Illinois. Hannibal, Missouri, parts of Adams, Pike County, they've had hail. There was a report of a funnel cloud on this storm. That was near Barrie on I-72. That's one of the last few exits before you get to the Quincy-Hannibal split there. I am concerned about this storm coming into Beardstown, Kevin. Uh, I don't think it's going to be very much of a visual look here, but there certainly seems to be something very close to Beardstown, if not just across the river. Uh, Beardstown sits right here. You got the Illinois River right there. This is Cass County. This circulation right here is on or just the northwest side of Beardstown and is showing signs of almost wrapping up like there might be something there. I'm going to pull over our debris tracker and look and see if we can spot anything in that same area. Nothing sticking out to me at this point from that, but the velocity signature on that to me suggests that two things. One, if there's a tornado very near Beardstown right now. Two, 
See all these bright blues here? That is some very strong winds. So the rear flank downdraft winds, this is the winds that come on the back side of the storm and help it to tighten up. Really looking impressive for parts of northern Cass County here. Uh, Beardstown sits here. You've got Frederick and uh, off to the north and Chandlerville is back here. This probably stays north of Virginia, but there are further storms to the south. Uh, you can see that little area of rotation now west of Winchester. Severe thunderstorm warning, tornado possible tag for Morgan County as that moves in that way. And then these storms down here, and I'll switch radars really quick. And uh, that southern storm, there's that rotation. It's still off in Missouri, but see how far out the warning goes? It goes up to the Macoupin County line. And so we'll watch all of those very closely here. Uh, if I take a wide view, and we'll just look and see Look at all these different warnings here. That was that initial round that we were worried about this afternoon. That's uh, midday. There's been problems to the north. There's more storms in the back side of this, Kevin, but certainly our activity for the day for the next couple of hours does seem to be focused on this. And if they can stay a little more isolated, and uh, that's something that we're going to watch very closely, Kevin, for the next little bit. Again, concern right now. Beardstown is downstream here. Jacksonville, North Jacksonville, up north towards the airport, out west of Jacksonville in 72, and then eventually. Uh, northern Macoupin, Montgomery counties that might head in the direction towards southern Sangamon and Christian counties. So we'll watch all of that very closely. Kevin, you're keeping an eye on things, I know, and uh, you want to talk more about what we're seeing here. Yeah. We've got the storm tracker out there as well. They are in the Springfield area kind of positioning. We've got Seth and Adam in there watching. So Kevin, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. Okay, guys. So what we've got here in uh, as you can see here on our radar, we'll switch over uh, over here. Uh, Beardstown right now, as you can see, those storms are rolling through those strong winds. See that, that blue color here? Really strong winds coming into Beardstown right now. Um, if there's not a tornado, there is absolutely damaging winds associated with that cell there as it kind of moves across uh, Highway 67. There, that's going to rock right along through Beardstown. We're going to be watching this cell that is southwest of Jacksonville, okay? And so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to toss things back over here, and we're going to do a little bit of news here as we watch these cells come through, see if we get any uh, further reports. Uh, the severe thunderstorm warning there for Morgan County does continue, but I want to watch that one carefully. It could start to increase a little bit, um, and we're going to see what happens with that storm that's hugging right there along Cass County and into the uh, Beardstown area right now. Right now, you are seeing the strongest of the winds right into Beardstown, and that's going to, again, continue to move right there to the north and east. Here's a little bit of a loop on this whole thing, but what we want to watch for are all of these cells along the entire state line there of Missouri and Illinois, and those are the ones that will eventually get here over the next two to three hours. All right, guys, uh, we'll send things over to Brandon. We'll do a little bit of news and then jump back over here with our weather coverage as uh, more warnings are for sure to get issued. I know this is going to be the non-traditional newscast here for many, but we're going to do what we can to get you what you need to know. Maybe sprinkle in a little bit of news here as well for you, but uh, we'll jump on if we get any other information. So, Brandon, over to you here, and I'll uh, talk about a little news. All right, thank you to you, Kevin, and to you, Jacob, as well, and our whole weather team. We know that you will keep everybody updated. And we are not the only ones watching. The Illinois Emergency Management Agency has been tracking the storm the past couple days. They've been following the storm on this monitor, showing which parts of the state the storm will hit and the intensity. IEMA has also been working with other agencies in advance of this severe weather they're making sure they have all their resources up and running. With a storm like this, you don't know where it could end up going. Uh, but it's important that we have people distributed out uh, far and wide throughout the entire state. IEMA has also been working with the governor's office to get other state resources ready if needed. We'll have more on that all night tonight and coming up tonight at 6 as well. Fire. All right, uh, welcome back. Uh, just the beginning of what could be a long evening. Let's just kind of set the scene here for you. I know you're saying, okay, listen, I've heard about you guys talking about this all day. What's going to happen or what's happening right now? Well, not much in a large chunk of our viewing area. Springfield to Decatur, Champaign down to Effingham. I mean, you can see just how much of our area is calm right now. But things are really developing on our western fringe. 
Cass County into Morgan County right now. And the Cass County storm that just blew through Beardstown, I mean, you can almost see the, the, the Boeing segment of this, probably where we had some really intense winds that probably just blew through there. And so that's where we're seeing there. There's the confirmed tornado with this is still there, but I'm not seeing as much of the signs of the rotation. And it looks like they have not carried that uh, further to the east. So uh, they'll probably issue a severe thunderstorm warning with that uh, if they don't have that, that rotation in there. But I want to point out the storm to the south of that. And that's the one that's going to be coming into Morgan County right now. And that little guy there has my attention. Um, so this is your classic kind of hook where you got the inflow coming into the storm, wrapping back around on the back side. Sometimes you get a little bit of rotation in there and that is heading for Jacksonville, okay? That's gonna be heading right there uh, in between um, and along Highway 60, or uh, yeah, 67 there. And here's the thing with this storm, it's moving really fast, all of these storms are. And then look even more south than that. This is not our area, but those storms there will eventually potentially come into portions of Christian County, uh, Montgomery, McCoupin counties there. We're going to be watching that. And just as I kind of mentioned there, they did carry on that severe thunderstorm warning instead of a tornado warning um, move through that just moved through the Beardstown area in Cass County. So uh, they did not carry that on, which is good news. But so the storm that we are going to be watching carefully is going to be right here into Morgan County. Let's put a little bit of a loop on this. You can kind of see. So what we're watching for are these individual cells and if they can stay a little bit more what we call discreet and not congeal into one line. If this becomes all sort of one long line of storms, you turn that into what we call a QLCS, which is a fancy term for a big squall line or basically a big long line of storms. And sometimes when you get that to occur, uh, then you're talking about more of a wind damage threat, less of a tornado threat. Now it's not a zero tornado threat, but you turn into 70, 80 mile an hour winds, which obviously can be, you know, just as bad in some instances. So we have to take that into consideration um, as well as this entire line begins to move through. The models, as I mentioned, have tried to keep these a little bit separate, but um, if they stay separate and discreet, then you're talking about a little bit of an issue there. So there is some rotation on that storm. They, I believe they still have the tornado possible tag associated with that. So this is kind of what we're looking at north of Winchester. So this is rotation on our storm uh, coming in to Morgan County. And we'll see if I mean, it's starting to kind of wrap up just a little bit more. And so that's why I want those of you in northwestern portions of Morgan County to just be paying attention to this uh, because that storm is going to come right there north of Linville and track close to the Jacksonville area right now. So just definitely be prepared because I wouldn't be surprised if before long they have to issue maybe a tornado warning with this. It's not out of the question. We're in an environment that is prime for severe weather tonight. There's a tornado watch in effect. And I know you're saying when I'm getting ready to show you this next graphic, okay, well, but what about Champaign County and Macon and Pyatt County? We're not under a watch right now? I thought you were gonna have severe weather. Well, these were two tornado watch boxes that are very large that were issued several hours ago that include parts of Missouri and Iowa. We anticipate another watch probably to get issued before too long to include um, additional counties here uh, to account for the ones that, that are not under. That does not mean you're not going to get severe weather at some point. It's just that watch is probably coming soon. The particularly dangerous situation watch is what they picked out here because the thought was a better chance for tornadoes to occur, some stronger tornadoes to occur. But I don't want you to think just because that area is not filled in yet that uh, you're in the clear. You're definitely not in the clear yet as the severe weather threat is going to exist, especially over the next four to uh, four to five hours or so. 
the good news is it is a fast moving system and it will clear the area uh, by 11 o'clock at the latest. Um, but right now is, is the crunch time. It's the time to make a plan in case these storms maintain their strength and eventually start to rotating even more. And I will say this, the conditions actually are going to be better for tornadoes and damaging winds over the next few hours. Uh, they've just kind of been ramping up. So a slow ramp up where we've had some of that wind energy there, but they really kick in tonight as we go throughout that six, seven, eight o'clock time frame, And that's why we do have a level of concern for these storms to produce tornadoes still, even after dark. You know, some of you say, well, after dark, a lot of times don't they uh, begin to fall apart? Well, there's so much wind energy out there that even though we're losing some of the instability, there is going to be that opportunity for these storms to maintain some of their strength as we go into the nighttime hours. So the areas of highest concern, coming right into Jacksonville. They've got that tornado possible tag. Uh, Weather Service not saying much um, with, with, with that, but I will say this is probably, it's probably starting to come down pretty good there on the north side of Jacksonville with some of the heavy rain. This is your hail. Some of that purple color is going to be your hail core that wraps back around. It is north of I-72 and where that rotation would be is right about here. Okay, and we can see that when we switch over to our velocity. There's your rotation where some of those brighter colors of the, the blues are kind of next to some of those greens. And so this is going to track there on the northwest side of Jacksonville for the potential for um, very strong winds. And again, it doesn't take much for these to spin up something in, in a quick little uh, tornado, possibly. Hey, uh Kevin, if you want to pull Max 1, I have the IDOT camera facing west from Jacksonville. That's at US 67. That's Main Street and Massey. You can see uh, off the top right part of the screen there, there's yeah. a lowered area there. So we've got a yeah. little good view. Yeah, a little snapshot of it here. Now that camera updates, I think, about every three, five minutes. It's not yeah. A it's not a live camera. It is just a snapshot, but you can just see. Uh, the, look at the very top, kind of top third of your screen there, upper right corner. Um, that little lowered area is 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 what he's kind of pointing out there, and it's it's perfectly placed to where you would be able to see, um, you know, some of that rotation if there was any kind of a wall cloud there. So uh, that's a good, a, a pretty good view of that storm. So that's going to track there just to the north and west of town, which again, there's uh, 67 that kind of weaves its way around Jacksonville, uh, but that's where the rotation uh, would uh, eventually be. So that's 67 that uh, kind of winds around there. And so right there, we were kind of looking straight west. So that was a, a good view and a good vantage point of that. So we'll watch that camera there. Unfortunately, we don't have any live cameras that, that are showing up there right now. I just want to kind of back out that view once again to uh, reassure everybody that as of right now, nothing going on in places like Springfield and Decatur. I think you guys will start to see this activity ramp up in the 6.30, 7 o'clock time frame to Champaign, um, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock tonight in Danville as well as all of this is moving off here to the north and east. So far, the Weather Service sticking with that severe thunderstorm warning with that. We're seeing, again, some <coughs> relatively uh, weak rotation in there. It's not super strong. Uh, just got a new updated radar scan there. And again, still looking at some similar characteristics with this. Um, as these all move to the northeast. So the million dollar question is, is will this turn into more of a wind damage threat or will we maintain the tornadic threat as we go throughout the course of tonight? Have a plan, know what you're gonna do, know where you're going to go in case uh, uh, these storms again get strong, move into your area, and uh, that uh, could be the case. Got an extra, just a new update on the, the camera. The new camera? Yeah, it's, it's updating again. Um, oh, it looks like it's kind of flashing back and forth trying to take that update, but you can see it kind of moving a little, yeah, a little closer there and whatnot. So I thought that that update flashing back and forth kind of gives yeah. you an idea on that. So, and that's what you kind of look for is kind of that lowering that that can occur. Um, so you can see something there trying to develop in uh, basically the the part of the storm where you get what we call the rear flank downdraft kind of coming down, and wrapping around, and sometimes can can help spin and get that rotation going in the storm. Good inflow into the front part of it, which is where you've got kind of the rain-free base there. And so we're gonna watch that carefully. 
see what that storm does as it tracks off to the north and east. There are several counties that have warnings on them uh, back to our west, uh, west of I-55. And all of those locations we're going to be keeping an eye on. So uh, actually, here's what we'll do here. Um, we're going to take a, a, a little bit of a break. We're going to possibly go into the CBS Evening News here and then come back with um, additional warnings as storms get a little bit closer. So uh, we're going to be sending it back to our regular programming here uh, briefly and be back with you as more storms move in. Again, things will ramp up a lot over the next few hours. Stay with us. All right, a new tornado warning just getting issued here. We were watching that storm uh, back towards the Jacksonville area, and the National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning with an observed tag on it. A confirmed tornado located near Jacksonville moving to the northeast at 50 miles per hour. So you're looking at it here and that storm right there north and west of Jacksonville is where we're seeing that rotation on this and the confirmed tornado tag that they have said uh, that they're seeing. And so it is kind of embedded in there, but we're seeing right here. You can see where the uh, this box is. I'm just kind of show you. Again, it's a smaller polygon box that does include Jacksonville up to the Littleberry area as you go north out of Jacksonville, seeing that. And so it is right here where that rotation is showing up. And there is now a confirmed tornado in Morgan County right now, including Jacksonville. That entire area has uh, rotation with it. And the Weather Service went ahead and repopped this from a severe thunderstorm warning straight to that tornado warning. Uh, they must have gotten some kind of a report. I uh, haven't heard uh, much from them on on that but some kind of report that is prompting them to go ahead and issue a tornado warning there so what we'll do is and you can kind of see it a little bit better on reflectivity right in that area there, there might even be kind of rain wrapped as well cast menard in morgan county is uh, with that some fall that is going to be associated with this possibly rain wrapped a little bit so don't be going out to try to find this it'll be a little bit more difficult to to kind of pinpoint exactly where something like that would be so definitely take shelter if you are in those areas with this moving at 50 miles per hour here's what i'm going to do we're going to do a little bit of a path on this thing racing off here to the north and to the That's east and so That's you can see some of those places that may eventually get be uh, impacted by this as they race to the north and east at 50 miles per hour very strong thunderstorm this is the first of what we anticipate to be several tornado warnings that could occur and right there on the northwest side of town uh, right there just crossed over 67 but as i kind of keep saying right there's your rotation so here is where it is on the north west side of Jacksonville, where they're seeing that and kind of coming into town right now, you definitely need to be taking shelter um, immediately with this storm as that rotation has been increasing on this. Um, and it, 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 it might even be some of that rotation that we're watching. And that, that's the thing with this storm here. When we look at it on the velocity scope, you're seeing a lot going on here, but there's a little bit going on right here and maybe something kind of back here along Highway 67 and 104 that comes into town. You just need to be in your tornado safe spot immediately if you are in Morgan County, Jacksonville and up to the north and east of town uh, towards Sinclair, down the line Ashland and O'Pleasant Plains. There you get into the northwest portions of Sangamon County and you find yourself in West Plains. This is going to make its way up towards Ashland before you know, the next half an hour to 45 minutes. Again, keep in mind just how fast all of these storms are moving at this time. So right now, the big concern for uh, areas of Morgan County, the Jacksonville area immediately. Um, let's see. Tornado warning is continuing. Also, just to kind of give you an idea of other areas that we've got still under severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings. You can see a big line here developing. And so what we have to watch for is these little areas embedded in what is going to be eventually a line of storms. 
how that's going to evolve. So you look down the line, so there's Lincoln, uh, there's Springfield. You're technically kind of there on the north uh, kind of side of town there where that storm eventually is going to go. The reason they have issued, that's a huge, what we call a, a large polygon area. It's pretty pretty long because they're moving so fast that they have to issue these out so far in advance in order to be able to warn because they're moving at that 50 to 60 mile an hour clip and they're actually going to get faster in their forward progression and their speed as we go throughout the course of this evening. That storm literally is right over Jacksonville right now where some of that rotation is showing up. That is going to head, as I mentioned, up into northeastern portions of Morgan County and eventually could come to the northwestern portions of Sagamon County here before too long as well. That rotation with that storm is, is, is showing up and they have had that confirmed tag. So somebody out there has, has seen something enough to say, okay, uh, we've got something where it's not just a regular tornado warning, but instead a confirmed tornado. I also think, uh, do we get, um, is there a new watch that, okay, so yeah, they new, expanded it, yeah. they expanded the, the tornado watch. So some of you who were, we were talking earlier, like, okay, what about the rest of us now? So it looks like now Pyatt and Moultrie and Shelby County is here, Macon County under now a new tornado watch and kind of expanding it here to the east. So that's why there is concern. I know you're saying, what about us in Champaign now? What about us down here in Effingham? Just because you're not under the watch yet doesn't mean you're not going to eventually be on it, but it is something that we are going to be carefully monitoring. I see our camera there in Springfield bouncing around a little bit, and we're going to be taking a look at that view. I know you guys have it up in preview if you want to go ahead and, 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 sh and show us the uh, that camera there from Springfield. We're going to be watching that storm as it... As it basically makes its way into the northwestern portions of the county. We'll have a good view there looking out to the west as that begins to move in. But that thing has got a lot of heavy rainfall and it's got a lot of lightning with it as well. And the potential for a tornado to develop will happen really quick with that. So we'll, we'll come back over to Storm Tracker Doppler real quick here and it will show you that that area of concern stretches from kind of Petersburg back down through Ashland and then back down to Jacksonville where that storm just rocked through the area. We'll see if any reports come in to us as far as um, any damage or anything that has occurred as a result. But I can tell you this, this is not even close to being done. These storms are all going to continue to strengthen and move into an area that is conducive for further development as we go throughout the course of tonight. I hope you can stay home this evening. Uh, you know, I hate to tell you to cancel your plans on a Friday night, but maybe you want to do that uh, just to stay safe. If not, you better have a plan of action of where you're going to go, what you're going to do, uh, because our storms here are going to get worse as we go throughout tonight. Uh, Litterberry, we were just talking about that. So the, the, the confirmed tornado is actually going to be a little bit more to the north, it looks like. So let me just look at this real quick. Tornado. It, it kind of looks like it went north of the airport, um, past Joy Prairie there. Um, that's, yeah, I think they're looking at that, but I, I'm, I'm still suspicious of areas. You know. Other areas. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's almost several little circulations that could be in there, but um, that's absolutely what we're looking at. It was right in there, the Litterberry area. Um, Arcadia along 78 and so that's where there has been a confirmed tornado with that so these these places need to be taking shelter right now right Jacob yeah we want to talk about what to do if you're in a tornado warning first off uh, proceed to your safe place and the speed of these storms moving very quick pace 50 60 mile an hour movement it's like you driving on the highway from one town to next here if you're in a mobile home you want to leave that mobile homes are great places to live but they're not safe during severe weather uh, cars as well not a great place to be here remember the three words we teach this in schools in down up get inside most interior room away from windows getting down as low as you can basement cellar cross space down as low as you can on the first floor if you don't have those and covering up with blankets pillows uh, we tell kids to grab a bike helmet and put it on because that'll protect head adults can do that too here uh, for that now we will give you the all clear still no all clears to give at this point we are also streaming if you are watching on tv at any point remember you can turn the volume all the way up watch from your safe place or 
open your phone up. We've got the Severe Weather Center open on the WCI3 News app, on the Weather app. Also, we're streaming there. Uh, those are places that you can stay connected. Folks that are in the Tornado Watch, remember, we're keeping an eye to the sky. You can start planning ahead for things if they get a little worse as we move forth. A watch means it's possible. A warning means it's happening, and some of our friends are seeing that. Uh, reliable alerts are a great thing to have, at least two different ways, Kevin. Uh, TV, live stream, your mobile device, whether it's our app or your wireless emergency alerts. I want to mention, if you're outside, those outdoor warning sirens work great. If you're inside, you can't hear the outdoor warning siren always, and they aren't necessarily the most reliable. That's why a NOAA weather radio is a great way to stay connected with the alerts inside your home. It's like a siren in your house for a tornado warning. Similar to a fire alarm in your house goes off, you know that something's wrong. Same thing with the NOAA weather radio. I will mention, though, there is an issue at this point with the NOAA weather radio tower, uh, WXJ76. We are aware of that issue, and we'll continue to uh, keep an eye on that here moving forth. Um, that issue has preventing us from receiving alerts in Champaign and in Piatt counties. We have information on what you can do elsewise. If you have a NOAA weather radio, it's been a couple of weeks. They found the issue. Someone's got a climb that tower and they won't climb it on a day like today uh, moving on forth. So that is something that we'll continue to watch and keep a close eye on. Kevin, we are uh, still watching those storms as they move on through. We've got that tornado warning for Morgan and Cass County now northeast of Jacksonville. Uh, areas west of Jacksonville give us a little bit more time before we give you an all clear, but uh, that's certainly something we're going to watch, right, Kevin? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, so this is what we've got, okay? Just want to show you again how different things kind of look. I know you're saying, listen, I'm in Champaign and Danville and Effingham. Uh, we're good right now. You are right now, but it's over the next two to three hours, things are going to ramp up even more. So let's do a little bit of a radar tour here of our area. And again, you can see as we put the loop on that there, those storms continuing to race off there to the east. And so all of this right now is the big area of concern that we've got. So what we'll do here, what I wanna do is kind of zoom in a little bit closer for all of these locations and give you an idea of what we've got going on. So let's take you here into portions of Cass County, uh, Menard County here, severe thunderstorm warnings associated with this area right now. You're gonna see right here is the corner of that tornado warning uh, there for portions of Morgan County. So let's go ahead and just kind of pan the map just a little bit there to the south there. We were showing you literary there where we've had the uh, tornado warning there's Jacksonville, really heavy rainfall with this and those strong damaging winds on this as well. This is continuing to move off to the east. So now you're getting in to Sangamon County, which has the severe thunderstorm warning and there's Springfield right there. So this is racing off here to the east. And so what we're going to be dealing with is a, a very long line of, of strong to severe thunderstorms and the potential for any of these to produce damaging winds in excess of 60 miles an hour, could be pushing 70 miles an hour as well. So it's kind of a large line. And what we can do, I, I, we, I won't get specific um, as far as like individual circulations right now, but if we just kind of take a look here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw out um, a line on this and it's going to basically uh, allow me to show you when the storms are going to be getting to certain areas if they are still on this kind of 50 to 60 mile an hour push. And so we're just gonna draw a line that goes along this area, okay? And then kind of bring this out. And let's say they're going, we'll, we'll just gauge a kind of around 54 miles an hour or so. So down the line, so you have an idea, you're not looking at places like Macon County for another 45 minutes in some instances there, um, but Niantic and Lincoln here in the next uh, you know, 20 minutes or so, this line is going to be there. So the question is, is where along our line are there going to be little circulations that cause issues from a tornadic standpoint? But that just gives you kind of an idea of the timing of some of these storms. And so what we'll do is we'll, we'll bring things back to that home view for you. We'll go ahead and put a loop on this once again and just kind of show you that larger view of this calm right now, but things are really starting to ramp up with that entire line. And we've got to look out for these cells all the way down here in St. Louis. These guys here 
are going to lift to the north and east as well. Those could eventually impact some of our uh, other counties, Montgomery, McCoupin, Christian County there, because this stuff right here, okay, this stuff is going to go right along through here, which you're going to want to watch for places like Champaign, uh, you know, back here into Moultrie County is what's down here. This is going to go up here to the north and to the east. And so that's kind of a look at what we've got out there right now. Uh, Jacob uh, with our storms and you can still see that's a pretty good storm, but maybe a lot of wind damage threat and looking for some of that circulation in a few of those spots. Uh, yeah, that's something that we'll keep a very close eye on, Kevin. First off, I want to mention I've been talking with Seth and Adam, and they are out in northern Sangamon County ahead of this storm, keeping an eye on it, so we will watch for them. Uh, they're going to watch this storm from a safe distance and try and stay ahead of it here. Uh, it looks like right here, I mean, it's a blob of reds and, and spilt paint and things of that sort. We're not getting a good signal from them. They're, they're in some rural areas, and we hope at some point that we'll be able to talk to them. Uh, uh, but just wanted to let you know I have checked with them uh, and with them. This right here, here's Ashland. You got Springfield right here. Jacksonville sits right here. And if you live west of Jacksonville, from downtown Jacksonville to the west, I'll give you an all clear. I want to hold off though for the rest of the area. That's because something catches my eye in here. I almost feel like there's some sort of inflow, maybe kind of in here. I mean, here's a core of a storm and, and something hanging down. So you got a mass of thunderstorms here that oftentimes it's hard to pick out on reflectivity. When I flip over to the velocity here, nothing stands out to me as imminent or, you know, some of the tornadoes they've had in other parts of the country here today, Arkansas, Iowa, I don't see anything quite like that, but I still think that with the reports we've had, there at least is something in this area, and we're going to watch that closely, but there's a lot of wind as well out around with these storms. Those bright blues, an indication of strong winds as it continues to move off to the north and east. Um, even this part here, this is west of Mason City. That should stay mainly out of our area, but if it does come back in, Logan, McLean County downstream, there's some strong winds with that. That severe thunderstorm warning continues all the way up from Peoria down down to uh, the Springfield area here. You can see that yellow box here is that severe thunderstorm warning for strong winds and uh, even a threat for some hail with that. Uh, and then we have that embedded tornado warning that's located here. So we're gonna watch this closely as it moves off to the east. Big picture view here, again, this stands out to me. This feature right here northwest of Springfield, I think that stays to the north and west of Springfield. If we want to pull our Springfield camera up, I don't know if you guys have that or not, we can take a peek at that. First off, look at the wind blowing that camera around, that camera looking off to the west. Uh, as we look at that, one issue we have is that uh, we turn the camera any further to the right, there's a pole in the way, and so we're not able to get the best view. Two, it's still a ways away, and I think the tornadic part of this storm stays northwest of Springfield. That's good news for us. We will have to watch further down the line, though, some of these individual spots. And while the tornadic threat for Springfield should at this point stay northwest, I can't rule out something else. But I also think, Kevin, that the damaging wind threat is really going to ramp up here as we could see some winds of 70 mile per hour plus with this as it moves on through. So certainly, Kevin, as we watch the storms, we want to see where they're heading next and keep, it up to keep folks updated well ahead of the storm, right, Kevin? So we're showing you the live radar, and I'm going to show you what is the simulated radar, what the models are trying to show us with this. Okay, so we've been kind of watching these couple different areas here. The million dollar question is essentially this. Do these stay a little bit more by themselves? And the reason that that is an important kind of factor and in, in what goes into what's going to happen tonight is if they kind of stay a little bit more, we call discreet on their own, they have a little better chance to tap into the environment that is more conducive for tornadoes. If it congeals into one kind of long line, that goes back to what Jacob was saying with the wind damage threat. So I, I take this into the future and we step it here just to around seven o'clock tonight. And notice we've still got some little segments here that we're watching from Bloomington uh, down east of Springfield coming into Decatur and uh, the Taylorville area. Watch what happens as this line gets a little bit more close to I-57. Then we're getting kind of a longer line uh, what we call more of a squall line with these, and that would pose more of a wind damage threat. I really think that it's over the next 90 minutes that that uh, to two hours that we've got a fairly decent tornado threat uh, that is going to occur. But look at that line as it gets to like Paris. That's a long line of wind with that, maybe not as much of a tornadic threat, but more wind damage associated with that. And that's at 9.15 tonight. How about that? By 10.30, 
it's got the thing racing off into Indiana. So the good part of this is it's a short window that you really need to stay weather aware. The bad news is there's a huge chance for still tornadoes and damaging winds to occur. So that is the radar view, the, the basically simulated view of what things are going to look like over the next couple of hours. What we are trying to determine is, okay, how many of these storms are actually going to be rotating and cause the potential uh, or be the result of uh, a possible tornado. Right now, all of our warnings are only severe thunderstorm warnings as of right now. So uh, just for the purposes of, of what's going on with our news that's coming up here at 6 o'clock, um, what we're going to do is, it'll, as long as any no other tornado warnings uh, are issued, we'll actually go in and, and start doing some of our news here um, and then come back to you if any other tornado warnings get issued. But right now, we're going to be kind of talking about just severe thunderstorm warnings that are in effect. But we're going to be watching that Springfield camera really close because, again, you can see that, um, is, is there still a tornado warning? There's, uh, they dropped that tornado warning there for Cass and Morgan County, um, I believe. It is still there. It is no longer confirmed, but I will say there was a report on Spotter Network about perhaps another brief touchdown southwest of Ashland. So uh, we'll see. We're kind of at that point where the National Weather Service will make their decision and decide, hey, do we extend this into Sangamon and uh, Menard County, or do we say severe thunderstorm warning, Kevin? Yeah, and so we got that view that's on the, the right side of your screen here is our, our camera in Springfield. Full disclosure to you, that thing is really up high. It, it is kind of sits on, um, um, uh, how do I put it, uh, not the the most secure of things and so it does naturally bounce around a little bit more than normal uh, but it is definitely getting 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 bounced around by some of those winds just adding to the uh the already uh kind of shakiness that that camera sits on because it does sit on top of the hotel there uh that is the tallest building in springfield so that's why you know as you go higher up those winds are even more but it, it is still going to uh, give us a glance at what these storms are doing and what i can do is i'm going to take the camera and actually pan it back a little bit more. Of course, there's a pole that's right there. That's the other problem we have uh, when we look at uh, uh, some of these storms. Um, but you can see that's kind of looking there. And you can see the lightning that is showing up with this. And that's one thing that I've not uh, shown a ton of is uh, how, many, how many lightning strikes are we dealing with uh, with this storm? And I'm just gonna switch things over on my radar here real quick and give you guys an idea of what we've got. And there's just a ton of lightning associated with this. We can take our Max 2 there. Uh, wow, that's that's constant lightning there um, that's coming into the west side of town, uh, west uh, portion of Sangamon County, New Berlin, uh, Gardner. Wow, that is that is a lot of lightning strikes. Now, the reason that I look at that and say, okay, what, why is that important? Well, we, we can gauge a storm's strength on how many lightning strikes there are. And, and just in that kind of confined space, I mean, that's 250 lightning strikes occurring here in the last... Uh, I believe it's a 10 to 15 minute time frame. And that oftentimes is one of the characteristics that can tell us, hey, this storm is, is maintaining a strength and it is uh, pretty intense. And so just by looking at the lightning, we can tell that and there's plenty of that going on. I'll switch that back off so you can get a better view. What is going to make this difficult for us tonight from a standpoint of, of kind of tracking is we're going to have this long line of storms. This is kind of turning into what we call this QLCS, but it's we have to look at these little individual areas that may eventually produce some rotation on them and, and a tornado could form. It's, it's not as clear as a, a discrete little supercell, and so it makes it harder to kind of see exactly what's going on. Uh, but our eyes are on the storms there. I can say this, there's, there's going to be some strong winds. I want to see what's going on there. Yes, that kind of seems like it's bowing out a little bit. Uh, yeah, they're going to let the, uh, the tornado warning drop and keep the severe thunderstorm warning with 70 mile power winds. There could be some golf ball size hail in a spot, according to the National Weather Service. Yeah, so we've had some hail reports here tonight. That has definitely been the case uh, with, with our storms. And so, whew, man, there could be some strong winds there coming into the west portion of Sangamon County because what we're seeing essentially is this may be trying to bow out just a little bit, which would be an indicator of really strong winds. That's going to be right on I-72. 
okay? And so really strong winds right on that leading edge. And then I just wanna watch this little area that's, that's there near Claysville that kind of like pinches off a little bit. We'll have to watch for those little very minute areas that can sometimes be something on radar that allows us to think that there might be a tornado still possible in there. That severe thunderous warning does have what is known as the tornado possible tag associated with it. So what that is saying is, is yeah, even though we're concerned about winds and hail, there could still be a tornado with that. Pleasant Plains right now, you guys are getting rocked uh, by that storm. So again, we're coming up here on uh, 558. We'll uh, right at 558. Since we don't have any of those tornado warnings in effect right now, we'll at least attempt to get to the start of our six o'clock newscast, but I got a feeling that they're going to be coming back to us uh, with additional warnings here, um, but we will send it back to our regular program here at 558. We'll try to kick off the newscast there at six o'clock and um, continue to keep you updated on what is going on. Some of our largest cities still to be impacted by this. Uh, we've also got Adam and Seth in the Storm Tracker. We'll check in with them coming up here as well. So for now, uh, back to our regular programming. We'll try to kick off the six o'clock newscast here after a small little break. This is your WCIA3 forecast first, sponsored by CIBM Bank. Well, here watching us in Springfield right now, batting down the hatches, uh, storm heading in your direction you can see on our camera looking to the north and west there dark skies flashes of lightning there is a ton of lightning on our storm coming into Sangamon County the good news right now no tornado warnings the bad news we have a lot of counties that have severe thunderstorm warnings associated with them but a very intense storm this is one of many that we are tracking here tonight we're going to have much more with our severe weather coverage coming up. WCA3 News starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA3 News at 6. This is the largest storm system that I've seen come through the Illinois area in the last four years. It's already started making its way through central Illinois. We've seen rain, hail, and strong winds. Good evening, I'm Brennan Morano. And I'm Jessica Coons. Jennifer's off tonight. Our weather team has been tracking this system for over a week now, and we have team coverage tonight with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lighty in the tracking center. Meteorologist Adam Sherwinski and forecaster Seth Bonoff are in the storm tracker, and Theodora Kulavaris is live outside of the Illinois Emergency Management Agency. But first, we go to Kevin. What should people know at this moment? Okay, uh, brand new tornado warning. We've got a new tornado warning confirmed. Okay, this just came out. Uh, two seconds ago, literally. Um, all right, let's take a look at this here. Okay, new tornado warning confirmed. I'm just having to read up on this because this literally just got issued. Observed tornado right now into northern portions of Sangamon County, northwestern portions of Sangamon County, southwestern portions of Logan, southeastern Menard County. Confirmed tornado here. Okay, so we're looking at this. I'm gonna, we're gonna get our updated. So that's what it is right there, okay? Near the Salisbury area. That is the rotation on the storm. That is going to be right there along Highway 97. Um, we're gonna be sticking with weather here now, right along 97, because we have a confirmed tornado. If you are in northwestern portions of Sagamon County, this is going to be north and west of Springfield. I have and the camera. Yeah, I was just yeah. pulling that up there. And so that's the camera. That's what we're looking at. And so I'll let you control that camera there just a little bit, uh, Jacobs, and, and kind of be painting around because this is going to be um, the view that we want. You can see that rain-free base there of the storm we're looking we we might be having to look through a lot of rain that's the problem there is there's a lot of heavy heavy rainfall associated with this so we're looking to that north and west where that storm is so the camera is right there in uh, the middle of springfield but we're looking off there to the north and west where that heavy rain and probably some hail uh, coming down but there has been a confirmed tornado somewhere in that uh, we think that there that's where that confirmed tornado is but we we may not be able to see it because of the very very large rain and hail 
shaft that is coming down, which is that darker area that we've got. But the Weather Service has confirmed, and they're saying that this is confirmed. So you need to be taking shelter there up into Menard County. Down the line, we're talking about Logan County as well. But uh, that is a pretty ominous looking uh, tower cam shot. Again, bouncing around because of the winds that we have. We're going to see if we get a little bit better structure that we can see anything, but definitely the lightning is showing up on this, and that storm is going to come already. It's uh, kind of crossing into uh, Cass and Logan County there. It's kind of right on the, the county lines. Sherman, you need to be uh, taking shelter um, at this point, and uh, Jacob has got a little bit of a radar update on there. We'll keep uh, coming back to the, the tower cam here and even check in with our crew Seth and Adam, who are actually in the storm track, you're hearing a little bit as well. So, uh, Jacob, show us what's going on on radar. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. First off, Kevin, we may play a game where that Boeing segment on the south side keeps surging forward and causes something to spin. I think that circulation is right in here. There's New Berlin. Here's Springfield. Capital Airport is here. This is the county line between Menard and Sangamon County. You see this little triangle right here? I think that's where the storm wraps up right there. So that's going to be south and west of Athens. This will move in the northeast direction here. Springfield proper, not in the tornado warning. They are under a severe thunderstorm warning. If you're in Springfield, severe thunderstorm Morning. If you live immediately north, there's the new frame here, and we'll show you the velocity in a second. Sherman, I think the time is now to shelter. Uh, we'll give an all clear for Cass and Morgan counties from this storm. This is now Menard and Sangamon counties. Athens, Sherman, off to the north and east, Williamsville, Elkhart. Upstream is Lincoln there to the east. This is 72 east. This will pass north of Springfield towards Sherman. Uh, we'll probably stay close to Highway 54. That comes out from the State Fair in Springfield to the northeast side of town off towards Mount Pulaski and Clinton. When we look at the velocity product here, first off, what stands out to me is this feature right there. That's the surging winds to the south. We've got a bright blob of bluish greens and whites here. That is where our confirmed tornado is here. It will be due east of Ashland on the north side. Uh, if I remember right, that's 121 from Ashland to Springfield, the state highway there, just to the north of there, about halfway through. And it will be carrying very close to the Athens community, very close to Sherman and points to the north. Williams, uh, Williamsville also in line to see this here. This is not a Petersburg problem anymore. This is not an Ashland problem anymore and uh, this is not uh, at this point a Springfield problem for the tornado threat but Springfield some strong winds are coming in from that particular storm and we'll keep looking to the south there's signs of that leading edge of wind now coming into the west side uh, let's go to the yeah so take, take, let's take our, our storm tracker there. I believe our, our, our fellows are actually literally driving by the National Weather Service. They, I saw the Doppler radar there for a second. I think, I think they're there in Lincoln. I think you're right. Yeah, they were, they were kind of in Lincoln trying to get a little more south and east um, to ahead of this. They're yeah. going to drop more south and east and kind of go towards the Mount Pulaski Decatur area to stay ahead of this storm. I think you're going to see the, the, the National Weather Service Doppler radar pop up here um, in a second. I think, I think they're on Highway 10 right now. And so uh, I, I, I saw the dome there, it looked like. Uh, guys, are you hearing? Um, yeah, there it is right there. I knew that was going to pop up. There it is. Um, are you guys hearing sirens there, you said? Sirens as we're exiting, Kevin, going into... We were, as we were going towards uh, east of town, getting out of town, uh, we heard them right as we turned off of Keokuk, going towards the National Weather Service. We, uh, first thing I said to Seth was, those are tornado sirens. And now we're moving out towards the east. We're trying to get ahead of the storm uh, before we can get it. And I think we just got a new tornado warning, it looks like. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, Let, let's go ahead and come back to us here. You guys keep tracking things out there. Um, and let's kill our audio, please. Um, and you can see here, we have got some really strong winds with this. And I'm looking at our Springfield camera once again because, wow, the, the heavy rain and hail here. And we're going to be watching that uh, carefully. That is a view as that storm uh, moves into portions of Sangamon County right now. Uh, confirmed tornado on this still. Um, if you are in Williamsville, you need to be taking shelter there. Even Sherman, um, that is a very intense storm. Uh, it, Springfield itself, you've just got some really heavy rain that's getting ready to come in there to the downtown area. Uh, but the um, the biggest threat is going to be just to our north, uh, just to the north and west of Springfield. Uh, the tornado warning uh, here in effect, Logan, Mason, and Tazewell counties. 
Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to click it back over to the radar now and kind of show you what we've got because uh, several counties here under these, these various warnings. Uh, so here's the newest one that just got issued. This is going to be north and west of Lincoln. And again, super, it makes it sometimes difficult to kind of see where some of that rotation is when you get into these line segments. But um, looks like we got a little something right there near Mason City. That's where some of that rotation is, a little embedded area right there. And that's going to be, of course, along Highway 10 uh, west of Lincoln. And you can see that's where the Doppler radar is in Lincoln that they just drove by that that Seth and Adam and the storm tracker are are located. And so we're seeing some areas of rotation in that storm. And we just got the updated kind of radar scan there. And so we're looking at that right there north of New Holland and the uh, Prairie Creek area and along Highway 155. Uh, that is a large area of concern that we've got with this. And then the confirmed tornado, I mean, just a ton ton of, of, of lightning, heavy rainfall, and probably some hail associated with Look at that, uh, that, that Jacob has pulled up there, um, coming right into Springfield. He, he's going to have the radar pulled up, but I want to show you just one more time our camera view. Yeah, I was about look to have this. the folks in the back uh, have Whoa. our... Whoa, look at this. Watch it. Hail. Take, 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 that, uh, take that full. Take that full. Take, take the camera full if you can there. We're just getting ready to wow. literally... Wow. That's going to be some very strong winds here, Kevin, um, and likely some hail in this. There could be some quarter to golf ball size hail with that storm. The tornado threat just north of town, but this is a big wind bag coming into the city of Springfield right now. That leading edge now, Jerome, it's coming towards Southern View. This will be Southwest oh, side. Our camera just got uh, shoved. You're looking at really? the sky now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. not surprised by that. Yeah. So we'll, and the camera, we just lost it there, in fact. Okay, so, so that's, yeah. that's what we've got there uh, that's just coming into Springfield, and that's right here, okay? That's that really strong, strong wind uh, that is uh, coming through the area right now, and that heavy rain and probably some of that hail there as well. The uh, rotating part of that storm is going to be north of that, and look at that, just a lot of wind in there as well kind of difficult to see where some of that rotation is um, but we've got that and then that newest warning this one looks a little bit better in terms of uh, the velocity on it we're looking at that little area right there those reds and greens kind of coming uh, close to one another uh, it's going to be there near Prairie Creek Emden if you're up in the Emden area you want to be taking shelter that that rotating part of the storm uh, could be moving right there to the north and uh, to the east and so um, I don't know uh, if we if we've got their audio issues cleared up there with, with Adam and Seth, let me know. I, I was hearing a lot of feedback when we were kind of talking to them, so um, um, we'll send it back to those we guys. If, if you guys are, are hearing us, um, tell us where you're at and what you're seeing. So, Kevin, right now we're in between Lincoln and Clinton. Um, we are not seeing much other than rain at the moment. We've got the camera turned uh, behind us, looking west. Kind of looking at that uh, that tornado warned one that we have north of Springfield. Um, we're thinking once we get out here towards Clinton, we're probably going to see where things are at from there and possibly turn a little bit south before then, so that way we can stay on that side of things. Um, we were out ahead of this for a while, just wanted to stay out of the uh, the intense rain region, so that way we could kind of keep better track of, uh, of both where we're at and where uh, the uh, where kind of the flow of traffic and stuff was. Um, Adam, are you seeing anything out your direction? No, I keep looking there, Seth. Uh, I'm not seeing too much right now. Right now, I'm trying to stay on the road. One thing, too, uh, that we've had issues even coming out this way, the winds outside of thunderstorms have been pretty strong and been blowing the storm tracker back and forth a little bit here. So we're going to keep an eye on that. We're kind of squ squished between two separate storms here, two tornado warnings. We're kind of uh, just to the east of where the Doppler radar is there in Lincoln. So we're outside of Lincoln now, moving east towards Clinton, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, both storms look pretty impressive here. Uh, both have tornado warnings, so we're going to keep an eye on both as we keep pushing towards the east. Uh, this might be one of the times where we get chased kind of back a little bit closer towards uh, Champaign. So we're going to keep an eye on these storms and go back and forth uh, and from there. But uh, so far, rain hasn't been too hard. It's been the wind trying to stay on the roads that's been pushing us back and forth. Back to you.
All right, uh, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, there, um, boy, things are rocking there still in, in, in Springfield. We did get the camera view back to us, um, but you can still see those sheets of rain coming through right now. Uh, we are watching an area here as well where this is a rapidly evolving kind of thing, almost to the point to where things are changing on the fly. There is a little area here up near the airport. Um, and I don't know if we're, we can turn the camera back up a little bit more, but right in here, there are some indications of, and we're gonna, I'm gonna wait for that new scan to come across, but um, uh, maybe some rotation up here between the airport and Sherman that we're going to be want, want to be watching out for. Uh, there's definitely some rotation there right southwest of Sherman. When this new radar scan comes through, you're going to see a little area right about here uh, where some of the greens and blues are going to be close to one another, which would be indicative of that rotating part of that thunderstorm and the concern for a tornado to occur. So if you're in Sherman right now and they just kind of... They just dropped a new tornado warning yep, right there. There it is. And so that's why... And that and that's is that kind of pointed towards the airport there? I think it is. I think I think so. Yeah, it's, we can't see anything, so it does make it uh, make it difficult. Um, if, if do we have some video to to, to show us here? Uh, okay, so um, some live video com coming into us here. Uh, our photographer Chris from Springfield. I mean, if you want to pull it up, you can uh, show it to us there. That is, is that live or is that uh, kind of taped there? That's live because that's a live look in Springfield um, as the storm is just kind of rolled through there. The heavy rain, we were seeing it from our tower cam view, but that's obviously a better view from the ground level uh, showing us uh, what to expect. Jessica and Brandon are still here with us on, uh, on the anchor desk. And Jessica, what do you got over there? So we have our reporters calling around to these areas. They just got off the phone with the county market there in Sherman. You were just talking about that area. They say about three customers are in the store and they are planning to head to the back of the store as soon as they hear sirens. So they have a plan in place and are keeping an eye on things. We also have Theodora Kulavaris, who is with the Illinois Emergency Management Agency in Springfield right now. She's been with them as they've been tracking this storm. She says they look concerned right now as they're tracking. She says it's raining very hard and we are going to go back to Kevin right now. Okay, we got a confirmed tornado here. Um, absolutely showing up on radar. I'm actually going to uh, come over here to the chroma key. If you pull up the chroma key for me here, guys, um, I want to walk over there and, and be on screen because... You want uh, me to drive, Kevin? Um, I, let me see if I can... Um, I'm going to go ahead and... and first off, Sherman, a Sherman. Uh, confirmed Sherman tornado right while Kevin's now. getting set. Confirmed tornado in Sherman at this time. Uh, Sherman, this is going to be a damaging, significant tornado for Sherman. Points to the north and east. Uh, if you guys can let news know, they'll want to head towards Sherman. Significant tornado in Sherman. Kevin? Uh, yeah, just give me a second here, uh, okay. Jacob. Go ahead and zoom down in on that for me. Um, oh, go ahead and put that uh, back into play mode if you can. It is in play mode. Okay, gotcha. Um, so right now in Sherman, uh, we have a confirmed tornado. Absolutely, according to what we have seen on radar, um, there is um, some really, really intense, intense radar signatures that are showing us um, that uh, kind of showing up here guys so definitely we need to be on the lookout if you're there in Sherman right now um, the radar signature was showing that we have debris that has been lofted um, into the air and so that is the big concern that we have because that storm just recently and let me just clear some of this off because I, I, I want you to be able to kind of see everything here a little yeah, bit better. Yeah, damage reports already coming in. Damage, damage uh, From reports. Sherman, okay. police reporting power lines down and a tornado on the north side of Sherman. Power lines down from what they're saying there. Law enforcement confirming this tornado as well as what we're seeing. That's Kevin. Whew. That thing just went through Sherman. Sherman took a, has taken a direct hit from a tornado. Sherman has taken a direct hit from a tornado. And you can see the uh, drop in what we call the uh, correlation coefficient on that, which is uh, the indicator that uh, uh, that there has been a tornado. Still really intense rotation. That is lifting up to the north and east. And so uh, it's going to be crossing over I-55 here as we speak. That area um, is definitely a huge area of concern that we've got there in Sherman right now as that lifts off there to the north and to the east. And so what we've got essentially are a lot of areas being impacted 
by this uh, this tornado. And I'm gonna jump back over again to our, our chroma key screen here and kind of show you what we've got. You need to be, and, and Jacob, make sure you pull up some of those tornado uh, safety uh, kind of tips and whatnot. Sure. Because I wanna be talking about that because look at this right here. We're gonna zoom in and take you right over Sherman uh, where this confirmed tornado has been. Hey, Kevin, we've got another yeah. tornado developing on the west side, or the east side of Springfield there. See that right by Clear Lake? Right by Clear Lake, right? That's a new one that's uh, developing very rapidly. I just wanted to point that out. Big debris drop out by Sherman. It looks like any moment, Riverton, Dawson. We've got to talk about that uh, from Riverton. what I'm seeing. I think Riverton, you might have you might have something there as as well. I mean Riverton, let's let's stay on stay on me over here on the chroma key guys. Um, I, I need you to stay on on me over here. Okay, so what we've got are there's there's a rotation that's right here. Um, there's additional rotation and confirmed. We are confirming this based upon um, with the radars and look at that. There it is finally uh, just kind of coming up here. I want to take you right down in on this because the the radar signature here is about as clear as you can get. Look at that. Uh, that came through Sherman. And yes. I, I got to tell you, because of the speed of these storms, Colon the radar is going to be just a, a tad bit behind because we're moving so fast. All that data has got to get ingested here. But this is a confirmed tornado that has done damage. And we can see that when we look at one of the, uh, one of the features here. Uh, that is that is known as the uh, correlation coefficient. And so what we're going to do is come back over here, take you back down in on this, and I'm gonna show you where we have got the debris that the radar looks at and says, okay, wow, and this thing is ramping up here as well. So there are multiple areas that we are concerned about right now, multiple areas that we have rotation and absolutely possibly, there could be two tornadoes that we've got ongoing here at this moment. And so look at all of these different warnings. I'm gonna take you back down here again to our storm right over Sherman. We zoom in on that. And what I'm gonna show you next is that correlation coefficient or what we call our debris tracker. And it's going to show right there. Now coming over there along I-55 and towards the Williams area. That right now is debris. Tornado came through Sherman and that debris is being lofted into the air. And Kevin, that debris is 7,000 feet up at this point. Okay, so that debris, as you mentioned, there's 7,000 feet up, which gives an indication maybe of how strong of a tornado that has been. But this essentially is where the, the, the tornado could still be, but kind of just think of it as it being maybe a few more miles there to the north and east because of just how fast our storms are moving here. So we're looking at that tornado debris signature right there, but I'm also maybe starting to see something there near Riverton. This right now, it is imperative for you. This is the tornado warning that goes into northeastern portions of Sagamon County. That is a huge area of concern that we've got. And just kind of back things out here a little bit more right there, just to give you an idea. Mount Pulaski, here's Logan County, the Sangamon County, northeastern portion there, there is Williamsville. But there are multiple areas that I'm starting to get a little bit concerned about. Um, we've obviously got that dropout and the correlation coefficient there, but possibly something there near Riverton. What we'll do is I'm gonna switch things back over to what's known as the velocity scan to allow us to see, and still we've got that there, but that right there has me concerned as well near Riverton along I-72, there could be two tornadoes 15 miles or so apart, one that just moved through Sherman, heading up there, crossing over I-55. I wouldn't be surprised if there is traffic that is slowed down there. Obviously, highly traveled road there along I-55. You guys can check some of the, the traffic reports for us. Uh, but our storm that is right down here in Riverton also showing that between Spalding and Riverton, but that's probably going to be, again, a little bit more to the north and to the east at this point. And so we've got to watch all of that here. Uh, Jacob, uh, unfolding here some dangerous weather right now. And the radar, again, trying its best to keep up with this because I, what are some of the, the latest movements on these? They're probably starting to really pick up in some of their, their, their forward progression and speed, but there are tornado warnings all along here now, Mechanicsburg, 
over towards uh, close to Iliopolis, uh, where that is occurring. And uh, we are getting in some reports here uh, of some of that damage. Uh, Jacob, what are you hearing over there? Yeah, Kevin, I want to mention uh, Sherman PD is reporting damage in the north side of town. We have a report of a house hit that has been damaged. The occupants are inside. No word on any injuries from that. That's that one. The other one there east, Kevin, uh, that's right behind you there on east and 72 signs that it continues to strengthen as the radar updates. And National Weather Service watching both those. I uh, want to mention the traffic also appears to be uh, substantially slowed down on I-55 between Sherman and Williamsville. There is like damage along there. Folks traveling in this area need to avoid it. That new new circulation, Kevin, on 72 you're pointing at there, uh, have not had any reports from that, but the National Weather Service saying this was a, a uh, confirmed tornado that has hit Sherman, caused damage perhaps just in the north side of town, and is continuing to the east. We're going to play this game all evening, Kevin. We'll see the lines surge to the south, see things spin up, get new tornadoes, and that may be what we play for the rest of the night. So you can see on the bottom right of your screen is the storm track. Adam and Seth are in that. Uh, Kevin is on the left there, and he's going to look at the radar and uh, check one more thing for us. But I just wanted to pass on those reports. And uh, they're having reports of uh, one mile north of Sherman, uh, reports of what was a tornado with power flashes from the west side to the north side. And we, I believe, just nod your head if so, Cole Hankey and Chris Webb are going to be on the way. Okay, there's a crew heading that way. Um, City of Springfield at this point, that's a pretty big debris signature there, Kevin. We'll send it back to you. Yeah, still a debris signature um, that is showing up here. So basically what this is, is the radar beam that's going out. Hey, Kevin, I, I don't mean yeah. to interrupt. Go ahead. Uh, debris signature now west side of Dawson showing up on that second circulation. You've got the significant tornado now south of Williamsville, a new signature. Uh, I can see the debris on Storm Tracker here on GR2. I can see that. Um, and it is right on the west side of Dawson, lining up perfectly with the velocity signature. So new tornado confirmed now west side of Dawson, Dawson, Buffalo. This will be moving along I-72 East, eventually Iliopolis. Two tornadoes now, likely, Kevin, down at the same time. Okay, we can see it right here, okay? You can see this drop off in, in our debris signature here. One there, and there's another one there, as you can see, that is uh, east of Riverton. And so, like you said, near uh, the Dawson area. So when we look at this, we bring you back on the velocity, two areas, one right there, another one right there. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more, but I want to stress to you that these storms here are moving really, really fast, okay? And so you almost kind of have to say, all right, the storm, while we're showing it to you right now, is here. And some of you are watching us online or watching us on the web. There might be a little bit of a delay. Just know that you can basically take this a few miles to the north and to the east. There's the updated, okay, updated tornado warning that has just been issued. What I'm going to do is kind of back things out just a little bit more. Here it is. That is now including Mechanicsburg. Uh, there's Iliopolis there. So two areas of rotation, okay, we're watching. Let's show it to you here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw it for you so you can kind of see exactly. So one right here, that's occurring, okay? And then the other one that is up here to the north and east of Sherman that we have had confirmed tornado with it and damage as a result. And the debris signatures that are showing up with this, when we look at this, and you can kind of see them. Look how this one is kind of spreading out. This one is kind of even moved even more to the north and to the east. And so two areas that we have tornadoes that could still be ongoing. This looks like some of that debris is kind of getting spread, uh, kind of spread out aloft. But so that's Williamsville right there, that tornado tracking just south and east of the Williamsville area. You can see some of the streets that are plotted on there for us here as well. Let's zoom it out. And that's the one area of the debris. And as I mentioned before, the, the radar signal is going out and it's hitting two by fours, sheet metal, okay, roofing. And that's what that it is seeing instead of the typical raindrops. And that's how we know. Again, that severe weather threat is still with us here as we go throughout the course of tonight. And this, here's the thing, I know you're in Champaign, is this going to make it here? Decatur, is it going to make it here? You right now need to be preparing, preparing for if this stays as strong as it is. We have had multiple tornadoes now ongoing 
across the area, it is going to be really important for everyone to be taking shelter here um, over the next um, few hours or so because this is just beginning and we're starting to see a big ramp up of some of these storms in terms of the, the velocity signatures and just the, the confirmation that we're able to get uh, from some of this when it comes to uh, the, uh, the radar views that we're getting. And they're kind of scary radar views when you get um, rotation like this. So you need to be taking shelter here along I-72, Logan County there, Mount Pulaski. And Jacob, uh, tell us about some places for people to go. Yeah, I want to talk about safety because uh, and we've got some updates from news. I'll go to the desk here in a second. Let's bring this full here. Me on camera one, please. Uh, tornado warning. We've already now seen significant tornadoes today. We were a little worried about that. Remember, this is the day where we want to take them extra seriously. We take them seriously all the time. We respect the polygons, the warnings, uh, but today in particular, yes. tornado warning, proceed yes. to your safe place, leave your mobile homes, and you want to get out of a vehicle. No driving during this. These storms are moving very fast, and they have shown signs of being rain-wrapped and hard to see. Spotters have been right up there to see them in person, and we have damage that's been confirmed as well. We'll give you the all-clear. I think we can give all-clear for Sherman and in Springfield. Kevin, I think that second yep. tornado, maybe spinning up a little more northeast of Riverton. Let's send it to Kevin real quick. Okay, here's the thing. Um, we want to show you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in here. Uh, near Buffalo, um, we have a picture from our friend uh, Jeff Frame. Um, if we ha can have that, can we take that picture full? Um, that, wow. there it is right there. Uh, Jeff Frame, um, professor of the University of uh, Illinois. That was actually uh, near Buffalo at 620. Uh, PM uh, near Buffalo at 6:20 PM, and you can see there that tornado uh, with the the rain kind of bands wrapping around it, and so that is uh, that is definitely something uh, right there, and that's the confirmation that we've got that we have a tornado. It's probably ongoing as we speak. Two areas that we're watching of that rotation. And we'll come back over here to the radar. As we mentioned, south and east of Williamsville. The other one there is going to be uh, well now kind of east of, of Riverton. Um, but, Jacob, people, again, need to be taking shelter right now. This is the real deal because we have tornadoes confirmed and, and multiple of them and they have done damage to yeah the national weather service has suggested some of these aren't just you know tornadoes like we had in february and january weak tornadoes these are in the more uh, substantial variety type of things here now let's talk about where you should shelter real quick uh, the worst place to be cars mobile homes or under a highway overpass don't stop there uh, what you do want to do is head to the nearest building that's a sturdy structure and a restaurant a gas station something like that would be a great place to go if you're out uh, remember large open rooms or near outside walls or manufactured housing also bad. I know it's Friday. Some folks maybe want to go shopping, get their groceries through the weekend. Uh, I would avoid that here as these storms move on through. The great thing to do here, uh, interior room or a basement of a well-built building. If you don't have one, the lowest part of your home, an interior closet or a bathroom, great places to go. Grab some pillows, grab some mattresses, grab your bike helmets too, and uh, bring the kids with you and have a little pillow fort if you're in the path of this tornado warning here. And uh, even better, tornado shelter or safe room. Some people do have those. Now, when it comes to being in the path downstream, we need to start thinking Macon County and Logan County, southern Logan County, perhaps east uh, of the Springfield warning towards Macon County. If you're in the path, you've got time in a mobile home or not a sturdy structure to do, uh, you know, get to the next safe spot you can here. Make sure your phone's charged, you got your safe place, your plan ready to go, you're staying up to date with the weather. Again, you can do that on the app or on the Severe Weather Center online. Uh, that's something important that's, that's happening here. This is ahead of the storms. Now, uh, we do I do want to toss it to the news desk here real fast. I know they have some information for us. If we can point camera two to the news desk real fast here and give them, uh, they've got some updates for us. Um, Jess and Brandon, I saw you've been making calls. What can you tell us more about what's going on? Yeah, Jacob, we just got an email from the Sangamon County Sheriff about Sherman saying confirmed tornado touchdown northeast of Sherman, house damage on Suddeth Road, no injuries, power substation damage on Britton Road, and multiple trees down in that area. And we do have a crew headed there as well to check all of this out. I mentioned earlier we have a crew with the Illinois Emergency Management Agency at their building in Springfield. They are still sheltering there as all of this moves through. And Jessica, I called Ed to Mount Pulaski and they said that they heard tornado sirens going off, a lot of high wind there. A lot of rain is what they're seeing right now in the Mount Pulaski area. Now, I'm no meteorologist, but it's right in the path there from where that Sherman tornado was. Uh, right, Jacob? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, Mount Pulaski is next here. This is that supercell storm. It's going to be between Mount Pulaski and Decatur. Warrensburg, Latham sit here. Um, I think I said 121 was there. 121, I'm pretty sure, is the one that runs from Mount Pulaski down. It'll be south of Highway 54, southeastern Logan, northeastern Sangamon. Next in line is going to be northwestern Macon County here. This is going to be uh, Warrensburg, Latham, Forsyth, Ooh. Marola. Kevin, it's kind of heading towards a familiar area um, that we've been in before, and it is looking more supercellular, able to stay out by itself here. Uh, and so, Kevin, you are kind of controlling things there. We expect there to be further warnings downstream. Real quick while you're getting set, Kevin, uh, just checking further down, there are still heavy rain and storms in Springfield. I don't see anything further down the line until Carlinville, where we'll watch that a little bit. No warning for that, but it seems like southern half of Sangamon County, okay, the issues now confined with this still probably a tornado down south of Lake Fort, east of Buffalo Heart on the Logan Sangamon County line. Here's your surge around. You've got winds pulling in the combination here, the red and the greens. That's a um, velocity couplets where the, the storm shows that we've got rotation very tight. Uh, that'll be now south of Lake Fork moving towards Latham, uh, maybe Warrensburg. Mount Pulaski, very close for you. Let's go ahead and shelter there. Uh, even though we're talking about that, there's a lot of wind on that line too, Kevin. You've got that also zoomed in a little closer. Tell us more on what you're seeing. Yeah, so our, our storm here, there's that Lake Fork area, and man, you can really see some of that rotation uh, that is showing up on this. So uh, you want to be taking shelter there if you're near Latham. So what, what we want to do is, is we can look at some of the other factors here. Are we seeing any debris associated with this. They did it just extend that tornado warning, by the way, okay. um, into DeWitt and Logan counties. So it looks like DeWitt and Logan counties. And I think Macon, um, it, is it just... So it's DeWitt and Logan County based on that new polygon there. So I don't know if you can, in, can zoom wow. out or you want me to. Yeah, I can, I can zoom it out here. So what's interesting, these things are moving really fast. What's the latest movement on these? Because these have to be just racing now. Northeast at 50 miles per hour. Uh, Logan County, south of Mount Pulaski. We're, we're looking at that circulation there. It's interesting to me that Macon County is not included, Kevin. I wonder if they're going to create a new polygon for that southern spot maybe. But I, I still think we've got to watch northwest Macon County. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, so that's going to be right here. We're going to be watching this area, especially because of this right here, which is where we've got that rotation on the storm that we can see when we switch over to our velocity. And you're going to get this uh, kind of updated uh, scan that's going to come across here, uh, showing us where exactly uh, we have these, uh, these storms. And I got to tell you that uh, there is still a large concern here for tornadoes as we go throughout the next few hours and in places that have not had a whole lot just yet, uh, but Macon County, DeWitt County here down the line, you're gonna be want to uh, want to be watching these storms very carefully. Uh, we had that uh, that picture earlier from, uh, from Jeff Frame there uh, that showed the tornado that was near uh, Buffalo, um, north of Mechanicsburg there at around 6.20 p.m., which is why we have the confirmed tornado tag. And you can just see how we've got these uh, polygons that extend all the way up here into DeWitt County there as well. Um, I'm, I'm just waiting for this uh, th this new scan. It's literally kind of coming across here um, as we speak. Hey, Kevin, real quick, uh, while we're waiting on that scan, let's go ahead and show you on Max 1 real quick. This is damage from Sherman, Kevin. You're going to see this. It's That was a home. That home is demolished from this storm. And I don't know exactly where that is, but we got a, a Twitter message about this. This is in the Sherman area. Kevin, thoughts on that? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that looks bad. That look, I mean, that's, that, that was a home. Now, I want you to just make note of something here is there is an interior room there that you can see. Um, if we can go back to that kind of the full screen, I don't know if you can put that with me or whatnot, but notice that those outside walls have been taken out, but this is what we're talking about by going to the interior part of your house. You can almost tell, I don't know, maybe that was a closet there. It's right in the center part of your screen. Yeah, here we go. Um, uh, right there, notice how kind of the center part of that, that's still standing, but these outside walls and whatnot are down. Well, that's why we tell you to go to the center part of your house, lowest level, get it into an interior room. So again, that is Sherman, and you just gotta feel, you can see there's a power lines, I think, that are going across um, the middle of the, their yard there. Uh, this uh, and you look at some of the um, 
of the power lines here, they're kind of tilted. And then look at this, look at the trees here snapped off. You can see on the left side of your screen here as well. And all of this damage, bad situation there. Um, I, I believe we did confirm that no injuries from the... From I, I don't know if that's the same location. Same location, it could... could that is the same okay. location? That possible sure. injuries. Okay. We don't know. Possible injuries with this one here. Again, this is the other thing. If damage comes down, these power lines may not be you know, dead. They could still be okay. live. So you need to take that into consideration uh, there as well. Okay, uh, if you want to come back over uh, to the radar here, because I just want to give you an update. There's, uh, there are so many areas of rotation um, still showing up on this. And I'm just going to uh, click things back here to kind of show you the wide view, because Here's the thing, Champagne, okay, Monticello, Decatur here in the next hour. Some of the stuff is going to be racing here to the north and east and, and could be on you next. Yeah. Uh, storms Can't coming out of the spotter. St. Louis Thank area you, here tonight as well. But uh, there is definitely that concern that we still have. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer to the tornado warned areas. We have had confirmed tornadoes. You just saw some of the damage uh, that has already been reported. Uh, this is the area south of Mount Pulaski. And it looks like they did finally go ahead and issue that northwestern portions of Macon County. Uh, so there's Moroa now. So Moroa, you're in this. I got to tell you, though, we're going to run into the situation that, that we've been talking about in, in the news a lot. These wind farms that are out here. I saw that. Um, we're going to have to kind of see what happens in terms of the radar signatures. Uh, but you're going to take that into consideration because we obviously know there are wind farms that are out here that sometimes can influence the Doppler and give some signatures. But I can tell you this. You just got to operate now as if we do have a tornado that is still taking place here because uh, that's what we've got here in terms of a few different areas of rotation that are showing up. I'm just going to switch it back over to the radar here again. And again, while there is kind of a long line here, what we have to look for are these little individual embedded circulations that can occur. So if you are in Moroa taking shelter, listen, I know Clinton um, you know, you're technically not in that warning, and neither is Forsyth, but just to kind of be on the safe side there, just be preparing and keep kind of listening to us down to Iliopolis, Mechanicsburg, still rotating parts of that storm as well. Um, guys, let me know where a Adam and Seth are. I know they've been kind of out driving here tonight. Uh, just be curious as to uh, uh, the location that, that they're at and, and see if we can get any kind of report from them. But let me see here. I'm going to kick, kick it back over to Velocity. Yeah, Kevin, um, they're in Clinton right now, actually. Okay, so they're in Clinton, so they're kind of staying ahead of it. Still seeing some of that. I mean, this it's kind of messy, all these polygons here. I know all these lines kind of coming next to one another uh, because we, there's been a rapid intensification of these storms where they had to um, um, have some of that. Um, I believe we've got some more pictures coming into us. Um, Tristan, go ahead and just talk to me here. Is this in Sherman? Okay. And Kevin, I've been seeing some reports that there are Sonneth people. Road and Gracie Lane, I'm being told there. You can see some of the tree. Look at that. That, that, was a, that was a really large tree there. Kevin, there's been some reports that uh, they're doing some search and rescue right now. Okay. We can't really confirm anything else about that. But, uh, you know, we're seeing pictures of that damage. And, and this isn't our normal spring summer tornado these are are a bit stronger than than we'd like and and still kevin they're on the ground right now from yeah, what we can tell still potentially on the ground here um north of iliopolis need to be taking shelter um I've got, we'll pull up some more pictures here that we've got again from sherman when these storms came through uh, jacob said maybe doing some of that search and rescue here you can see some of the trees that are down on, on this home here uh some of the the debris that obviously has been been thrown looks like a, a low hanging power line uh, from this house right here. I'm being told that they did pull um, uh, an elderly woman and their dog out of this. This was in Sherman. Um, so, so an elderly woman and their dog pulled out of there. Um, but you can see some of the damage from that, those trees down. This did happen pretty quick. And again, more power lines that, that stretch down and across, we showed you this house earlier. Looks like a few different houses here impacted by this. You don't even have the roof here, okay, from this home. You can see the uh, a lot of the outside walls blown in. Um, can't quite tell exactly there, but wow. Uh, so a lot of damage in Sherman. Oh, look at this right here. Okay, you can see the power pole that is horizontal there, and that's where all those lines are. So coming across, again, 
Ameren and all the power companies um, are urge you do not approach these down power lines. You have to treat them as if they are still active. That could very well be the case. Um, but those are some of the pictures that we are getting in here tonight. Um, of the hey, damage. Kevin, real quick. Yeah, um, I just want to come in. I'm getting concerned for Latham right now, uh, where the circulation is. The city of Latham, this just came in a minute ago. There's our rotation right here. It's embedded in the rain. It is rain wrapped at this point, and it's something we're watching very closely. Uh, it, it's coming right for town, perhaps toward Warrensburg. The other thing I'm noticing is if you see here, all of these greens, there are some strong winds that are picking up here, and I'm a little concerned that while the warning looks like it's heading towards Maroa, and often northwest Macon County, I am suspicious about Forsyth and maybe the north side of Decatur. If you're in that area, no tornado warning at this point, but I'm just, you draw a line from Sherman and it's almost due east here. Uh, so we talk a lot about Maroa. Forsyth, you might think about heading to your tornado shelters here shortly as we continue to watch, but seeing this here, it's going to allow for more things to continue spinning up as it moves on in. Now, Put your eyes right here where that dot is. And when I switch to the reflectivity, you'll see it's almost wrapped up in the rain in there with that surging inflow winds ahead of the storms. I don't think this is going to stop spinning and it may take more of an eastward jog. Let's stay in shelter, Duet County. Let's stay in shelter, Maroa. But I want to give a heads up for Forsyth and Warrensburg. And particularly right now, I'm concerned the most for the city of Latham. Yeah. Sangamon County, uh, just double checking. At this point, I have no concern for Sangamon County. This seems to be out of Sangamon County. It is southeastern Logan and now Macon and DeWitt counties here. Uh, and we'll give you the all clear from this. I will mention, uh, we'll keep an eye. There's been some signs of some development. I don't think it's going to materialize, though. So uh, Cass, Morgan, Menard, I think we're going to be okay from this point forth. Sangamon County, at this point, nothing concerns me. That line of storms, though, is there from northeastern Sangamon County down from uh, the Buffalo area, the Iliopolis area to the southwest towards Pawnee, but I don't see any circulation. This right here, in fact, Kevin, that... Uh, the latest uh, velocity is about to come in here, yeah. and I think that's going to find itself right on top of Latham. So Latham, if you know anyone downstream here, this day we all can help in the warning process. You know anyone in these towns we mentioned, send them a text. Say, hey, WCI is talking about your town. You want to make sure you're in shelter. We can all help keep each other safe on a day like today and uh, help keep each other weather aware. So Kevin, uh, I'm going to send it to you. Yeah. Let you talk. There's the update. Yeah, so here we go. So um, we're, we're getting that here, and you're going to get that, that, that scan here coming across. So this, again, we, we, the radar is, is updating real quick here. Um, there's circulation coming right into Latham. What I'm going to watch for is if we get a drop in the, uh, um, the correlation coefficient or debris tracker on this, and, and, and if that occurs, then we definitely have a tornado. But that thing looks pretty intense. Uh, that rotation that's showing up, these reds and greens, the couplet, winds that are blowing away and towards the radar is what we're able to actually see with this. And so that's the concern that we've got. And I'm just going to click things over to our debris tracker here and see uh, kind of what it is showing. Nothing here immediately uh, showing up, uh, but I got to say that that thing is, is as close as it can be to producing a, a tornado here right there along Highway 121. Um, that is going to continue to move to the north and to the east. Uh, so it's going to be west of Warrensburg. So you can just see on the um, on the far right part of your screen, there's Warrensburg. But this rotation coming right through Latham right now, we have already had several reports of damage from this system as uh, previous tornadoes have occurred. Uh, but that is still looking uh, pretty intense here as it moves off here to the north and east. Well, just kind of back things out once again to kind of show you what we've got. This long line of storms, Christian County kind of, you know, next, you're going to start to see some of this. I'm going to, you know, start to get a little bit concerned for some of our other counties here because these storms are still really coming in. But right now, tornado warning, northwestern Macon County, southern portions of of um, um, DeWitt County there, you're seeing that storm kind of come in. But right here, and we talked about Latham, where there is kind of that uh, wrapping in motion here. And I'm going to switch things over to that velocity scope. 
to show us exactly. And again, that I know that that just pretend that scan is actually probably up, probably going to be up here a little bit more uh, through uh, Latham at this point because these are moving at such a fast clip. The radar doesn't always have, um, it can't always keep up with it when they're going that fast. So much of that data has to get kind of computed here. But I would treat this one as if we, we've got um, another tornado associated with this cell that is moving to the northeast at over 50 miles per hour. And again, all of these storms, I know you're saying, okay, I'm in Champaign and I'm in Danville and it's not quite to uh, my area just yet. When is it going to get there? Well, we've still got a little bit of time. Uh, we've talked all along that it was really going to be in this kind of 5 to 10 p.m. time frame where everybody needs to be on high alert. And that is still the case. But yeah, you can really see how, I mean, just look at this. I mean, it all, this kind of arcing back and around, this is the rotation um, still going into that storm, the inflow that helps to keep that thing spinning. And that is a pretty impressive radar view. As we back it out, and you, there's Moroa right now. We just want you guys, you're kind of right there on the edge of that polygon warning, but just pay attention because this thing is, is moving really fast and going to be crossing back up here into DeWitt County before too long. Listen, Farmer City, Monticello, you guys just kind of be watching here over the next hour. You would be uh, kind of next in line to, to have some of this come through. I want to show you some more pictures from the Sherman area and you can see uh, there is a look at the Sherman Police Department on scene of where that house was hit. Look at the damage. You can see the trees there, that home, uh, people walking around. Look at the sheet metal wrapped around. I don't know if that was a mailbox at one point or some kind of a, a structure there, but you can see the sheet metal there. There is uh, some of the insulation there, the, um, the roof gone. Okay, that's why we tell you, don't be on the second level or the third level of your home. And here's another one. That is a well-built home there, a brick structure. As you can see, the garage. look at the garage here, okay? And this can actually sometimes happen. They've, they've done some, some studies about this, that uh, the, the garage there, is it, is it, you know, if the garage door kind of caves in there, and then that wind goes throughout the rest of the house, blows out some of the windows and whatnot. Look at that, um, the chimney there. Look at the chimney where... Obviously, some of the, the, the bricks there and whatnot uh, uh, damage. It looks like some, some of that uh, kind of siding there as well. But uh, people, you just feel for the people out there. You hope that, that they're okay. But their car windows, all the windows um, have, been, have been smashed. <sighs> Sherman, uh, taking that direct hit, just some of the pictures that uh, we've been getting in here of, of the damage. But concern is, is now in North western portions of Macon County into the Clinton area here as well. I want to switch things back over to the velocity, come back in because I think this area here is where we've still got some rotation on this north of Warrensburg. That's Moroa next. This is going to come right towards Moroa. If the rotation increases at all, then we're talking about yet again possibly another tornado. So that's Highway 51. Highway 51 right here, that's Forsyth, that's Warrensburg, and right there is where some of that rotation, you can kind of see, again, that inflow coming into the storm. Um, and so this is an area of concern now over 121, past uh, uh, kind of the, the Latham area there, and going to be heading to the north and east. Um, I know that our anchors are hard at work um, gathering information as well. Uh, Brandon and Jessica, what have you been hearing so far? Yeah, Kevin, we have a crew I've been in touch with. They're going to be in Sherman in just five minutes or so. So we're going to have more videos and pictures from the devastation there. We also have a reporter who just got off the phone with the Latham Fire Department. Their sirens have been going off for a half hour. They've had firefighters and storm trackers stationed around town keeping an eye on things. Warrensburg, Dollar General sirens just went off. Clouds moving quickly there. And you have information from Warrensburg as well. I just got off the phone with Warrensburg police and they tell me that their fire department is actually out weather spotting right now. Heard those sirens, and so it sounds like they're bracing for impact in Warrensburg. Uh, if you are in that area, like you said, Kevin and Jacob, you know, take shelter. A lot of people taking shelter. We've heard in Clinton, Iliopolis, all along this track. We're going to send things over to Jacob right now. Yeah, I just want to mention, we're talking about where these storms are. They're moving very quick here, first off. Uh, the storm now passed 
this, for the circulation now near and past um, Warrensburg. It's moving into Moroa very closely. I want to talk about something that I'm noticing on radar, though, here. Uh, it does not look as tight of a circulation. It seems more broad. See this S shape right here? That's something that tells me that we're seeing more surging winds here. And I think between Moroa and Forsyth, eventually towards Argenta, Cisco, southeastern DeWitt County, we may have to watch those areas for another developing tornado. Early heads up, Argenta, Cisco, southeastern DeWitt County, eventually that would carry into Pyatt County and eventually into Champaign County. Now, something to note. Hyatt and Champaign County right now has no access to the NOAA weather radio. It's been an issue with the tower. The cable got damaged by wind. That's one way folks may rely on warnings. So if it comes downstream, you may text, you know, someone in Pyatt or Champaign County, you might just text and say, hey, check in with WCIA right now. We will walk you through these storms. Uh, but I think we're not quite done yet with this uh, particular circulation as it moves off to these. This point seems a little more broad. Really quick, Kevin, before I send it to you, I'm going to talk about some other areas that I'm watching. First off, uh, let's talk Christian County really fast. The tail end of this line, there's a storm south and west of Taylorville. It's just crossed I-55 in Montgomery County. We'll be moving in the general direction. There is some weak rotation evident. Christian County, we will watch very closely. And any one of these gaps in here may have the chance to uh, get a little mischief with them. So we will watch all of those. Christian County, we're keeping an eye on you. Let's go a little further to the north. Severe thunderstorm warning from Clayton County. That storm over Bloomington has strong winds moving to the north and east. We'll keep an eye for Livingston and Ford County. Obviously, at this point, the main focus is on our storm now located in northwestern uh, Macon County here. And Kevin, I'm sure you're seeing a very similar picture to what I'm seeing here is with the circulation. While we've had damage at this point, maybe it's not as strong, but I would not let mm -hmm. the guard down. Yeah. This still very well could spin right back up given the ingredients that are in place, and that's why I'm concerned from northern Macon County, southeastern DeWitt County. Kevin? I want, I want you to keep watching that storm there because I agree with you, Jacob. I think that thing might be cycling and ramping up again, but we have more pictures here coming into us, and uh, this is again back in Sherman, and I want you to kind of focus over here, um, possibly um, an, an RV, or I can't quite tell if that's a, a mobile mobile home camper uh, camper RV you can see it kind of flipped over you can see the tire there on the back but look up in the trees look at all the insulation okay you can see you know maybe some sheet metal in there and other things and all of the damage this was that home we were showing you earlier uh, with with kind of the, the chimney there uh, looks like just so much debris from Sherman and this uh, kind of came in and um, Jacob, uh, I think Jacob, I think you were talking about that storm there uh, might be trying to ramp up again. Uh, Jacob, I'll let you uh, go ahead and talk about what you're seeing on radar. Yeah, like so the new scan just came in. I am very concerned for Moroa. I know Moroa took a hit January 3rd, just missed town. We've got another situation where I think the circulation is developing here. Uh, see these bright pixels of pink there? That'll be about four miles southwest of Moroa. Uh, anyone in Moroa, south of Moroa towards Forsyth needs to be in their tornado shelters taking their action plan now. I I worry the next scan will carry this, you know, we'll, we'll back it up here. Here we go. And you see the next scan may bring it into Moroa. Now, one thing to mention, these scans, the radar sweeps the sky and it gets us that picture. The storm continues to move. And so at this point, it's to the north and east of that location. But I am concerned now for Moroa. And this uh, is showing signs of strength. And you can see that shape starting to pick up a little bit more of that S, a little bit of surging winds in there. Uh, Moroa and points to the east. Friends Creek State Park, areas uh, north of Argenta, areas south and east of, of uh, Clinton, where we've had the same path of those tornadoes come on through. Really quick, we've got the storm tracker somewhere. Uh, do we know where the storm tracker is at? I think last check they were in the Clinton area. They were going to try and move east and south to stay ahead of it. Um, can we bring their shot full real quick? And, and, and is it in the bottom right there? Is that what that is? There we go. So, so they're out there now in this storm, and we've been touching base with them. I think they're getting close to Weldon, if I uh, am correct, from last check. So they are ahead of this storm. We have another crew heading towards Sherman. We should get some video from them. Have nothing to report from the Weldon area. Jess, you do have... Crew that was headed to Sherman, they're blocked right now at the I-55 exit because of a car accident and down power line. I think that car down. accident was a tornado hit the vehicle at this point. The, the seeing the, the where the path went, so um, I, I don't. I think that's going to be the damage that they are. It seems like the damage is on the north side of Sherman. The exit there is likely where that tornado went through. Yeah, the it's very close to that subdivision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. 
Okay, so Maroa is what next in line here. We need to start thinking ahead real quick with Northeastern Macon, Southeastern DeWitt, and now Pyatt County. I wanna start thinking here, Monticello and points to the north. We may need to keep an eye on this. The next scan going to come through. Checking further to the south and west, and I wanna switch radars. I'll send it to you here in a second, um, Brandon. I wanna switch radars and just get an, an idea of what we're seeing. It's not all that impressive to me, but I think by Morrisonville, there may be an area of weak rotation. It's on the right spot here. Notice how it's off in the southern edge. We're going to watch very closely Taylorville. I know Taylorville is very sensitive to this subject after five years ago. Um, no warning, some weak rotation, but certainly something we'll keep a close eye on with all of these storms. Um, you can see across the state here. Look at all those polygons. There's tornado warnings from northwest Illinois by Galena through central Illinois, and uh, there's been tornadoes all down towards Memphis and Arkansas as well. So quite a, a bit of a robust event here. Uh, Brandon, did you have, Jess and Brandon had something real quick they wanted to add? Yeah, I just got off the phone, Jacob, with uh, the Moreau Fire Department, and they told me they dis just dispatched trucks out, so they're getting their radio chatter in, and, and they're preparing, hunkering down and everything in, in Moreau and on the way to Forsyth. I know you and it's Moreau in Moreau and now. New tornado warning now just came out. This is going to be for DeWitt, Macon, and Pyatt counties. This will be uh, include areas to the north of Monticello. Monticello and points to the north, the northern part of Pyatt County. This will be southeastern DeWitt County, not including Clinton, not including Highway 54. Uh, and Kevin, you're looking at that new warning now. The new tornado warning will include Cisco. It will be north of Argenta. It will include uh, D-Land. It will include Mansfield. And uh, it will include Farmer City and Weldon, kind of in those areas on that. Kevin, talk more about what you're seeing. Yeah, here it is. Uh, that new tornado warning, we were just kind of showing it to you there this uh, going to the north and east uh, you need to, it's right on the, the county line there obviously into DeWitt County uh, but as we were just kind of talking about this entire time uh, you need to be taking your tornado precautions right now because these storms are moving really quick and so this does extend off now here as you can see into portions of of uh, 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 southern portions of DeWitt County that's Clinton up here but the rotating part of that storm is still racing off here to the uh, north and to the east I'm actually going to see if I can uh, pull up our um, our, our GRT it seems like the uh, some of this data here is, is trying to stay a little bit behind so I think we're gonna have to yeah Kevin I've been using in GR and it seems like maybe it's just a little bit ahead here. If you want, I can can kind of help you out with that on um, the computer real fast. Yeah, if, if you can. Uh, yeah, I'll just take over here and get up you the that. GR there. It's in Moreau right now, if not just now moving through and, and to the east. So that's certainly uh, what we will be watching very closely. Um, what's the source name that you have that for, Kevin? GR2. GR2 there. Oh, that's data set. Okay, here we go. Um, so that storm there that's coming into uh, Moroa right hey. now is, is, is kind of the, the biggest issue there that we've got. And so here we go. Uh, I think you've got it pulled up there. So I want to keep stressing this, uh, guys, is the fact... Say Kevin in the key, please. Yeah. Uh, I want to keep stressing this to you that the radar here is doing everything it can to keep up with all the data that, that's coming in because the radar even goes out and does a scan, uh, not just kind of here at ground level, but, but higher up as well. Uh, but we're seeing this rotation and there it is right there on that newest scan. That's 51. It's cross 51. It's on the kind of east uh, uh, side there. We're seeing some of those uh, areas of rotation, some really strong pockets of winds here as well. But down the line, now you're looking into southeastern portions there uh, into DeWitt County. You can see there is uh, Pyatt County there. There's Cisco over here, Weldon. But right now, I mean, there's also some really strong winds here. OK, look at these here and, and you got to watch all of these areas because if it can tap into some of that uh, rotation there and get a little bit of inflow in it, then you're talking about maybe several little spots that uh, could be uh, seeing um, something. But uh, I'm kind of looking at this right here uh, near Maroa on the kind of east side of town. We switch over to the debris tracker. See, that's the rotation that's Who is it? right there uh, that we've got east of Maroa now. This is racing Can't to the use. north and east. And so this is going to be crossing Can't into use. DeWitt County as it has moved kind of the rotating part of that storm east there. But there are some really strong winds, a few pockets of strong winds that are along this cell here. Again, just kind of to see, get your bearing straight of where you are. These lines right here are the county lines for DeWitt and Macon County. 
and we're seeing this little kink area right here. It's right through here where you might have some rotation on this, which would allow for uh, a little bit of, uh, right there you can see when you look at the, the storm relative velocity on that, right in that general location. But look at these other little pockets and those pink colors are some really strong winds along that entire area. So, uh, Hey, Kevin, can I do some housekeeping real quick? Yeah. If we can take max uh, one full. The tornado watch has now been expanded for the entire viewing area. Some folks are saying, where's the tornado watch? This must be missing us. We are extending it to the east. The National Weather Service has made that decision. And it goes into Indiana as well, all the way into central Indiana. Uh, this new watch is going to go, I believe it's until, um, uh, let me double check on that. It's going to go until 2 a.m. actually. Now, the good news here is it's to 2 a.m. because how far east it goes. We will clear it out by 9, 10 o'clock, if not later than that, with this new tornado watch that has been expanded. The other thing I want to say real fast here is with the tornado warning now in Piatt County and uh, southeastern DeWitt and Macon County, a reminder next in line is going to be Champaign County. And we're going to watch the city of Champaign, Rantoul, Muhammad, an early heads up. Not only if, you know, maybe the tornado doesn't come, there's going to be strong winds with this as it moves off to the east as we continue to watch here. So that's some housekeeping I wanted to mention with that um, particular storm as it's moving on through. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of, if we bring me back on here or, or whatnot, um, in fact, I need to switch my source real fast, actually. Uh, it's kind of a, a bit of a, let's see what's going on here. There we go. It's kind of uh, almost in the line, but notice to the south and east, there's nothing here to disturb it. So it's able to pull in plenty of warm and stable air, which means that there's nothing stopping it from producing another tornado as it moves off to uh, the north and east. All right, so just seeing... Um, near Morrisville, there's been a report of a funnel cloud. Morrisville, a report of a funnel cloud now. Uh, that coming from Chaser, there is no tornado warning at this point. Uh, but you can see here, there is some rotation there now north of Palmer. And I think at this point, Taylorville, Palmer, areas southeast of Kincaid, um, I think we need to start thinking about what we need to do if there's a tornado warning and why not just take the step based on what we're seeing um, and just kind of checking that. Um, there's been video confirmation of that about five minutes ago of a funnel cloud near the Morrisonville area. So it is a severe thunderstorm warning down here in Christian County with a tornado possible tag. We may see a, a red box pop up, a, a tornado warning be issued, and that would include the city of Taylorville on its path. It would also move off to the north and east, uh, probably would include areas towards Mawequa, Assumption, up the road towards Stony Stonington. So that's something that we need to watch closely. Now, Brandon, uh, you have something that you want to say to this as well real quick. I know you're very familiar with Christian County. Right, yeah, I just talked to family members there and they told me a few minutes ago, you're talking about how fast the storm is moving, that my uncle told me he was out in his hot tub in his garage and then the rain started coming and then the winds. So, you know, to double your point, you know, this is moving very fast. Yeah, okay, real quick, I think we've got a new tornado now um, east of Maroa based on what I'm seeing here in the circulation. Kevin, you'll be on the, the key there. It's right behind you where this little blip is here. It lines up with base reflectivity. It lines up with the velocity where the next scan, this may carry it towards Weldon, Cisco. Uh, very concerned about that as it moves off to the uh, north and east. So in the... the Seth and Adam are uh, between Weldon and Farmer City trying to move towards 74 so they can get ahead and south. So I think we're going to see a debris signature on the Macon-DeWitt County line in the next scan. Remember, that now is moving pretty quickly. Weldon, Cisco, D-Land. The call to action is now here based on what we're seeing uh, and keeping an eye on things here. So, uh, Trisha, go ahead and say that one more time. River we have an update from Riverton as well. To, okay, we'll talk to, to Brandon for that. Okay, real quick. Yeah, we do. We have a structure damage reported in Dawson Parks Place Child Care Center at uh, Decatur Road in Riven Riverton. There was a roof collapse there. They're going house to house along Old Decatur Road in Riverton. So that's what we have right now from Riverton. Okay, so we know there's lots of damage. Kevin, I'm going to let you take over for a little bit. Um, and do you still want to use GR on the wall uh, there? I, I tell you, I'm going to give, we can give it back to Max too. I'm going to give give that a shot. Okay, can I'll switch it. Bring me you. back over and, and 
what we'll do is we'll take that. Um, but again, that was the area, and just give us a second here to let, let that update uh, for just a moment. Um, oh, it's confirmed tornado now, Christian County. That just came across, by the way. There it is. There it is. So confirmed there for Christian County. Um, and as long as that is in play mode, it is in play mode. Then uh, we can we can launch that up here. All right. So let's just take you down in here into this brand new tornado warning. We, they were talking about that uh, uh, that confirmation there of that. So now you're talking Taylorville. Okay, Taylorville, you need to be in your tornado safe spot here right now. So let's see if we can try to find this when we look at the uh, velocity. Okay, there's been some confirmations of this. And so we've got some rotation here, Bear Creek, Clarksville. That is right there on 48. 48 goes southwest, northeast there, right into Taylorville, and, and then keeps on going. So right now, rotation with this storm, tornado confirmed with this. Uh, they have had confirmation uh, that indeed a tornado. Five years ago, Taylorville hit uh, back in, in December, and so we are obviously concerned here. I know that a lot of people are sh are taking shelter right now. But we want you to get to the lowest level of your home, center part of your house. If you're in anywhere between Kincaid and Taylorville, and I'm going to say the, the, the radar here kind of updating, we're seeing that rotation um, associated with this. If you're anywhere in Taylorville to Kincaid, down to Clarksville, and then uh, kind of just uh, north of the Locust area. All right, let's take this, and I want to zoom it out because we're going to take you back up to our other area of concern, and that's going to be up here into portions of uh, Macon County heading into DeWitt County in the Weldon and Cisco area. And so as we zoom into that area of concern, here we go. See these reds and greens kind of coming next to one another. Some really strong winds, some concerns here with some of that rotation. Uh, what we're going to do is see if we're seeing anything from the debris tracker on this. Kind of tough to tell, but it is definitely something we're watching. What we're going to be looking for are more of those kind of uh, uh, blues and whatnot, uh, which would be indicative of possibly some debris with this. And so we've been watching that cell that was there east of uh, Maroa, but we're definitely getting some really strong winds, if nothing else, as that kind of comes across DeWitt to the Weldon areas right now. What? If you're in northwestern portions of Pyatt County, uh, you definitely need to be on the lookout here because this storm means business. Uh, north of Argenta, but right here, Tornado warning does continue where we're seeing some of those signs of rotation on this. And so multiple areas that we continue to be concerned about here tonight with that severe weather threat. Look at all of these spots here uh, that we have. And I know you're saying, okay, I'm in Champaign. Um, oh, I'm down here in, uh, you know, Tuscola. Are, are we going to get something here? We're watching these additional storms. So this is the wide view. The largest issue that we've got right now are with two different, uh, two different areas of rotation. The one down here, which has been confirmed in Christian County. Coming into Taylorville, as we look at it on radar here, maybe it doesn't look as impressive um, on radar in the, the typical kind of views, but they did have at least a brief confirmation of a tornado with this. And so this is going to be coming into Taylorville right now, right along Highway 48. That tornado warning is still in effect. And then as you continue out of Taylorville, uh, up 48, it eventually gets back into uh, portions of uh, Macon County there. And so let's back this out just a little bit more up through Stonington. I mean, taking, I mean, arguably a similar path, but uh, we've not had any other reports um, coming into us of, of you, know, you know, a large tornado with this. There have been some rotate, some brief rotations that occur. The largest tornado we had was earlier near Sherman, where all of those damage reports have continued to kind of funnel in. But we've got this whole area now that's east of uh, I-55, but I don't want you to let your guard down. Look at those other storms down towards uh, Carlinville that we're going to be watching for. Uh, switch things back over to the velocity, which allows us to see the rotation um, in these storms. And then we'll take you back into uh, portions of uh, DeWitt County there, right on the DeWitt and Pyatt County line. And here we go where we've got that near Weldon. You want to be in your tornado safe spot uh, there near DeWitt, right there along Highway 48. Coming out of town there, boy, that uh, is showing some pretty strong wind signatures. And you get some of those brighter reds and greens and those pinks right there, um, indicating winds that could be upwards of uh, 60 to 70 miles per hour. Um, 
again, we're not done here by any stretch of the imagination. And I know we've got crews that are out in Sherman getting us some of the reports. This is down the line. You know, we're looking to Farmer City. And I'm just going to step out of the way. If you're in uh, kind of Muhammad there, northwestern Champaign County, this all is eventually heading in your direction. So you need to be just kind of hanging by. If you're watching us tonight, um, you know, you, maybe you stayed home, you canceled plans here, um, and, and that's unfortunate, I know, but uh, we need to tell you guys what's going on with these storms as the severe weather threat is going to continue over the next few hours. And Jess, uh, there are more damaged pictures that are coming into us here tonight. Yeah, these pictures we have pulled up uh, here in just a second. These are from Cole Hankey, a reporter on the scene in Sherman. He just got there. They're around the corner from that subdivision where all those damaged homes are. Suddeth Road blocked at both sides. This is as close as he is allowed to get at this point. You can see those power poles yeah, down, powerful. lines blocking the road. He said a car accident in that area, police confirmed with him, was caused by the tornado. I think we have a couple more pictures here. Again, those polls. And of course, Amarin has warned not to go anywhere near any power lines you see you see down because you should be treating those lines as live. So we will continue to keep you updated. He is actually calling my, me right now. So I'm going to get another update from Cole here in just a second. But for now, I'm going to send things over to Jacob. All right. Thanks uh, so much. I want to mention here, again, some reminders. These are fast moving storms. We've got parts of Pyatt. DeWitt, Macon, Christian counties under tornado warnings. Also northern Shelby County. Uh, what you do in a tornado here, remember, proceed to your safe place, leave your mobile home, uh, get out of your car, no driving. That report from I-55 in Sherman proves that being in a car, not a great idea here. In, down, up. Remember those three words. Have your kids say it really fast. Make a game out of it here. I'm going to get inside. Most interior rooms we can. Lowest floor of your home, getting down as low as you can, whether that's a basement, a crawl space, a, uh, you know, a uh, bathroom that's interior, something like that, and then covering up with blankets, pillows, mattresses. You can listen to our live coverage on the WCI3 weather and news apps. Also on Facebook, any of our meteorologist pages, you can do that, and uh, we'll give you the all clear. I need to give some all clears at this point. Um, areas from Moroa to the west and Iliopolis, Mount Auburn to the west, Sangamon, Logan County is all clear. I want to hold off on any Macon County calls. I want to hold off, uh, we'll give an all clear to Clinton, Wapella, places to the west. This though now cross the Pyatt DeWitt County line near D land. And uh, real quick here, then, let's talk about tornado safety. Remember, if you don't want to read this, I won't read this graphic a lot, but you don't know what to do. Our Severe Weather Center has this graphic and other great resources on the news app and on WCIA.com that will help you know where to go, what to do. The live streaming coverage is there as well. We've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to stay connected with us during events like this in Central Illinois, and so that's something that we're going to keep a close eye on here. I uh, want to mention real fast then, uh, let's talk about in the path. This is going to apply for Champaign County. It could apply for Decatur and Southern Pyatt counties downstream from these warnings here. Um if you're in a mobile home and watching in Champaign County, you've got some time. I'm particularly concerned Fisher, Rantoul, Thomasboro, Muhammad, perhaps near or north of Champaign Urbana, probably the northern part of the county with this year. Um, that's going to be the biggest concern. Be prepared to seek shelter and maybe think about heading there a little early. Oh. Your phone charge, arrange your safe place, find your flashlight, and check the WCI3 weather app for more information. This here is a look. I'm very concerned about that circulation near D-Land. Um, it's uh, a bit a bit messy, Kevin. I don't know if it lines up exactly. It seems to be no. slightly in front, but it's concerning nonetheless. Yeah, so really intense wind fields here uh, that, that we're seeing, and I think we're getting some really good inflow uh, that is showing up here. This, this has me a little concerned if this kind of continues to ramp up a little bit. Uh, what we uh, look for are sometimes these um, areas of, of rotation that are what we call kind of co-located with uh, the correlation coefficient, or the debris here. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to tell, but there's something going on with this storm. If you're in Mansfield right now, I, I technically don't think you're in that warning yet, but th that could change. Uh, we might have something trying to develop here north of 10, 
south of Farmer City, heading to the northeast uh, right now. We're seeing that on radar. Uh, definitely some really strong winds. What's interesting is, is when we kick this back over to um, the radar view here, and I, what I want you to kind of look at is, is, is the shape of this. And the shape of this is what kind of has me a little concerned. We look at just the, the reflectivity on this. See this kind of uh, juts out just a little bit right here. You can get this little little hook that's almost starting to develop. And I see that south of Farmer City. This is the classic indication, I think, of, of possibly a tornado that, that is developing right now. So I-74, there's 150. This is going to be coming towards Mansfield. I would just, uh, out of precaution, or maybe start uh, uh, getting ready to, to go to your tornado safe space there. Um, if you, you're there in Mansfield, I'm just watching this here. This is just kind of that classic classic representation that we sometimes see um, on radar um, in this kind of environment. And right there, there, there just, there's something uh, that's going on here that has me a little concerned. Uh, so that tornado warning uh, possibly being carried off there uh, towards the Mansfield area, we'll see. That, that is going to be north of Highway 10, north of D-Land. Um, of course, Lodge, uh, as Highway 10 kind of you know, curves uh, back down there. This is going in this direction here. So it's going to hit 74 um, and 150 over the next uh, kind of 5 to 10 minutes or so. But that definitely has my curiosity peaked. I want to see what happens on some of the, uh, the further radar scans. Um, if you're watching us over in Muhammad and then there's Seymour there right now, this is the area of highest concern and just kind of watching the progression of this. And let me see if I can't put a little bit of a, a loop on this to kind of show um, the direction it's going there. Kind of a fast moving loop, but you can see there it is that is going to continue to move off there towards Mansfield. And uh, the concern is there. We'll see what the Weather Service does with this, uh, see if they want to continue uh, that warning a little bit further. They're going so fast, they're, you know, they're having to issue these things so quick. Will Muhammad get in there? Will Mansfield be in there next? There's the updated radar scan that's right in there. Probably some really strong winds in this, but there's a little appendage right here that's trying to form pretty strong inflow here, rear inflow jet that might be kind of coming into this, and it all helps to kind of create some of that rotation there. Um, we're going to see what they decide to do with this, but um, just by looking at it from what I'm seeing here on some of the radar signatures, it definitely has my curiosity peaked with that. We'll watch the debris signature, um, see if it kind of starts to show anything, but um, I think more than anything, there could be 70 mile an hour winds maybe with this. I would agree with that, and that's, Kevin. And, and, and that could be what um, and my, radar's seeing. Yeah, and my scan just updated here um, on this where it's showing more signs of surging out. Look at the colors here on the screen here for you. See these bright pinks? This is going to be a big time wind event. Mansfield, Muhammad, Fisher. We've got the storm tracker going south from Fisher right now. They will get to Muhammad and go southeast into Champaign-Urbana and um, they are moving to get to ahead of this here. At this point, Kevin, I don't see as much of a rotation signature. I see the surging of the winds, but we have seen before the surge of winds drops the circulation and we might have to watch that north side of okay, this new, new tornado warning there includes there Muhammad. It is. New tornado warning now. It will be for Fisher, Muhammad, Thomasboro, Rantoul, Ludlow. It does not include the city of Champaign-Urbana. This will be north of town. Now, if you know someone in any of those towns, Fisher, Muhammad, Thomasboro, Rantoul, Ludlow, uh, up towards Dewey, out to the east, uh, over, over towards, uh, looks like it's not going to quite be in Gifford, uh, Lake of the Woods, places like that. Send them a text, they probably know, but still send them a text. We could use your help on a day like today with the NOAA weather radio being down in the county, and uh, that's going to be that new polygon. There also is talk about significant wind with this storm. Uh, they're saying tornado and uh, maybe half dollar size hail moving to the east. Still have an inflow notch right here over Mansfield. In fact, I've got the cameras in the back turned to the west and north. So if we want to check either the studio or the stadium camera, I think that's going to be a good option for us. And we might want to start double or triple boxing the storm tracker or um, the storm tracker and the I know they're in that area or the uh, camera for either the studio or stadium in that triple box. That'd be really good. We got a good camera to get some visuals from that. Do you want to update really quickly here on Taylorville? Taylorville city limits all clear. Uh, interesting little spot near Stonington and points to the east. Still worried about Stonington, Moequa, Blue Mound, 
Macon. I have not seen any reports uh, of additional tornadoes from that, but that little batch there starting to show some signs of rotation. And then further off to the south, there are still more storms developing south of Springfield and towards the Effingham area, but nothing concerning at this point. They are, though, in an environment that would be maybe a little more supportive for uh, some rotation here and there and whatnot. So we're going to watch all of that closely. As this continues to extend, uh, Mansfield, time is up. In fact, it's in Mansfield, moving to the north and east. This will be very close to Muhammad, Lake of the Woods on 47 North. There's a lot of houses there that are um, in that area, and so we're concerned about them. We, uh, you know, really that area, all people in that polygon need to be seeking shelter here. The sirens, I'm sure, are going off in parts of Champaign County now. Thomasboro, Rantoul, Fisher, Ludlow, as that storm continues. Let's just say, let's just play this scenario. If there is a brief or weaker tornado with this, that'd be a great scenario here. But the problem is, is while yes, the tornado is an issue, wind, this is going to be a windy storm moving in. Suggestions are that maybe we've got some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds coming in the northern part of Champaign County. And something we need to think about as well on the news side is if we can, um, perhaps we can look at power outage to get some numbers in that too uh, and find some information out. So um, Kevin, you are there at the wall. Tell us more about what you're seeing as this storm now continues. One now into Champaign County, another south of Decatur. Kevin? Yeah, really intense uh, winds that are showing up um, along this area uh, coming into uh, to Mansfield and uh, into the Muhammad area here. Uh, you, you talked about, uh, you know, um, texting. I just texted uh, my wife and uh, the kid there and the dog taking shelter in Muhammad. You should be doing the same if you live in Muhammad or, or Mansfield there as well, um, because these are going to be some really strong winds uh, that are coming through right now. And so that's what we're looking at. See this kind of pink color that stretches all the way back to the D-Land area? That's your really strong winds, and it is about to get really windy out there in uh, parts of, 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 of uh, Pyatt County there and into northwestern portions of Champaign County and the Muhammad area all along there on I-74 and we're watching that area and it's it's not going to be long I'm talking a few minutes and this thing is going to be right on top of you um, I think we got a pretty good uh, view I, I was watching some of the lightning there from um, our uh, storm tracker uh, the, with Adam and Seth that have been out there, that lightning is just lighting the skies up. That is for sure here tonight in, in, in those areas. So you need to be in your tornado safe spot. If you are in, in Muhammad, you can see there on the right side, if you look at that lightning there from our camera that is located here at the studio, but also Adam and Seth that are out there into the storm tracker. These are the strong winds that are going to come right into Mansfield and Muhammad, and uh, those are going to ramp up really quick. And yeah, Kevin, I'm seeing some signs on radar here. There's a surge of energy, a surge of wind on the south side there, and that concerns me that that Mansfield circulation is going to spin up. Uh, Lake of the Woods, Muhammad, very concerned, especially uh, Mansfield, Muhammad to the north there, up towards where that uh, natural gas peaker plant is on 47. Fisher, you're going to get a lot of wind and rain and hail from this too, but... Uh, uh, you know, it just looks more and more ominous the, yeah. the further this I, moves along. I don't, I don't like the signature at all. I, 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 there could be a tornado. This is a classic um, signature right here on a QLCS. You got inflow coming in here, rear inflow jet poking on the backside. There could be a tornado uh, trying to form with this as well. If nothing else, you have 70 plus mile an hour winds. Muhammad, it is literally knocking on your doorstep there. It's, it's kind of come through uh, Mansfield now, but this thing is going to race off here, cross 47, and then uh, continue to the east to I-57 towards Thomasboro and Rantoul. Thomasville and Rantoul being your safe spot, turning to a safe spot right now. Mansfield in between there to Muhammad. This is a really intense, intense radar signature here uh, that we're looking at. So what I'm gonna do is we'll take this and we'll switch it back over to the uh, the velocity view of this here. And what it's going to do is show us just how strong some of these winds are. And I, I don't, listen, here's the thing. I, I know we've got a storm coming to Champaign County, but I, I, we also have the storm coming in, uh, tornado warning down into Macon County, Moequa, 
right now and along Highway 51. This is an area of concern with rotations because they've had confirmations of, of tornadoes uh, from earlier with this. And so we don't want to leave you guys out here as well. If you are in southern portions of Macon County, uh, getting close to Mount Zion, you're on the edge there in Booty, Radford, Timuqua, along 51, outside of Assumption, uh, that storm is going to go towards Mount Zion as well. So that is an area that uh, we don't want to lose sight of. But let's take you back here. You're seeing the lightning uh, that is uh, showing up with our storms. Tornado warning does continue here uh, for several locations, but I think the biggest concern is going to continue to be right here coming into Muhammad right now. If you're in Muhammad, you should already be in your tornado safe spot because right now this storm is, is literally crossing over 47 here as we speak. Really strong, intense winds associated with this, and we can see that when you switch over to our velocity. Um, and again, I think right here, uh, right here, there might be something um, with I see that as well, Kevin. Some of that rotation there. And so that is now going to be north of the interstate there. 47 there, the curves there, um, right there on 47. And here, because of sometimes the radar being a little bit delayed, you might put that right there. That could be on uh, 47 here right now and 136. There's a lot of houses up there, Kevin, as you go yep. north of Muhammad, uh, along the river there. You've got the Sangamon River Forest Preserve south of uh, the Fisher area. Between Fisher and Muhammad at this point, uh, that is the greatest concern. Muhammad, just because we're saying barely north, you still still want you to shelter in the city of Muhammad. Uh, on this path, Kevin, Rantoul. This is moving towards Rantoul and will be very close to the city up there. Heads up for Rantoul and eventually downstream towards Gifford with that particular warning, Kevin. It's going northeast, 136, Rantoul there as well. Also, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Did you, you hear that, Kevin? Uh, I'm sorry, did you say something there? Okay, so, so Muhammad there, again, racing there to uh, the north there. You've got that, and you can see that the constant lightning there. On the right side of your screen, our storm tracker, our view from our camera, but there is some kind of rotation that is there. Funnel cloud reported north of Muhammad, Kevin. Okay, so there it is. The funnel cloud um, is, is being reported there north of Muhammad. That would match up um, with radar. That means that uh, that could touch down uh, at any moment. So tornado safe spot, Fisher right now. It's super important. Fisher um, right there along 136. In between between Fisher and Rantoul, it is the time. You need to go right now. This is a serious situation here. Funnel clouds being reported. Tristan, Tristan. It'll take just a few seconds uh, for, for that to develop. But again, guys, uh, we're going to watch this. Our crews are out there, but we're going to wait for this update. Start the encoder, camera this camera one, weather probably metrics. going to be up also here, record storm closer to Fisher here in just the next few minutes. I'm just looking at um, off screen on some other record here. Um, that is now going to be just south of Fisher. Weather metrics where some one. Of that rotation and is. As I looked at another product here, it's going to be just crossing over 47 here as we speak. Uh, this is a, a very high area of concern because the spotters have confirmed a, a funnel cloud with this. And I'm just seeing those indicators of that when we look at it from the velocity and when we look at it here on radar, it's right in there. I mean, that is it right there. This is a classic. Classic little QLCS, little tornado that that spit that can spin up right in this area here. Okay, rear inflow punching in here on the backside, inflow here. You're getting this rotating part of the storm, and it's crossing over 47 Fisher right now. If you live anywhere there, north of Muhammad to Fisher, and then all the way up there um, as you get into northern portions of Champaign County, crossing eventually down the line into Ford and in uh, uh, Iroquois County there. This thing is heading in that northeasterly direction. Rantoul and Thomasboro, because here's the thing, these are taking a northeasterly trek. Sometimes though, maybe they curve a little bit to the right and it's something that, that you have to monitor, but that updated radar skin there, if nothing else, there are 70 plus mile an hour winds. And I got a feeling we're gonna be starting to hear about uh, some reports of some trees and whatnot or power lines down and that's something to to check on or some of the the power outages that uh, might be associated uh, with what we're seeing out there tonight um, as we switch things back over to the velocity we take you back down it looks like they've allowed for that uh, tornado warning that was down there into portions of um, Macon County there looks like that that's just 
just a severe thunderstorm warning now. Uh, so that's some good news. Just a severe thunderstorm warning, uh, but still a really strong storm uh, associated uh, with that. That's coming now into now Monticello. That's going to get you guys uh, here next. And so be on the lookout for that there. But the big concern just passing through uh, the Muhammad area, passing uh, right there. Boy, just that that little it's right south of Fisher there, Kevin. It yeah. is very close to Fisher and maybe trying to surge to the north uh, just a little bit. Very close call. Fisher, Rantoul, still Muhammad, and there's a lot of wind coming in there as well, Kevin. Um, Want to mention Storm Tracker now going south from Rantoul. They are in Rantoul heading south now, and they're going to get ahead of the storm here. And um, also wanted to mention, I have the sky cam in control, and I've been seeing a lowering. Have not been able to confirm anything. In fact, you see it on the left side of the sky cam there, Kevin, a uh, little spot that piques my interest. Can we bring the sky cam weather metrics one full real quick? I'm going to turn it a little bit. Yeah, it, it's t I see what you're looking at there. We're at the mercy of, of that the is, lightning. That is the wrong camera. I need weather metrics one, please. Do you guys not have that? Let's get that camera on weather medical state, and that's my fault. Um, I'll put the studio camera on. Is that popped up? There we go. Yep. And so I think on the right, is that on the right side of your screen there? I kind of moved it a little bit to the middle. I mean, if that's looking due north, northwest in here, you kind of see in the right edge where that area is uh, wrapping up. I'll tell you what, the focus is not very yeah, friendly I see, here. Might, maybe try to, try, try to get that focus on the near and far there a little bit. Um, trying to look into that i mean it's 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 threading the needle to try to look into that storm uh, maybe yeah maybe the, yeah there you go a little bit there to the right so the lightning is what we're kind of looking at here to try and help us see something and i i see it there for like a brief second i'm um, off in the distance there like right there on the on the center right half of your screen there yeah, that could be heavy rainfall but uh boy you you can definitely see something trying to show up in that area um yep that's that's where it would be it's going to be wrapped up in there we may not get a good vantage yeah. from where we are here kevin um so we're going to we're going to just watch this very closely uh it's going to be dewey the small town of dewey if you know dewey fisher road you drive south from elliott or you head north on mattis eventually that takes you to dewey that's that where the dewey state bank is this is coming towards there this will be coming towards rantoul the west side of rantoul shortly and uh it's very concerning to see this there is probably some very strong wind in muhammad now kevin on the south side of this but at this point i do want to give it all clear to dewitt county and uh, mclean county all clear we still have severe thunderstorm warnings to the south, Kevin, in Macon, Shelby, Moultrie, and Christian counties. In fact, the new line now, Western Christian County, we can go ahead and bring me full real fast here. Um, that new line, Western Christian County, now severe thunderstorm warning, severe thunderstorm warnings from Decatur. This line continues, but obviously the storm of the day is this one. There's your inflow right here. This is moving northeast. Dewey sits there. There's Rantoul. This is coming in your direction. If you live in Fooseland, all clear. Bellflower, all clear. Mansfield, Farmer City, all clear. Let's hang tight, Muhammad. We really want to hang tight, Fisher. Wow. Rantoul, really want to hang tight. And that, Kevin, continues to surge forth a little bit uh, with that rotation. Strong, there. I really think it's strong winds. Really strong. Look at that, that orange color over Muhammad. Um, th those are some really strong winds there, uh, right over Muhammad there. The radar indicating some 70 plus mile an hour winds with that little orange uh, area there. That, uh, those are some strong winds there. And that stretches now towards Thomasville. I think that whole wow. area there, I mean, look at some of those oranges. You know, bring mine full real quick here again, Kevin. The latest scan just came in and, and uh, it's now just southeast of Fisher. You can see here those oranges there. And Kevin, if you want to take the GR behind you, I can switch that for you. Sure. Uh, and I'll, okay, so we're going to switch to Kevin and the wall here really fast. Uh, Rantoul and Fisher, even if it's not a, a tornado, it is strong winds, 70, maybe higher than that. We are seeing surging winds here, Kevin, southeast of Fisher, which to me indicates the rotation strengthening as this moves east from Fisher over Dewey now, and by this point, moving quickly towards Rantoul and Ludlow. Literally right now, this is right on the doorstep of Thomasboro and Rantoul. Um, super strong winds. And so you normally you, you hear us talk about the reds or the blues or the greens. Um, we're seeing these yellows and oranges on the velocity, which are really strong winds here uh, that are, I mean, just racing into this, this inflow of the storm here. And so what's happening is you can almost kind of see how this kind of bows out a little bit. And this stretches back to Muhammad. Uh, Muhammad's right there. It's not quite showing up on the, on the 
the map there, but uh, that's Muhammad that you guys are probably getting really strong wins now, but also Thomas Burrow and Rantoul, it is picking up. Down the line, Ludlow and Gifford right there. If you're anywhere along 136, uh, you definitely want to be taking shelter. Gifford, uh, you are not in that, you're barely not in that warning, but uh, if any indication as to what we've had here, the history of this, you will be soon as they carry this on. I mean, they're just trying to keep up with these warnings because they're happening so fast. But Thomas Burrow now, as you can see, these are your winds really strong um, coming into that storm there and, and still there is the potential I'm still seeing some signs of rotation on, on this here uh, as just when we switch back to the reflectivity if you can switch the reflectivity on that on the GR I don't know if Jacob's there to, to switch uh, to our reflectivity, but um, I can tell you there... Sorry, Kevin, I was switching something No, over. you're good. I uh, want to mention real quick, Kevin, there's been a report of a tornado near Stonington. I don't know if that's delayed, but Macon County is aware of that. Okay. We'll see if there's a tornado warning I, there. I think that that was... Um, so they had that tornado warning they issued earlier um, down there from Stonington, and, I, and that's one that was in Macon County earlier. I think that that was from that early report. Uh, there's still some little guys there, but man, um, there's definitely still some really strong winds. Uh, Jacob, keep checking that. Um, keep checking the tower cam there. I'm, I'm paying that around and let me and tell me what you're seeing there as you look due north. But if you can switch this to reflectivity just for a second, um, I just kind of want to show you. Running back and forth here. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and so you can see there's there's Rantoul there, and so you're seeing that storm kind of come in and still. That, hey, Kevin. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you see north of Fisher that little clearing there? Uh, so to me, that looks like a backside QLCS circulation trying to develop. Do you kind of see what I'm saying with that surging north there? Yeah, so that like right there? Yeah, you know, yeah. Fisher, that's just as, I think we're going to see a tornado warning probably for Ford County coming quickly here. Um, that backside comma sometimes is where we can get these QLCSs to form. I, I, there's multiple areas I'm looking, but I just want to give a heads up Paxton Elliott at this point. There may be something that develops that way. Obviously, the main, I mean, geez, there's, there's several spots in there, isn't there? Yeah. yeah, there is. I mean, there's, there's a whole lot that's going on there that the radar is picking up. I would not be surprised, uh, again, we want to, I think we might have something there. That looks way more like a tornado to me. Um, I think there's a tornado on 136. I wouldn't disagree with you. That's going to be near or east of Dewey State Bank. This will be coming through the northwest side of Rantoul. You know all this, the industrial complexes west of Rantoul on 136. It'll be moving in that general direction. I, I, I'll say this, though. We're talking specific points. Anyone in Rantoul, even Thomasboro, still Fisher, hang out for us while we figure this out. Ludlow, uh, downstream, Gifford. Uh, you've got the Middle Fork, the little park reserve in northeast Champaign County. And I still think Paxton, we need to watch out to see what this does. Sometimes these QLCSs, Kevin, get a mind of their own and can deviate a little bit. And so, you know, right in here, correlation coefficient not showing anything, debris tracker not showing anything, but that is a very hey, strong can you, circulation. Hey, can you come back to over me here? Can you uh, just come to me full screen with the with that? And I want, Jacob, can you move that, that, that camera a little bit? You should have a really unimpeded... The studio camera? Um, the, um, um, the, the tower cam there, if it's like straight, look there and see if you can see anything on that. Yeah, I've had it up here. We also have the storm tracker. They're looking, okay. uh, they're driving south, I think, looking behind them. And I haven't seen anything from them. If the storm tracker can hear us, if they're in Thomasboro, they can turn around and, and get, we can maybe get a report from them, but I'm keeping an eye as well. You know, it just seems like the focus is giving me a little trouble here on this camera right now, so we'll keep a very close eye on that. Wow. I can see the shelf cloud and the lightning, Kevin, um, but, you know, this kind of seems yeah. a little wrapped up in the rain to me as well. Yeah, it is. There's some really strong winds there uh, that are obviously coming through, but, uh, boy, that, that is a really intense. And I'm looking at some of our other products here. Um, sometimes we get what's called a, a TVS or a Tornado Vortex Signature, and, and some of those are showing up with that um, area there uh, near Rantoul. Looks like a new severe thunderstorm warning that just got uh, reissued there, which now is going to include uh, the rest, the southwestern portion of Champaign County, but still some... some also high, new in there in Ford and Iroquois. Ford and yeah, yeah, there's the Ford and Iroquois County that's now coming up here. So now this thing trying to get into that one long line that we call a squall line here at QLCS, but this is the highest concern that we have right now because I think if you're in Rantoul, uh, but then down the line, you know, up there into Ludlow, um, you're technically still in that tornado warning, uh, but some really strong winds still rolling through Muhammad, and I still think we've got a tornado here. I, I think you're right. I mean, I think there's a tornado northwest of Rantoul. You see that little circle right there? 
That's it right there. I think that's... Switch over to correlation coefficient. There it is. Okay, tornado now. Is. Northwest yeah. Rantoul. Ludlow. Time is up. Got to go. And, and again, keep in mind, this is probably a, a minute or two behind. This thing's probably there it is. going to be more yep. right here. So tornado right now. Tornado happening right now. It's confirmed on radar. We're seeing it on radar. I, Jacob just said it. Ludlow, you got to go right now. Go right now. Go right now. Take shelter. Rain tool, northwest side of town. It's going to be right there on 57. Um, it's going to cross 57 here in the next uh, minute or so. If you are in Ludlow, you need to take shelter right now. That is as, as clear as it's, it's getting, gotten. And we've gotten that correlation coefficient, which shows us the debris. Okay, the debris is being lofted into the air. Power flashes reported near yep. Dewey. Okay, so that's going to be right there on the, the I guess that Dewey Fisher Road area, uh, as Jacob was talking about. Uh, this thing is coming right here. It's going to pass. It, it, so there's a, this, that reflectivity. I know you're in Ludlow. You're probably getting some rain and some hail, but th this tornado kind of on the back side, it's going to be wrapped in rain. It's that little red circle, Kevin. Yes, correct. I think that's. this may turn into a fairly sizable tornado. It could. I, we want to, I want to watch that uh, correlation coefficient here, but I, we, we absolutely have a tornado here uh, northwest of Rantoul. There it is. This is a dropout in what's called the correlation coefficient. Fancy thing that basically says the radar beam is no longer hitting raindrops and hailstones. It's hitting another object that is not uniform in size. Two by fours, sheet metal, uh, tree limbs, things like that. And so that is it right there. That's your tornado. Coming into Ludlow, the, the radar, again, remember how fast these things are moving here. Um, it's coming into Ludlow. It will be rain-wrapped. You will not be able to see it. Do not try to go out and take a picture of it. Go to your tornado safe spots here immediately because this thing is really has ramped up just in the past kind of five minutes or so, and I'm seeing some intense rotation on it. That that little red dot could even eventually turn out to be a little bit of a, a, a debris uh, signature there. If that if that gets bigger, I, I have a high level of concern when that new scan comes in. If that if that right there turns into a larger blue. Okay, Kevin, just so you know, the storm yeah, yeah. tracker now is facing north on 45, south of Rantoul, and the storm tracker, uh, we can go see if they have a report. The other thing is Brook Hill Golf Course. It's moving in that direction, north of Rantoul. Still, the entire city of Rantoul needs a shelter. New tornado warning also out for Ford and Iroquois counties. This will include Paxton, Cisna Park, Wellington, Milford. It does not include Gilman, Onarga, or Watsika. It's for this. Uh, it's for this. Now, Kevin, we've got the storm tracker. Do we yeah. want to toss it out to them real quick? Yeah, Seth, yeah go ahead. Seth, you're in the storm tracker now looking north. A lot of lightning. Tell us more what you're seeing. A lot of lightning. Tell us more what you're seeing. Jacob, um, one second. Okay, there we go. My microphone fell off, excuse me. We are looking straight north. We are right now a little bit south of Thomasboro, looking straight up to the north towards Rantoul. I can see on my radar scope, it is straight north of us. I'm trying to get the camera aligned where we can maybe see a little bit of that lowering to see if we can get it from this distance. We are pretty far south. We're even south of Thomasboro, but we're trying to inch our way a little closer to it now to see if we can get any kind of any kind of signature through the lightning obviously it's it's almost pitch black out here now so the lightning is the only way that we're going to see a whole uh, lot hey, here real quick real quick we, sorry we uh, think we yep real quick uh, we now have a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado north of rantoul it's behind the rain for you guys this is on the north side of rantoul the national weather service saying this is a particularly dangerous situation ludlow rantoul Gifford, Northeast Champaign County. This also now for Southeastern Ford, Southern Iroquois County, a large and extremely dangerous tornado in progress now, just north of Rantoul, and this is going to be wrapped in rain. The circulation there it is. It's tightening up. Uh, now moving to the north and east. Rossville, Hoopston, Potomac, Rankin, East Lynn. Um, we've got uh, areas ahead of this moving in that direction. You got time in Milford, Hoopston to take shelter. Rantoul, Ludlow, your time is up. Paxton, your time is up. Large and extremely dangerous tornado now reported there. And um, this is moving north and east. Seth and Adam are in a safe spot. They are south of the storm. The storm is north of them. They'll probably come back into town here. And Kevin, we may send them to the north um, to investigate once the storms pass on through. So Kevin, uh, tell us more what you're seeing. Because the the radar signature is is that that's it right there. Okay, and look at the dropout. 
there's a dropout on the velocity. Basically, the, what that's telling us is, is the color table that we use to, to display the winds, they're, they're so strong, it's dropped out here. Super uh, high concern here. I think we have a large tornado here. We're going to see some uh, some damage. A report's going to be coming in. Ludlow, I'm telling you right now, seconds, seconds here. Uh, crossing over 45 and I-57 right now. You cannot see this. You cannot, it's rain wrapped. That right there, that right there is, okay, some of that, that I think the debris, possibly some debris ball that, that can develop when you get the higher reflectivity. This thing coming right here south of Ludlow, I was looking at some of the traffic maps there and traffic is really slowed down on I-57 for good reason. Let's see. I, okay, so there is the velocity. We're going to see if that correlation coefficient drops out here as it passes through um, the Ludlow there. But there's definite signs of rotation that are still there. This thing is rain wrapped and all kind of on the back side. Super difficult to see this. Um, but it is now going to be heading into Ford County here before too long. South of Paxton on 57. Uh, I'd be really curious to see if, if traffic uh, comes to a, a, a halt there with some of the traffic maps because that thing crossing I-57 as we speak and then kind of down the line there. Um, take. Uh, I want to see that, that velocity there because I got a new scan that just came in and it looks like, so it, there it is. It's now south of Ludlow. It's just south of Ludlow. I'm, you know, you're that's talking. That's Brook Hill Golf Course. A mile there, yep. The, the golf course that's over there. And so just, there's Gifford way down there. But this is going to be between Ludlow and Gifford. That is that is a rain-wrapped tornado. Uh, again, visually, you're not going to be able to see this thing. It's, it's kind of pointless to, you know, you need to be in your, your tornado safe spot. Nobody going out trying to uh, take pictures of this because you're just going to see uh, a dark cloud and a bunch of rain there. And all of a sudden, those winds are going to pick up and so there it is crossed uh, 45 there and then down the line you got to look out there uh, to Rankin as this will continue to hug right there along that Ford in Champaign County line there's Iroquois County this whole area you need to be on the on the lookout uh, Hopeston, you're technically in that warned area, but this is one of the stronger signatures we've seen. The strongest one since we had the Sherman uh, tornado earlier that absolutely hey, Kevin, some damage. We yeah. just had a report of a traffic collision on I-57 north near Ludlow. That's the tornado. Okay, um, so the tornado there uh, near Ludlow, as I mentioned, on I-57 traffic is, is really kind of being slowed down as a result of, of this tornado and uh, traffic collision that's occurred there, and that's that's going to be your, your tornado uh, that, that kind of moved through. I'm not seeing a, a huge drop in the correlation coefficient, uh, which is some good news. So we may have had a, a brief touchdown there, and, and then maybe... Maybe it's trying to lift there briefly, but this is one of the things, this thing can be kind of hopscotching up and down here. And because it is wrapped in rain, it is kind of difficult to see. Uh, but that's what we're kind of looking at here um, on this. Um, let me come back over. That rotation is still there south of Ludlow. Let's see what the latest movement here is. That is that still going at about 50 miles an hour? Here? Yeah, I'm just checking here, kind of walking 60, back and forth 60. between stations. It's moving at a good clip. Uh, Seth and Adam, by the way, are going to stay in Urbana, and then they're going to head north once we can get them through these storms here, Kevin. Okay, so they're staying safe out there. These things are just moving so fast. You know, it's hard to keep up with it. Even driving, they're going at highway speed, 60 plus miles an hour. So this thing is going to be on top of uh, Rankin here before too long these little embedded tornadoes. You've got strong winds, but you've got embedded tornadoes. Have we had any uh, any, any other reports uh, from back towards Muhammad or anything of, of damage? I'd be, I'd be curious there because they had some strong winds that came through. I'm curious if we had it a bit. Look how this thing is is, is really kind of lining out, becoming this big long line of storms, but embedded in that line, little circulations, and that's what we have seen uh, with the storm there that is south of, Lud uh, south of Ludlow. And now going to be... Um, Going to be crossing north and east of Ludlow, according to some of the new Doppler radar indi indicators that I'm seeing. So there it is. That new scan is going to come up here in just a second. Looks like uh, east of, yeah, there it is. You know, that leading edge of strong wind now coming into Gifford as well. I mean, yeah. 
there's there's spots here there everywhere i mean anywhere along that from ludlow down towards gifford kevin we've got to watch out for with this line here um do you want to mention reports fisher out of power uh, i saw power flash reports in the dewey area from this confirmed tornado uh, we know that there's been a traffic incident on 57 north of rantoul near ludlow the storm is moving quickly to the north and east, northern Vermilion County, southern Iroquois, southeastern Ford County, still in the path of this. Um, the Adam and Seth are going to come to the station for a little bit, Kevin, ride the storm out, and then we'll get crews up there. Whether it's them or news, we can take care of that. But uh, I'm sure, Kevin, based on the signature, there's likely going to be some damage of some type here. Yeah, we absolutely had uh, some damage, I think, southwest of Ludlow. The correlation coefficient did show that. Um, we're hoping that maybe it's it's lifted there briefly, but there are super strong winds here in Gifford. Uh, anytime we're starting to see that, that yellow color, that usually is 70 plus mile an hour winds there. So I think Gifford is seeing some really intense winds. And then we just gotta watch when we see winds that strong, you know, that thing starts to, if it can wrap up just a little bit, get some of that inflow going and, and, and that rotation tightens up. But I gotta tell you, a lot of these are gonna turn into very, large wind events um, all along there. Um, I'm not seeing the same kind of rotation signature that I had a little bit earlier, so that is some uh, some good news. But the problem is, is now it's that whole area of wind along that entire line. I mean, this whole thing, you can probably, you know, say 70 mile an hour winds are possible. Champagne, uh, soon here, you're technically not in a warning, but we'll, we'll Keep checking our cameras there because that's going to start to come in here into, into Champaign uh, before too long. Do we have anything else kind of further down to the south and west? You know, Kevin, it's just lined up with severe thunderstorm warnings um, all the way from Champaign that. to Decatur, Taylorville, points to the south and east. Now, if you're in DeWitt, McLean, Logan, Menard, Sangamon, Morgan, Cass County, all clear for those areas behind the line. It's along and ahead of the line. We may not be done with, with circulations. You know, we have to watch little spots here, Kevin, and the radar is a little far away for some of these areas, but you get the idea that there's these little kinks in the line, and at any point, some of those may be an issue. What does catch my attention a little bit is this little cluster here south of Shelbyville. It doesn't look severe yet, but there are signs of rotation in the storm, and if it can continue to stay out by itself, sometimes that's the storms that we really have to watch here. So we'll watch for Stuart in Strasburg, eventually Mattoon, Charleston, keeping an eye on that storm ahead. Not concerning at this point. Still could be those move forth and then these little, you know, one little spot near Pena, one little spot near Hillsborough, a little spot there southwest of Nokomis that we have to watch for some of the circulation here. Um, the, the biggest concern is at this point is northeastern Champaign County. And I want to send it to Jess really fast. Jess has some information for us. Jess, what yeah, can you Kevin, say? Kevin, you asked about Muhammad. Any damage reports there? One of our reporters just got off the phone with the Circle K in Muhammad. They have power, visibility low there, customers are hunkering down. They have not heard of damage or down trees in town yet. We have not heard anything either. We've not gotten any reports our way. As far as power outages across the area, not a ton. West of Springfield, there's a few hundred people without power and some smaller outages, but no major outages as of now. Again, we have a crew in Sherman working to get more information there. And we do have a crew um, working to get to Riverton as well to look at the damage, so we'll continue to keep you updated. Can we get a look at the um, the stadium camera? I'll put that on, on three real fast. This is coming into town here. This is the leading edge of wind on Weather Metrics 3. Um, you can take it full here. You can see that line in the middle of the screen. We're about to have the shelf cloud roll on through, and I think those lights looking north from the stadium is going to be out towards the uh, northwest Champaign, towards Parkland College, over towards the uh, big, it used to be Anderson's. I can't remember what the name it is now, but the big grain company there on, on Staley Road and uh, Rising Road. Anderson's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so as this comes on through, we're going to get some wind here in Champaign and Urbana. The tornado threat continues to be north of town, and it's something that we have to watch. Um, and Kevin, you know, folks probably might be saying, oh, well, I've got a severe thunderstorm warning. I'm, I'm okay. The wind is still going to be a problem with the storm as it continues off to the north and east. So that's something that we continue to watch very closely. We may have some reports of 60 to 70 mile an hour gusts come out of this, if not higher than that. And I think it may take some time before we realize what kind of damage has happened with the rain coming on through. And uh, so that's something that we're going to keep an eye on, Kevin. Hey, Jacob, uh, go ahead and fire me back up with my... Uh, oh, you want your... Okay. The radar there, and I'm going to uh, attempt to see what we can do uh, with that on, on the Max 2 box there. And for those of you back in production, 
introduction, if you can here, um, at, at 8 o'clock, I'd like to do a little recap of some of the pictures that you've received from some of the damage from earlier as well. And, and we'll do a little recap there at the top of the hour of some activity that occurred down near Sherman and some damage down there. But for now, we want to, this line, I mean, look at this. This is now a hundred plus mile long line of severe thunderstorms and also uh, tornado warnings uh, that are currently in effect here um, across the area. Hey, Kevin, before you yep. zoom in, um, and let me make sure that's in play mode, do you see those purple polygons in LaSalle County, north of Livingston County? National Weather Service in Chicago has warnings from Dwight North for 90 mile per hour winds. Oh my goodness. 90 mile per hour winds. They don't look like much, but the wind with them is very incredible. So 90 mile an hour winds up there towards the Chicago land area here um, tonight. Um, we can get that. To, can you click that up there on the on the upper left with the mouse there, just to pull up the toolbar up there? There, there we go. Perfect. Um, so again, wow, strong winds up there, and we'll do just kind of a little bit of radar tour here. But I want to show you. Here is that confirmed tornado warning still in effect. Really strong winds here, and we can see that when we switch it over to the velocity. You're going to see this right here, and that's going to start to grab my attention again. I want to see what the next radar scan kind of shows with this, but that's going to be, I'm just going to look at some other activity here, just south and west of Rankin. Um, that is an area of concern, some really strong winds. Uh, there that is going to be northwest of Potomac and that right there I want to watch that carefully see how that continues to develop for sure uh, because if anything you've got some 70 mile per hour winds that might be right there listen those 90 mile an hour winds aren't too far to the north I'm starting to hear some of the rain here um, just outside the studio so what we'll do is I'm going to pan along this entire line and kind of show you guys what we've got Really intense winds ran tool to Penfield on 136, northern portions of Champaign County, um, not quite to St. Joe yet, you'll be next, back towards uh, Muhammad and Seymour, just kind of some of that heavy rain coming to an end in Muhammad here before too long. Monticello, uh, you're actually uh, seeing a little bit of a break from those storms, but it's coming down pretty good. Uh, be met down to Cerro Gordo and uh, Mount Zion, the southeastern portions of, of Macon County there. Uh, coming into Dalton City before too long. Moultrie County, you're next. Uh, Lovington, you're going to get hit by some really strong winds there. Da back down into uh, southeastern portions of Christian County, there's Assumption, down to Pena, strong storms there, all of this. Basically, if it is storming right now where you are, you are probably under a severe thunderstorm warning. And you can see that goes all the way down here into uh, Montgomery, McCoupin County's down here. And so you may be saying, okay, we got some other activity out here towards Shelbyville and Windsor. That's uh, not, not quite severe. There's some other uh, storms that have developed, but you can see right now, severe thunderstorm warnings continue through Macon County. They continue all the way through portions of Southern uh, Piatt County. And right now, coming into Champaign County, some really strong winds, heavy rainfall, quite a bit of lightning associated with this as well. I just want to look at the velocities on this here. So these are your strong winds right here. Uh, that, that color, some of those uh, orangish kind of colors there, peach color, that's going to be the strong winds that are associated uh, with our thunderstorms and possibly a few spots getting some of that rotation. And I'm just going to keep kind of going here to the north and east where, again, we're just watching these areas kind of north of Penfield. You get these little little kinks that can occur, and that's why we're kind of concerned about still maybe a tornado that could form. We've had several of those. They're tough to see, but they're kind of embedded. They're rain-wrapped, but Penfield, eventually towards the, the Hoopston area, there's Milford up there into Iroquois County. It's their system park. You guys haven't had a whole lot yet, but all of this is going uh, to the north and east. Well, it is 8 p.m., uh, straight up top of the hour, and we have been in severe weather coverage over the last several hours, and as a result of tornadoes that have moved through parts of central Illinois, we want to show you some pictures that we have received from earlier. This is first going to be in Sherman. You can see here, um, I believe uh, Landon uh, sent some of these uh, uh, pictures in to us, and look at the power lines here. Power pole 
at a 45 degree angle all of the trees that are down here. Hey um, Kevin. Snapped off here as well. Yeah. Uh, news is working to confirm um, that there are multiple vehicles involved on I-57 North and some of the reports are a little concerning on uh, I-57 North of Rantoul. I want folks to know if you're coming from Chicago South or you know what just, just stay home here at this point. Okay. Um, News is working. We've got Brandon going with the storm. He's going to take the storm tracker up north and uh, head that way here shortly. So um, some concerning reports coming from northern Champaign County. Hoopston, Rankin, those areas need to be in shelter and stay in shelter. Sister Park, Milford, Wellington, places like that. That's the storm tracker. Uh, they're going to come back actually and pick them up. They're not quite here yet, but he'll be heading that way. Um, some, we also, I have seen a report that we might be off the air. I'm not sure if that means we're out of power, but again, we are streaming um, on our digital platforms. It looks like uh, they're, they're calling in extra mutual aid from surrounding departments for up by Ludlow, Kevin. Okay, um, so we're going to keep checking on that. We're going to continue our, our recap here of, of what we've been seeing here. We've got more pictures and, and whatnot uh, that we want to show you. Again, this is back towards the uh, Sherman area, and you can see, again, more of those power lines down, more of those trees that snapped there. That was a very large tree. Look at that. Uh, there it is, the top half of that tree and the power lines going through it. Um, additional pictures here, more power lines, homes here that uh, were damaged. Again, this was uh, near Sherman. Uh, so that is obviously concerning. There were some Kevin, new tornado, possibly. new big tornado southeast of Rankin on correlation coefficient. New tornadoes gotcha. just southeast of Rankin just popped up here. Uh, if you want to bring me full real quick, there is the new tornado now just southeast of Rankin. Rankin, East Lynn, Hoopston, uh, south of Sister Park, off towards Wellington, Milf, uh, Milford, places like that. This is going to be another sizable tornado now. Uh, we can get, there's the circulation, right? Perfect spot. And uh, you'll see the, the rotation there. I'm so sorry to cut you off there, Kevin, but I saw that pop up in um, Hoopston, East Lynn, Wellington. The time is now to get to your shelter here. I want to say all clear for Gibson, Elliott, Paxton, Fisher, Rantoul as the storms are to the east. Uh, Rankin, tornado in progress, now moving east of town, Kevin. Um, and I'm not sure if you're back. I see this. Colors are getting a little off here. They're trying to fix some keying there for me. Um, Kevin, are you still back yeah, there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm back here. If you want, um, I will switch to the GR, and you can point that out if that's if that helps you a little bit. Uh, yeah, or you, you could also uh, come back to come back to Max Two. Max there. Two behind you. They're showing. Okay, they're showing some more. What, what was that, Tristan? Was that video? I'll let you guys handle that. Let's stay on Max Two for me here, and let me kind of control things, and 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 then I will. Uh, uh, then you guys let me know if you got some video or something you want to show here. But let's kind of show what we've got going on uh, once again with this uh, rotating part of this storm. Um, it is a concern, as you mentioned, the correlation coefficient basically is is a product, a radar product that we use that shows. Essentially debris. It's uh, going to be southeast of, of 9 and 49, right between the two icons there. There it is. Okay, so you're going to be right there. And so that's going to be the uh, tornado debris signature that is present with this. So this means that the tornado is probably um, going to be all already up here in east of Rankin because the, the radar comes up with this, sends the data back. They're moving quick. This is now east of Rankin. It is crossed, uh, probably crossing nine. Uh, there it is, a, a nice little update there from that. Basically, so the Kevin. radar is seeing rotation with this storm and confirmed tornado because this is debris. It's hit something. It's hit something other than, um, you know, it's not a raindrop, it's not a hailstone some kind of structure here uh, that has been hit. Yeah, so, Kevin, another report from Fisher, large anhydrous ammonia leak at Alani FS on US-136 east of Fisher. Uh, that's another report coming in. Folks are saying in the county that we're going in and out. Remember, you can stream. There's a lot of damage in northern Champaign County, and there's about to be a lot of damage in northern Vermilion County. So sorry, I just wanted to get these yeah, reports out. No, that's good there. So um, keep everything. That's a nice um, update there that just came in here. Not a nice one. It's a, it's a bad one. Um, it, 
shows I think we still have a tornado on the ground. It's on Highway 9 right now. Debris is being lofted into the air east of Rankin. Uh, going to be heading into Iroquois County here now. It's right on that uh, on the county line there. Um, listen, the Fountain Creek there, there's Wellington. Wellington, you need to be in your tornado safe spot. This is a tornado. It's happening right now. Confirmation of debris with this. And this is continuing to move off here to the northeast. This is a dangerous situation, something that you, you cannot take lightly uh, because, and it's also a thing where you can't really see a lot of this. It is wrapped in rain. This thing is wrapped in rain here. Um, it, it's almost kind of, you know, on the back side, we're seeing some of that here of this. So this is not your classic, you know, funnel that you're going to be able to see if you go out there. Very difficult to, to see anything. Uh, but we have confirmation when we just look at our, our, our correlation coefficient here uh, that we have confirmed a tornado and this is going to go up here. Here's Milford. Okay, East Lynn. Wellington East Lynn. and East Lynn. That's right. They're East Lynn. And we'll zoom in. We can go in. What's, what's, what we can actually do is we can go in here. And we'll turn on a bunch of your, your streets and whatnot. And we're going to just kind of play on this being for probably almost through East Lynn by now, by the time the radar skin comes through. And so that's Wellington there. That's going to come really close to you guys there. And Route 1, you need to be in your tornado safe spot. There's good wine there, kind of south there. This is going to track right here to the north and east. Wellington, really important for you guys uh, to, to be taking shelter. Um, the Guys, the video that you have from Muhammad, is that, uh, do you have some, uh, I heard you got some damage video or something there from Muhammad. If you have that, uh, uh, if you have any of that, you can let me know about it. if you get any damage video or anything like that um, you can let me know we can show you that some of that video there that was in Muhammad uh, real quick there um, you can see kind of a little bit of a lowering uh, that was coming down there um, probably those strong gusty winds took all of that lightning and one of the subdivisions there in Muhammad so and that's what you're looking at but right now a big concern there is going to be um, East Lynn to Wellington um, it, right there into southern portions of Iroquois County a really strong signature there um, west of Hoopston, uh, so much so that the, the, the velocity signature on this is dropping out uh, again. There is your rotating part of the storm. This is the tornado. Wellington's right here along Route 1. This is going to be racing off to the north and to the east uh, between Hoopston and Wellington. Be in your tornado safe spots here right now. There is a debris signature that is showing up. That is the confirmation that we have that this, in fact, is the real deal. This isn't just your regular tornado warning. This is one that we have confirmation based upon what the radar is showing us. It, there is, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it because whenever we see something uh, like this, uh, it, is, it is absolutely um, rock solid. Um, a, a report that we get when the radar looks like this. So I'm going to zoom back in on this once again, take you into that spot right on the uh, kind of Vermilion and Iroquois County line. Look at that uh, right there as we zoom in. Um, here in just a little bit, here in just a second, I, I hear you guys in there. We're going to go to Chance, who is in Sherman here in just a little bit. But I want to stay with this for right now because we do have a tornado that is on the ground right now. Um, and now this tornado debris signature, you're going to see this kind of bluish area probably land somewhere over here in the next scan that comes up. And so uh, that is a concerning thing whenever you see that right there. That is going to be crossing Highway 1 before too long. And then you get up towards Milford, Stockland, there into Iroquois, uh, southern portions of uh, Iroquois County. Big concern for us as that confirmed tornado based upon the radar signatures is showing up with that storm. Yeah, so, Kevin, real quick. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Real quick, uh, three miles east of Rankin, spotters witnessed the tornado crossing Route 9. That's going to be about a mile and a half west of East Lynn there. I also want to mention, we're keeping our eye on this one, but we got to watch all of these storms. The National Weather Service is saying this storm now over West Champaign is starting to show some early signs of broad rotation. There's not a tornado warning for Champaign-Urbana right now. Given how things are going, we are going to watch that storm very closely. Still severe thunderstorm warm, but I just wanted to get those tidbits in. Um, can we have Jess share the information that she has from Ludlow really quick, confirmed? Um, let's send it to Jess really fast. Jess, what can you tell us yeah, about the Ludlow area? Jacob, you were mentioning a possible accident on 57, and the village administrator in Rantoul confirmed multiple, multiple vehicle accident on 57, power lines down in that area, damage to a shed or sheds north of Rantoul, 
school. No damage in town yet that they've identified, but I'm sure that will change as things start to move out of the area. So, okay, so East Lynn right now where that rotation is, Kevin. Uh, we're going to watch all of this. I'm going to let you continue, Kevin, talking and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and taking the lead on the East Lynn storm. I will watch the rest of the storms here. Yeah. If you know anyone, Hoopston, Wellington, text them. Please help us with getting the warning out here with this large and extremely dangerous tornado in progress in the super, East Lynn area. Super strong um, indicators of, of, of some rotation with this. I want to... This is this is a report that I'm getting, and I don't know if you guys have heard about this or or, or not. It is in association with that that uh, that accident there on I-57. Um, they're saying that possibly a tour bus uh, got hit uh, by the tornado. Um, there. That's what I've heard too, Kevin. Yeah, uh, on uh, uh, on 253 there. So Interstate 57 is closed at this time. Yeah, it is closed. So. Um, that is not what we want to hear. I, I will say this, that there's still a big concern here with our storm uh, here south and west of uh, Wellington. And you can see that debris signature that is still showing up on this. As we click this back over to our velocity, and you can see it right there still kind of there, uh, probably just east of East Lynn is where we still have that rotating part of the storm where it looks like on radar, and according to the correlation coefficient, still that debris tracker showing us Wellington. We told you here just a couple minutes ago, this thing is gonna be right on top of you, moving really fast. That rotating part of the storm I know in Hoopston, the rain is really coming down at this moment. Uh, that the, the rotating part of this is going to be just north and west of Hoopston, uh, but if you are in the Wellington area between Wellington and East Lynn, uh, south there of, of, of Goodwine, that is the, the huge area of concern that we've got as this moves to the north and east. Uh, that is Milford, uh, there's Stockland there, but that rotating part of that storm is, is really kind of ramped up here uh, just in, within the past few scans, and that tornado debris signature is what we look at, and we're gonna see this update and possibly see this again get placed a little bit more. If we still have a tornado on the ground uh, lofting debris, we may have some of that still taking place. This will be difficult to see because A, it's nighttime. B, a lot of these are wrapped in rain and you can't see them. But this is a very concerning radar signature that is telling us that people need to still be in their shelters here right now. What, we'll, what I want to do is I want to zoom things out just a little bit more because I do want to, Jacob was mentioning the potential for the broadening of rotation maybe down here into Champaign County. So I'm just going to flip things over to the velocity and see if we can kind of see anything. Um, we'll zoom back in here. The issue with the environment, the, the nighttime environment that we have here, the wind fields aloft are still really, really strong. And so it doesn't take much to get uh, sometimes these little little spin-ups that will occur uh, with tornadoes that can form really quick. We've seen that multiple times here tonight where it looks like, okay, uh, maybe it's okay. Then all of a sudden, boom, uh, something really rapidly develops. That storm now between Wellington and Hoopston. Between Wellington and Hoopston, still seeing some of that rotation. And so we're going to take you back up there because that is uh, the largest concern uh, that we actually have here right now with the storms. And so we'll take you back up here. There it is, the rotating part of that storm. And we can really see it here when we look at it on Doppler radar. Um, there it is just east of East Lynn, as we mentioned before, and heading right into Wellington as we speak. If you're not already in your turn on a safe spot, you gotta, you gotta run, and I'm, I'm saying run now, lowest level of your home, in the interior part of your house is where you wanna be. We've had multiple tornadoes here tonight, and still ongoing. That is the signature there. This is gonna cross Route 1 in the next minute or two. As that rotation is still showing up, I'm going to see what the, the debris signature is now. So that would be co-located, and you can see it right there still. We probably still have a tornado right now going through some, some rural areas here, but that's going right to Wellington. It's going into Wellington in the next few minutes. The, row, the, the, the confirmed tornado that we're seeing here based upon uh, our correlation coefficient, that thing is right there. This is going to pass northwest of Hoopston, not by much, uh, but it is going to be northwest of Hoopston and going into Wellington here 
over the next few minutes or so. That is the biggest concern that we have for the storms. We have to monitor all of these because there's an entire, there's a huge long line that stretches all the way back to the south and west. And Jacob has uh, that line pulled up there. Uh, Jacob, uh, show us what else is going on on the radar tonight. Yeah, let's get you a drink of water here, Kevin. You've been doing phenomenal keeping Central Illinois safe here tonight. Uh, we're going to talk from north to south on this line as we're not done yet here. Now, if you live behind the line, Springfield, uh, Decatur, Clinton, Bloomington Normal, Gibson City, you're all good here from this point on. We are focused along and ahead of the line where this unstable air mass is in place. Uh, we're going to start from south to north. First stop, I want to mention, see this right here? This is north of Mount Vernon. This is south of Effingham on I-57. Uh, that'd be the central, let me, before, let me just zoom in here. That's going to be the Salem area. This storm north of Centralia is moving in a north-northeastward direction. It may very well come close to the southeastern parts of Effingham County and it's out ahead of the line. That may be a storm we have to watch in the next little bit. Effingham up towards uh, Cumberland County potentially from that. The line itself is back here and that's going to be Fayette County here. There's a little area of circulation near Greenville. No tornado warning. It has that tornado possible tag and that means that a tornado could develop at any point. We will watch that as it moves towards Fayette and Effingham counties. This line continues off to these. Uh, Mattoon, Charleston, we've got a cluster of storms now uh, really over Mattoon. And uh, I want to zoom in on the, this cell. Notice how it's also ahead of the line. That is something where we'll have to keep a close eye on it. As I switch to velocity here, I don't see a concerning area of rotation, but certainly there's signs of turbulence in this storm. It's in a very favorable air mass here where this storm could very well organize and being ahead of the line, it may get a chance to produce or do some uh, do some stuff here moving forth. So we will watch that. The line itself, for the most part now, if you're on the area ahead of it, you're in a severe thunderstorm warning from Shelbyville up towards Windsor, towards the uh, Sullivan area, up towards Atwood. We keep going to the north here through Champaign-Urbana. It's clearing through here now, which is good news and uh, moving off to the east and northeast. We go further to the north, probably the most intense areas here, Potomac, Rossville, Hoopston, and points to the north. If you see here, see this backward C shape? That is the circulation that has been producing tornadoes for us all night. This same storm here produced the Sherman tornado. It came from Jacksonville, got in the line. Sherman, downstream towards Maroa, towards Monticello, towards the Champaign County area here where we've had no multiple tornadoes from that. I will say something that does catch my eye, right northwest of St. Joseph, we'll have to watch this particular area. There's a little area of weak rotation. If it can tap into some of that uh, energy, then maybe we gotta watch Royal. We'd have to watch north of St. Joe, north of Ogden, and uh, that could be a spot where something tries to get, uh, get a little out of hand here. We'll do our best to tamper it down, but I kind of see a little kink right there. And there's plenty of those kinks going down the line too, from Savoy off towards Atwood, where at this point, there's no concerning tornadoes. There's going to be a lot of wind, though, with this storm as it continues to move off to the east, and so that is something that we'll continue to watch. At this point in our area, the only tornado warning we have is Iroquois County. I don't want to give all clears for places that still have storms to come through. And that's why, oh, Vermilion County now, not under a tornado warning, but there's still severe storms in the county here. I'm going to switch radars, and I think we'll get a better view. That right there is a likely tornado now it's between Hoopston and Milford, about halfway, and it's going to move off to the north and to the east there. Wellington, it is on top of Wellington now at this time, and if we look at the correlation coefficient there, still some signs of a lowering. Now, whether that's debris from the earlier tornado or it's something there, Unfortunately, in this part of the world, the scan is very high, and so we aren't getting as close of a look to the ground, uh, but very concerned about Wellington and in southeastern Iroquois County. This will carry into Benton County, Indiana, where we've had this storm cycle down a week and a bit. And then it pulses right back up, producing tornadoes again from Sherman. Now Ludlow, where we've got our crew getting on the interstate heading towards. Um, looks like they are, are heading, um, they're just chopping on the interstate uh, and heading. they've got the storm tracker there. So uh, we'll get more reports from Champaign County here soon as, as they move into position. And then as this continues to the north and east, then soon this particular warning 
will be out of our area, but I don't think we'll be going anywhere based on what has happened tonight. Um, still just checking real fast there. New tornado warning now for Effingham County has just been issued. We told you that just a second ago here. Um, that is going to be for the southeastern portion of Effingham County. In fact, um, Adam, Adam's back in the building. If you can turn the Effingham camera to face southeast, we can get that camera online here. This will be south of Effingham, well south of Effingham, in fact. Uh, it'll even be south of Dieterich. It's going to be in the far southeastern part of the county. We still have viewers down here that, that watch us, and so we're going to watch. But I, I tell you what, that storm there does concern me as it's moving to the north and east. We'll pass between Effingham and Louisville there on 45, and we'll continue to the northeast. This one might be an issue for Newton downstream, uh, south of Casey. Eventually, that's kind of heading towards Terre Haute. We'll see how it moves. It may also to be a Robinson issue, which is uh, we kind of share this territory with Terre Haute um, for television coverage, but we will still watch that very closely. So with that being said here, just checking things one last time down the line, um, you know, it's a little, mm, there's, it's hard to see anything more organized here. Uh, we'll have some time, but I, I still say ahead of this line here, you'll get some uh, damaging winds with it as it moves off to the east. So that line continuing, you've got tornado warning now for Iroquois County, Kevin, and the new tornado warning for far southeastern Effingham County. And Kevin, I think you're looking at that, uh, you're still in Iroquois County, now. is that Watch yeah, it. got the Iroquois yeah, County okay. storm pulled up there, but as you mentioned, we, we want this to continue to go off here uh, to the east and uh, push into uh, Indiana, and uh, that's exactly what's happening. They're, they're going so fast, but just look at all of that kind of broad rotation. If that you know would 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 tighten up at all, um, you know that's that's not a great thing. But um, you, we're still seeing some of that rotation with that storm. Um, we need to be watching that carefully. But here's what we want to do. This night kind of started off with damage that occurred over in Sangamon County, north of Springfield. The town of Sherman hit hard tonight. Our very own Chance Stickland is live there. Chance, what have you seen out there tonight? See flashing lights behind you. Uh, reports of a lot of damage in that area tonight. Kevin, we got to Sherman here about, oh, 20 minutes ago, and uh, actually the first encounter I had was with police. They've got it barricaded off, but like you mentioned, over my right shoulder and for everybody on TV, the left shoulder, you can see there's a down power line or what appears to be something like that off in the distance, and I'll step out of way a little bit, but you can see crews got to there. Uh, they're assessing it right now. I can't really tell you much more on that, but what I can tell you is I got a little bit of information from the PIO uh, for the Illinois Emergency Management Agency, and he can he did tell me at this time we have a report of a single house that has been damaged in Sherman. Now we don't know if there are any more reports of any more houses. I am going to work to get more information as the night goes on. Also, they are working closely with local and county public safety partners to assess any other damages to the area. And one more thing to note, they are also working to confirm possible injuries from a vehicle tossed while on I-55. Again, that remains unconfirmed. They are working to confirm more information about that. But as we learn more information, of course, you guys got us with the weather team back in the studio. I will try to get you as much information from here on the ground in Sherman. But for now, reporting live in Sherman, I'm Chance Thicklin, WCI3, your local news leader. Back to you guys. Thanks, uh, Chance, for the update there. Again, uh, we were showing some of the daylight pictures, and that's kind of the issue is, okay. you know, daylight will reveal even more with this. Uh, just a little update here. It does look like, based upon the, the latest radar signatures, that the rotating uh, part of our storm uh, here into southeastern portions of Iroquois County have seemed to have pushed just out. It's just heading out, so that's some good news. Um, leaving Wellington and, and Hoopston there behind. Still some strong storms there uh, near Rossville, and we've got a whole lot of areas that are still under severe thunderstorm warnings, and you're saying, okay, are we going to get something here? Well, there's Bismarck uh, to Potomac. You're still going to see some really strong storms. There's Ogden, and we're just going to the problem is we have to watch basically this entire line and little kinks in that line that could occur. And I'm just going to investigate a little further in here. So uh, crossing there on the east side of Urbana, heading towards St. Joe. I, we just got to watch these little guys and see if they try to tighten up a little bit. But Royal to St. Joe, Sydney, Philo, Homer, you guys have not seen a whole lot yet. That is about to change as, as more of these uh, storms are going to be uh, kind of coming through here. 
Um, Sorry about that. Uh, back to the uh, Storm Tracker Doppler here, real quick. And just look at this line. This whole area from Vermilion County all the way down to Shelby County, again to Fayette County there. And again, there's that other tornado warning that is down there near. Uh, the Effingham area, which we'll kind of go back down to and see see where seeing what's interesting is that storm is kind of out on its own. And I want to start watching uh, some of those storms up there into uh, Coles County there. These are not along that line. These are a little bit more discreet. And so that, you know, could could be a little bit more concerning. So we're watching these storms here. And what we'll do is we'll pan things back up to where we can see what is going on into portions of Effingham County. Just that sliver, Lucas, where that warning is in effect, but that storm is by itself. I want to look at these other guys here. We're just going to come back up to Mattoon and Charleston because some of you up there in Oakland that are watching us here just got to keep an eye on these since they're kind of out there by themselves. Um, maybe we'll check in with our Charleston camera here in a little bit, but from Charleston to Oakland, eventually Ashmore into Edgar County. Uh, we're going to start to see those storms move in. Uh, what we want to show to you now is actually going to be some video from Rantoul as the storms kind of came through. Here's a, a view of that, and you can see the lightning there. It was just kind of almost constant lightning that was occurring um, as the storms came through there in Rantoul. And uh, there uh, south of Ludlow, between Raintool and Ludlow, unfortunately, sounds like a, a very large accident that has occurred on I-57 that has it shut down. Um, that occurred about 40 minutes ago. Um, you can see there in the Raintool area. Now the storms are, are, are still moving through, and you can see we'll come back over. There's Tuscola and Atwood to Arthur. Um, not, you know, not a whole lot going on to Lono, just some kind of heavy rainfall. We want to look on the leading edge of all of this. That's where the best chance for any severe weather is. St. Joe, I I know you guys are going, wow, it is coming down in St. Joe right now. Um, they're up towards uh, Royal going to be coming in, but right on I-74, not a fun drive to be making because we've got so many of these storms that are still severe. Rossville, you're seeing that. So we want to watch along that leading edge. That's where that you know, potential is going to be for a storm to rotate and, and still produce maybe a tornado, if nothing else. Uh, hopefully transitioning into more of a wind damage threat. Um, that is actually probably going to be the case here over the next few hours. We're going to be getting out of, you know, the, the window of severe weather. This is going to race off into portions of um, Indiana in the next 90 minutes or so. And so we're going to have that clearing before too long. More video in. This is where it all kind of started earlier. Our first kind of, oh wow, that doesn't look good on radar. And then video like this came in. And you can see here, look at some of the homes damaged, some very uh, large, well-built homes there, as you can see, damaged as you pan around uh, some of the tops of the roofs there. And that one home there really just destroyed. And look at the damage all around. This was in Sherman northern portions of Sangamon County. Uh, they're just north of Springfield. That's what they had a few hours ago when a lot, all of this kind of kicked off. I believe that was almost uh, late into the five o'clock hour uh, when that was occurring. We've had some other reports of, of some brief tornadoes. Um, those reports are going to come in the damage reports are going to take some time to kind of filter through. So maybe we're not hearing about some other damage because it took us a while even to kind of get that video. People are out assessing things. It's also now dark. So a lot of people out, not out. Amarin urging, urging people to not go outside and the, near these power lines that are down, have to treat them as if those lines are still active. And so that is really important here. I, I want to take a look here at the radar because I just, yeah, I want to watch these guys here. Um, that continue to show some intensification on them, maybe maybe some Boeing. Sydney, okay, uh, and then as you get there on 130, north-south there, those are going to be some strong winds. Let's just kind of, let's just see if we're seeing anything in terms of the velocity, which shows us the winds in the storm there. And yeah, there's still some gusty winds. Well, not seeing really much in the way of, of, of a ton of rotation there, but we got to watch that. But Sydney to Homer, you guys are next to get hit by this really strong wind. A lot of lightning with all of these storms here tonight as well, as all of this races off to the east at nearly 60 miles per hour is what we've been seeing with our storms. 
There's one airport who had a 70, I believe 71 mile per hour wind gusts when this line came through. So Willard got hit uh, pretty hard there with those gusty winds and are still seeing some of that now on the leading edge of our front. We'll back this out even more. You can see these uh, severe thunderstorm warnings carry over into uh, Indiana. There is Northern Vermilion County now under that severe thunderstorm warning. They just issued a new one here for portions of Coles and Edgar County, uh, stretching into Douglas County. So essentially anywhere along these lines. Well, it looks like they just dropped. They just dropped the one there back towards uh, Sullivan and Hammond and Tuscola. So now we've got kind of this this one's kind of taken over, gotten quite a bit stronger from Charleston to Oakland, and then we're still watching far eastern portions of Champaign County and into Vermilion County, where we have severe thunderstorm warnings. So I'll zoom in, we'll, we'll come back here and do a little bit of a radar kind of tour along and show you where we have the severe thunderstorms. Uh, there is Royal uh, to Penfield, uh, Potomac seeing those strong storms that are coming through northern portions of Vermilion County. And uh, I don't want to leave you guys out there. I know we got a lot of, a lot of viewers over in Vermilion County, so that's just pan it over even more. As we come over to Rossville and Henning, uh, Alvin and Bismarck, you guys are going to see some of that, and then that gets over into Indiana. Um, updated radar scan there showing that heavy rain in Royal, some gusty winds. There's Ogden, St. Joe, you may have a little bit of hail showing up. Back down towards Sydney, strong storm there moving through, uh, but no longer under uh, the that uh, severe thunderstorm warning in that area. We actually have to pan a little bit more to the south and east and take you over towards uh, Edgar County. And there it is from Indianola to Hume and Newman, back down to, to Brockton and Oakland. The Hinesboro area, you're on the edge of that, but that leading edge right there is where the strong winds are. Bushton to Redmond, down to Kansas, you're on that edge of the severe thunderstorm morning and Ashmore as well. How about this view? Let's take you to the home view that really backs it out and shows you what we've got. When is this going to be done? And again, I don't want to uh, forget the storm that's down here south of Effingham, uh, but it is well south of Effingham right now. This is the back end. So here's here's the thing. Uh, Decatur, you can uh, you can go to bed tonight. Uh, you, you're good. Actually, the tornado watch is continuing to kind of drop off. Clinton and Bloomington and Springfield, you guys are all good. Taylorville, um, you're in the clear. That tornado watch is going to continue to get kind of cleared off. They're taking away a bunch of the counties here. But I, I, I want to say this. I still just want to keep a heads up here, Eastern Coles, Douglas, into Edgar County for this little guy here because it's kind of out on its own. And then we're still just kind of watching the leading edge there into uh, Eastern Champaign, Vermilion County there as that storm uh, rips off there to the east. But I'm really thinking that in the next 90 minutes uh, to maybe two hours, we are going to see a nice break from all of this. And we'll wrap this up. Jacob, you've got some more uh, damage uh, pictures there coming into us. And I think we're, again, just scratching the surface of maybe some damage that we've had tonight with other areas that uh, we've been dealing with uh, these storms for several hours now. Yeah, these are some photos I got from a friend over in Sangamon County. More pictures. Uh, apparently, we talked about Dawson at one point. Sherman's been hit really hard. It seems like from some of these pictures, uh, the dam is just outside of Dawson from that confirmed tornado that went through earlier. Uh, but still, that's someone's home there that got hit. Uh, there's a lot of damage in the Sherman area where Chance is. And... Um, so that's something that we're going to keep an eye on. I want to also say that when it comes to the, um, let's see here, there we go, Sky Cam, we're going to keep an eye on that. Whoop, maybe not. Let's get that to the right one there. Um, go ahead and take Max One Full real quick for me, if you can. And I'm going to show that. Um, we're going to keep an eye. It's a lot quieter here in Champaign County, which is something that is good news to hear. I want to pull up that tornado watch you were talking about, Kevin. Talk about you know who's in, who's out for that. There's some areas that are being cleared here. You can see towards I-55, and more counties will follow. Uh, the watch for some of us goes till 2 a.m., but we will clear that out earlier, and that's uh, good for us here um, for the next bit. So at this point here, Kevin, the one tornado warning we have is for southeastern Effingham County, and uh, that's a bit of an issue for us, which is what we're going to watch. And I'm going to pull here the uh, Apple TV up and uh, kind of give you a quick look at that. That tornado warning continues to lift to the north. It will stay 
southeast of Effingham, but there are more storms to the west of Effingham crossing I-55. Iroquois County, the tornado warning is no longer in effect. I, I, I don't want to say all clear quite yet. Give me a little time. There's also still some back building cells here from Kankakee South where there will be some wind as that front comes on through. And uh, so that's what we will watch. So with all of this, uh, Jess, you are in the studio now. You've been walking back and forth. Uh, we've got Brandon out in the field. Jess, tell us more about what you're seeing. We have some damage to show you from Sangamon County. We mentioned it earlier in Riverton. This is video of Parks Place Child Care Center. The roof caved in there from the storm tonight. Nobody was in the building at the time. Final pickups took place at around 430, about an hour before that storm hit Riverton. The owners say that Monday was their fifth anniversary at this child care center. Just to be clear again, no one was inside the building when the roof caved in. We do have a crew there. We'll work to get you some more video and pictures from that scene. As we learn more, Jacob. Sounds good. Uh, I'm going to pull up the router real quick and I'm going to put in, hopefully that shows up correctly. Uh, there we go. Apple TV is up for me. Um, I want to mention here the National Weather Service is talking about it and we're seeing it too. This is going to be for the storm that is in eastern Coles, southeastern Douglas, and Edgar County. Uh, they are noting that there are some signs of some mid-level rotation, so some rotation that's a little higher up that's strengthening together. That sometimes is one of the first signs of what uh, could be a strengthening mesocyclone. What that means is the strengthening rotating part of the storm. That's somewhere in the Oakland area. Moving quickly to the north and east, Chrisman, Newman, Brockton, Ridge Farm. We're going to watch all of those areas very closely here from this particular storm as it continues to move north and east. Not a tornado worn storm at this point. When I flip over velocity, there you can see just a little bit of greens and red action there. And if I uh, change the tilt of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look a little higher in it. We might see them pop out a little bit more, perhaps uh, signs of some sort of weak rotation in there. The environment that this storm sits in is a favorable environment for storms that we've got uh, like what we've got tonight. We've had a number of tornadoes out there uh, in the area. So just a heads up, we are watching very closely for Newman, Brockton and Chrisman. This storm uh, behind it there. Still going to watch this line also closely. Going to be some strong winds. We don't have anything severe in it for Shelby County or Moultrie County, but I imagine there's some small hail and some real blustery winds there. Fayette County, severe thunderstorm warning in effect. This storm down by Effingham. We get down here south of Effingham, and unfortunately, that's almost a gap in radar coverage. The radar beam is thousands of feet in the air, um, but there are still signs of some pretty decent rotation. You look between the clutter here. Um, that's just because the beam is so far away and, and so high. What I might do is actually switch it to the Evansville radar. That might give us a better vantage point. Uh, there you can see here, this is going to be moving towards Newton. It will stay well south of Effingham, um, maybe grazing the southeastern portion of the county there, south of Dederick. So we're going to watch that. There's Bible. Grove. There's Diederich. Here's Newton. So we're going to watch uh, that closely here. Who am I sending it to? Jess? To, I believe we have Chance standing by. Do we have Chance standing by with the sheriff? Okay, Chance, he is in Sherman following the damage there, and he has the Sangamon County Sheriff on standby. Chance? Just that is correct. We're again here in Sherman. I am uh, pleased to be joined by Jack Campbell, the Sangamon County Sheriff. Uh, a lot going on. Of course, it's still early on in everything. What can you tell me so far about what you guys know? Well, so far, luckily, there's been no injuries. We, we estimate we have about 30 to 40 residences damaged in Sherman and out around the area, just north and east of Sherman, some in Dawson, some right outside Riverton. So again, with all the structural damage we have, no injuries. So that's good so far. So I know as of now, we know about the one house that's got significant damage just over our shoulders. Any other houses that you guys can tell us right now? Well, again, it's all in the, in the very north edge of Sherman. Um, and, and there's a couple subdivisions that have been hit by this. Um, one of the issues we're dealing with right now is there's a gas leak that we cannot find. So we have Amron crews here trying to find that gas leak. We are going house to house to ensure uh, that nobody's trapped in there. And so far, so good. And I know these are tough situations, but what happens next in the coming days, maybe even weeks? Well, the first thing, again, we still have a dangerous situation here with the, the power lines down, trees down, residents damaged. So we need people to, again, to, in this area specifically, to stay away from here, let the crews work. And then tomorrow, once the, the sun comes up, we'll, we'll be able to go in and reassess everything and, and finish cleaning up and hopefully get people back near their homes. And the last thing I have for you before we send it back to the studio, for people who live in this area and are mm -hmm. familiar, 
what areas should people be driving around? What, people, what areas should people avoid? The, the whole north side of Sherman. So Business 55, Suddeth Road, Wolf Creek Road. There's power lines down across all those. And again, we're asking residents just to stay in your house. Um, they can call into to our uh, command post if they need anything. They can call our dispatch center at 753-6666 if they have any questions. But again, just stay away from the north side of Sherman. Cool. Yeah. Jack, thank you for your time. You're welcome. And as we, again, learn more information from Sherman, we're reporting it on the air, we're reporting it online, and I will get you more information, and of course, they'll probably send it back out to me here pretty soon. But for now, again, reporting live in Sherman, Chance Thicklin, WCI3, your local news leader. Back to you guys. All right, Chance, thank you so much. Just to recap, 30 to 40 houses damaged in Sherman. They're asking people to avoid the north part of town. There's a gas leak there, but they're still trying to find it, to identify it. And of course, we've seen power lines down in that area. We do have video of the damage in Sherman. Are we able to pull that up, Tristan, to show people Okay, so we don't have that video immediately available right now of the houses damaged in Sherman, but we'll show that to you again in just a little bit. But for now, we're going to take it over to Jacob. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jess. For that, I tell you what, what a miracle that is that there's no injuries to report uh, in Sangamon County. We haven't heard anything from Champaign County yet with the do storm to the north, but certainly uh, our attention is, uh, you know, still on these storms moving on through. Um, I want to mention really fast, if we can pull the storm tracker up, I'd like to bring them full screen. I know that they are north of Rantoul now in that general area. Do Are, are they able to talk right now by chance? Do we know? No, we don't have any audio from them. That's fine. But we look at that here. They're, they're moving through those rural areas. Uh, we know there is damage to the FS site east of Dewey on 136. I had anhydrous ammonia has caused the area to be shut down. And then we're seeing that 57, I've seen some reports where uh, folks aren't able to drive on that either. So that certainly is going to be another thing that we have to watch very closely here as we move on through. All right, uh, I want to update. We do have a new tornado warning here, and this is going to be for far southern parts of our area. Let's go ahead and bring me back on screen screen here. This is way down to the south. Uh, it's going to be for parts of Clay and Richland counties and Jasper and Effingham County. You'll see that box pop on and that'll be heading towards Newton and uh, Jasper County. Again, this area here we share with the Terre Haute market. I know we have folks that watch us in Robinson and Newton and uh, even Effingham, of course, big town there. Uh, so that's going to be a new tornado warning popping up. Kevin, you are back on the wall now uh, and yeah. We are not done yet with tonight, are we? We're not done yet. I, I just did get that, that confirmation of, of storm damage report, and I think it has popped in, but that bus blown over there on I-57, um, one mile southwest of Ludlow, had 32 passengers on it, and there were two minor injuries that the bus was blown over on I-57, southwest of Ludlow, 32 passengers and two, two, injuries. two injuries. So wow. um, hopefully those, and, and they say minor, according to the storm report here. So that is some good news. Um, also, um, let's see here, that a person driving over there near, what is that, uh, Rankin, um, that tornado from earlier as well. So. Confirmation on that bus, we, which is why things were uh, closed down there on I-57. And, uh, you know, but hopefully some good news there that those uh, injuries were minor. That could be, uh, could have been a lot worse, obviously. Don't know if those were from actual, like, straight line damaging winds or if that was actually a tornado. Doesn't really matter at this point. Um, it did occur, and uh, that is the confirmation there. So now, still an intense line of storms, and, and as you mentioned, there our extreme southeastern portions of our viewing area are seeing the uh, uh, tornado warnings that are still in effect. So we'll just kind of take it way down here and zoom in, and there it is, just kind of clipping Effingham County. Uh, there's Newton, this kind of technically just outside of our viewing area here, but notice back to the west in Effingham, I bet our Effingham camera here before too long is going to see probably a, a big shelf cloud and uh, heavy rainfall. So that is gonna start coming into Effingham with that line back there. 
This one is concerning because it is this other cell because it's out ahead of that line. It's by itself, it's more discreet, able to tap into some of the uh, wind fields and the instability that is still left out there, um, again, kind of by itself, while the lines like this uh, tend to kind of have to share all of that, so to speak. So uh, here's what we'll do here. We'll, we'll just come back over and probably have Jacob pull up the uh, Effingham camera in a little bit, and then we can watch that line come through. Also, probably the uh, the Mattoon camera is going to see that same kind of shelf cloud begin to move through before uh, too long. Uh, be curious about, you know, how much lightning we're still seeing. But Humboldt there, um, Tuscola, you're kind of on the back edge of that now. Uh, but Humboldt there into Coles County, a lot of Coles County still see some of these storms. Big break there into southern Champaign County, and I got to tell you, um, it's not going to be too long before we say you're you know, you're good here in Champaign. I really think for the most part uh, we're going to be done with this in Champaign County. There's still a couple little cells we'll just kind of keep watching, but the intense line is out here into Vermilion County, Danville. So we're going to have a bunch of our cameras that we're going to be able to see uh, this line coming in in the next kind of 15 tracker. to 20 minutes. Uh, Danville, Kevin Storm Tracker, Bismarck, and then down to uh, Georgetown, um, where we've got the these thunderstorms still kind of coming through. Iroquois County, you, you know, starting to see things calming down there. That's some good news. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and pull up the storm tracker really okay, quick. They tracker. are now on I-57. Uh, the road is closed at this time. Just getting to the scene now north of Rantoul. I wanted to bring that to your attention as they are coming up there. Um, Adam just had a report from Seth as well where Rantoul police are asking that everyone stay away from the area. Um, I've heard from folks saying that they've called for extra help from the Paxton area down there. It is a mess there. Here's the report. Um, Rantoul police said to stay away from 57 north of Rantoul. There are down power lines in the area. Um, you have that report of the two minor injuries. We just saw them drive by there. I wanted to make sure we, we saw that before they got too far away, Kevin. Yep, uh, so that is why that backup is there. And maybe if, if they if they want to turn back around, tell them in the storm track, maybe, to, 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 I don't know. It looks like they are now. I think okay. they're kind of at a little bridge or whatnot that they're going yeah, to. If they want There's to, a sign down right in front I, of them. Yeah, I do see that, that sign. That's, and power lines right there. Oh, down there um so oh yes uh so okay, that looks like it's on the side there i think yes. they're all right but so that's a side that's a side road that that they're on there along i-57 um over one of the the bridges there um I, I think that's just north of rantoul correct i believe that's north of rantoul yeah they're north by uh, ludlow by about two three miles or so um so they might get out and get us a report here and what they're seeing uh, well, well let's see here that let's hear their uh, 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 let's see is this guy let's see who is this guy and we have no audio. No audio. Okay. Well, uh, we'll see what uh, what that gentleman's uh, uh, telling them there. Um, again, this is just on a side road there, um, probably a county road there, just off of I-57. Uh, looks like they are going to uh, continue um, uh, across here, um, or maybe maybe they're going to have to turn around there. Um, we'll check. You let us know what you guys hear from them on on what they're seeing. Uh, but I just want to show you here again. Roads are backed up there. If you've got you know family friends that you were you were expecting to be home, they're they're potentially stuck there in the traffic there along I-57 uh, because of that to crash and probably where the tornado crossed. We were talking earlier tonight uh, that the tornado was going to cross there on I-57, and uh, sure enough, I, I definitely think that it did, um, and that's why they're they're dealing with some of that damage there north of Ludlow between Ludlow. And, or say north of Rantoul uh, between Ludlow and Rantoul. Um, that's Rossville, Bismarck. You guys are still dealing with these uh, strong storms kind of coming through. There's Snyder, Vermilion County, that whole area Double there. Entry. I see that uh, um, we're, we're efforting to, to get uh, another shot up. There are traffic is backed up and maybe you guys can pull up the uh, the traffic map map from Google um, that will show like just the red how much red is on the i-57 if you, if you put in there and we can maybe pull that up on the uh, uh, on the computer back there but we're seeing there lots of semis I'm just seeing on the corner of my eye um, the shot that they're they're trying to get up there on i-57 and let me just kind of I'm gonna bring this back over to uh, where this was and uh, try to get an idea of, of, the, of the exact location that our crew is out there in the storm tracker. So that's going to be here. So there's Rantoul. So on I-57, 
and we're, we're told just maybe like a mile or so, maybe north there uh, of Rantoul. So somewhere between Rantoul and Ludlow, this is a huge traffic backup right here uh, because a tornado came across. It did hit a bus. Bus was blown over. Uh, other power lines down, probably power lines down or uh, maybe even a, across the interstate. We know there when the storm tracker was just kind of getting out there, it looked like that uh, they were coming across some signs that were down uh, from an apparent tornado that did cross there earlier tonight. So that is why the traffic is backed up. Uh, we're still watching things carefully with our, our team that is out there tonight. And let us know if, if you get those guys back up. So, all right, let's show that traffic map here again. So here's what we're talking about, and we can see it. Ah, there you go. You can really see it there. Um, so love the, you can, So basically what you want to do is you look for where those dark reds kind of intersect coming from both directions. And so that's going to be, looks like, what is that, uh, county, or what is that, eight? That's right there. So north, we talked about Brook Hill Golf Course. Um, so, so we were probably driving over that uh, that that bridge that's right there, uh, north and west of of Brook Hill uh, Golf Course. And so that's the area south of Ludlow and north of Rantoul where traffic is backed up, where there was a tornado. I'm just going to tell you right now, according to what I saw on radar, there was a tornado that crossed there on I-57, and damage did occur um, probably south of the cemetery there, and right there were those two dark reds in each direction come together. That's where that is. Uh, slowed down to a standstill, uh, stops traffic, and nobody moving. But notice how even the orange there, that orange color stretches all the way past Ludlow and even all the way past rain tool as well um, as traffic comes along so don't be surprised looks like even 45 people probably exiting off uh, trying to avoid that 45 is going to start to get a little bit busier there as well our very own Jessica Coons has been keeping track of things here tonight, fielding reports. Uh, Jessica, you've got some more. Kevin, I've definitely seen a lot of power go out in the last, oh, 45 minutes or so. Um, power was on for a lot of people in central Illinois, and that changed quickly. 1,300 people out uh, east of Decatur. Decatur area it looks like, Champaign area, and of course west of Springfield, a lot of power outages there as well. We do have a few updates from officials. The Thomasboro Fire Chief tells us a few tree limbs down, some normal street flooding. Looks like everyone there has power in Thomasboro. It looks like we do have that Ameren power outage map, if you could pull that up. We did speak with Ameren yesterday, and they said that they will work to get power back up as quickly as possible. Of course, they're working Working in these elements as well, and they're reminding people if you see a line yeah. down, don't get anywhere near it. You should treat it like it is live, but they will work to get that power up as soon as possible. And another update from the Muhammad Village administrator there no damage of note. Some small hail there. The worst part heavy rain with standing water in. Muhammad. So if your power is out, um, if you know of power out, that should be up as soon as crews can get to your area. Kevin? All right. Uh, yeah, you see a little orange dot there uh, kind of west of Fisher. So that is kind of a general area there where you've got a lot of power out. And so there could be some areas that maybe, you know, didn't lose power because the storm at their location, but because they're having to shut power off to fix other power lines to eventually get it restored for everybody. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. Again, this is the slowed down part on I-57 where our crew has been, uh, where there was damage from a tornado that came through earlier. Effingham, every uh, metrics three, the take it full, give me three full. That's the wind coming into Effingham right now. We've seen okay. multiple power flashes. There you okay, go. Okay, power. Oh, wow. You see the power flashes there. Look at the power flashes. Now, this is straight line wind, not tornado, but yep, these Adam caught a view of that. Wow. Pull that uh, behind me here so I can point out kind of what you're looking at. So if we can pull the, the metrics three behind me, you're going to see flashes here that are occurring from most likely straight line winds, possibly 80 mile per hour winds that are occurring um, out there. Um, there it is. So, so watch here. You're going to see a lot of these lights are going out now. So that was, see, see that right there? Power flash. Okay. That are the strong winds hitting power lines, transformers that are blowing as a result. And you're not going to, this is going to become dark here. There it is again. 
power flashes that are showing up here. Uh, I want to make sure that, that this is... Uh, this is just from from straight line winds because I mean those are a lot of power flashes there um, more lightning there but those power flashes this is an Effingham our Effingham camera you're gonna see a glow sometimes orange color sometimes it's green and there it is and you're gonna see a lot of these lights probably uh, continuing to go out as that storm comes in and uh, wow look at that happening live right now another power flash there uh, power is going out in Effingham extremely strong winds that are happening right now you can see the heavy rainfall and so I'm just kind of glancing uh, glancing over here because I just want to double check that these are from straight line where those have to be okay so, so, so. storm from Effingham to Watson to Englewood continues to move through right in the thick of that rain Kevin I do have it up in radar real quick if we want to either double box max one or two or keep that I'd like to keep that camera up while we can um, that is the line bringing the straight line winds pretty incredible to see those power flashes live on TV here. So uh, that's moving off to the east. Real quick, Kevin, while we're talking about Effingham, I also want to mention this storm down by Newton is heading straight for Oblong and Robinson. Now that's, uh, we've got some friends down there. It's very far out, but I'm very concerned, and the National Weather Service is as well, uh, for this storm particularly Oblong and Robinson, as there will be a new tornado warning coming for Crawford County soon with that. So just want to mention, uh, that's the Effingham County image there. We saw those power flashes on the right side, and the still having severe storms come on through, causing power outages, causing issues, lots of lightning, lots of wind. Uh, that line continues really from Charleston. Um, Adam, if you can change on char on the weather metrics three for me, Adam, go ahead and pull up the Charleston and Mattoon camera really fast, um, and then we'll kind of rotate back through just to see. Looks like there's some first responders down there that just driving by in the Effingham camera. Uh, Charleston and Mattoon probably getting some of the action as well. And so you'll see that on the right side as this line continues to push on through. Uh, and then let's go ahead and go to the Matt. There's you can see the lightning north. Let's go to the Mattoon camera really fast and pull that up. And uh, the rain coming in. The rain coming in and uh, into town there. So certainly still having problems with this. Tornado-wise, concern for Robinson. Wind-wise, from Danville to Tuscola, Mattoon, Charleston, Effingham, over east to the Indiana State Line. We're, we're done in Champaign County here at this point with the severe storm threat. Everywhere behind, though, Springfield, Decatur are going to have gusty winds with us. I just want to mention that here as we look through. Go ahead and pull that Effingham camera back. And then, Jess, I'm going to toss it to you because I know we have Brandon out in Ludlow uh, on that. So, Jess, kind of give us a rundown of the damage, and then we'll hear from Brandon as well. Sure, yeah, of course, we've been following the damage from west to east here, starting in Sangamon County in Sherman. We have a crew there. We'll hear from them in just a little bit. We had a crew in Riverton as well. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, we want to go to WCI3's Brandon Murano, who's standing by at that accident on 57. Brandon, what can you tell us? So, Jess, this is just north of uh, I-57, just north of Rantoul. I just got off the phone with Rantoul Police Department, and they told me that this accident is not going to be cleared up anytime soon. I'm going to step out of the picture just so you can see what we're dealing with here. Traffic backed up just about as far as I can see, really farther than I can see. There's a tractor trailer, semi-truck flipped over along with a tour bus. Now, I haven't been down on the scene to get with first responders about any injuries or anything like that just yet, but I'll go down there here in a second and check in with them. But I have seen ambulances in the last 15 minutes or so that we've been here come and go from the scene. But traffic on Interstate 57 southbound backed up, Interstate 57 northbound backed up. So if you can stay away from this area in between Rantoul and Ludlow, you're going to want to stay away from that area. They're still trying to clear this scene. There's in fact, I see another semi-truck flipped over here. So two semis overturned along with that tour bus that you can see flashing right in the middle of these fire trucks and ambulances. So we're going to work on getting more information from this accident. But if you're anywhere near this area of 57, you're going to want to stay away from it northbound and southbound. But for right now, I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Brandon, thanks so much. We're going to work on getting another live report from Sherman here soon as well. I'll send it back over to Jacob. Sure. Yeah, that works. Um, just what you, We just talked about Robinson. 
Um, you can see here, they actually now are saying there is a large, extremely dangerous tornado now on the ground southeast of Newton. And this supercell is going to bring a, some hurt to Crawford County, unfortunately. It's out there in an unstable environment. If you know anyone in Robinson, Crawford County, a beautiful town down there, Robinson. This storm moving in that direction. We're very concerned for Crawford County, uh, all of Crawford County. Really, a new tornado warning will be coming shortly there. They are extending the severe thunderstorm warning out as well. Uh, that pretty much is uh, you know for that line moving through from Effingham city of Effingham proper all clear if you're just east and south you're still in the storms all clear Shelby County all clear Moultrie County Toledo green up the storm is knocking on your doorstep Matt Toon, give us a little time in fact I'll say this west of I-57 in Coles County all clear east still watching things including the city of Charleston and uh, then let's go ahead and if we can double box while we're at it here I'd like to double or uh, triple box even well Kevin do, do you want to take it now here well um, yeah we're gonna get ready to do a little a recap here off the top okay. of the hour here okay um, so yeah okay so uh, let me just finish here I'll toss to you then um, Oakland ahead of there if you're in Champaign County, we are good. Anywhere west of 57 in Douglas County, you're good. And almost soon, we'll be able to get Vermilion County and all clear from this as this line starts to push on out. Uh, and so just making sure you see Kevin, um, they've got some good video coming in. We, we can see that bus, so I'll, I'll let, let you know and handle that, Kevin, if you want to bring that yeah. bus shot full. So, yeah, we're gonna, Kevin, I'm going to send it to you. Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to do a, kind of a little recap here once again. You were just kind of showing the radar there um, and all the storms that we're still tracking. That is a very nasty looking storm that is down there um, so uh, into uh, Jasper Crawford County. Uh, but uh, here's the thing. We are coming up here uh, in just a few seconds, the top of the hour. It is now 9 p.m. And we have been on the air here uh, for about uh, four hours now uh, with severe thunderstorm and tornado coverage. Uh, still tracking a huge long line of severe thunderstorms with what is known as a tornado possible tag. Any of these storms could still spin up and produce a tornado. Um, and then the one down here to Crawford and Jasper County. That's why we're still on the air right now. That's why we're not in the news broadcast. That's why uh, we have interrupted tornado or interrupted your normal coverage um, of, of television shows to bring you this coverage here. Um, we've got crews out there um, across uh, parts of central Illinois where we've had multiple tornadoes that have occurred tonight. And I know we're going to hopefully go to some of those uh, shots and, and share with you some of those pictures and whatnot um, that we've had throughout the course of this evening. Um, a lot of things started back to the west into Sangamon County, uh, into the Sherman area, uh, when, when things really started to get going. Now, as Jacob was kind of mentioning, giving the all clear to a lot of those spots, uh, that is the case for, I would say, you know, 75% of us. But the eastern third areas along I-57 into the east are still under the gun. One area that we've had uh, some big time damages along I-57 there, and we've got a shot up. Um, we saw from Brandon's report, if you're with us just a few minutes ago, uh, of multiple uh, multiple vehicles that were turned over there. And if we can take his shot, we'll just go ahead and, and, and you can see it there. Um, they're, they're efforting getting some of that video. It looks like some heavy rain is coming down on them right now with another little cell that has popped up. But you can see um, that there's a semi there that is just kind of hanging there off the edge of the interstate. There's a tour bus that's right there. You can see the back window. They probably had to break out that back window to get out is what I'm guessing, um, or unless uh, there was some kind of debris that, that busted that. But traffic is at a standstill there. You can see the first responders on scene, heavy rain that is coming down with another cell that they're just having to deal with, just can't catch a break. Um, again, that is not severe right now, but you can see just just none of those cars are moving on I-57. Lots of semis there, and I'm just kind of looking at the radar here because I just want to get an idea of kind of what they're still dealing with. Uh, they've got that heavy rain that's coming through, and they're going to see that actually clear in the next probably uh, 10 minutes or so. But if they can kind of pay, I know there's three, there's two semis, and there is a, a uh, tour bus there that I mentioned uh, that is moving through that that were flipped over. You can see the other one there um, off in the dark there um, in the distance there. So those are three and look at all the other semis there. If you drove I-57, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that is 
there's a lot of semi traffic there in I-57, especially on a Friday night, and all of those trucks aren't going anywhere. And neither is anybody um, that were in their cars tonight. You can see there that is the vehicle, one of the semis that were turned over. Uh, two of them that we can see and also the tour bus there as well. So we're going to continue to track this for you. Uh, our crews are spread across central Illinois from sp the Springfield area all the way over to Ludlow and Rantoul where we just saw that. We're watching this. I want to just keep mentioning that Crosper uh, uh, in, uh, Crosper, Crawford and Jasper County uh, storm there. That is a nasty, nasty, nasty looking storm there. Um, I, I know that's kind of just outside of our viewing area and Terre Haute does serve them, but I just wanted to make mention that thing is producing a tornado south of Oblong. Um, that, that is an area I used to cover down there when I worked in Terre Haute, but near Oblong there over to Robinson, uh, that is uh, concerning there what we're seeing on radar. The rest of us, Really strong winds that we're still dealing with along this line from east of Effingham up through the Charleston, Mattoon area um, and through the Danville area. That, that line has already moved through. So now it's really kind of Edgar County, portions of Douglas, Coles, Cumberland, Effingham, uh, Jasper and Crawford counties where we're still dealing with uh, these thunderstorms tonight. So we've had uh, other tornadoes and damage from the western part of our viewing area. I believe we've got uh, Jessica with us with a little bit more on what we have been dealing with. Yeah, Kevin, we're still getting more information from across the area. Bellflowers Mayor just let us know no damage in the village there, just heavy rains. They lost power about an hour ago. We want to give you some more coverage from Sherman. Of course, that's where we saw the first tornado tonight, and we have WCI3's Chance Stickland standing by with an update there. Chance, when we talked last, the sheriff told you there was a gas leak there. They were trying to identify it. What else have you learned? So as of now, at about the 9.04 time update, I just talked to police and the road will remain closed where we are. That is why we actually can't get to the area, which is actually just over my right shoulder or for you guys on TV, the left shoulder. There's a tree line way off in the distance and that is where the house or houses were destroyed. And we have video that we are showing you guys now uh, from earlier that was sent in to us uh, showing that damage and of course uh, EMA is working with local agencies and, and just anybody in the area trying to get more updated information. Uh, I can not confirm still that that vehicle on 55, uh, you know, there's in injuries with that. I was told that sometimes uh, those accidents, they do not self-report. So again, that is not confirmed, but I did hear that from the PIO with the emergency management for the state. Um, again, the electric company was fixing a down power line behind me, but uh, as I look behind me now, it's pitch black, so uh, they are not in the area anymore. I wanted to give that update, um, but as of now, that's all that we have new information right now. I will continue to work with uh, our team back in the studio here and out in the field, of course, uh, to get any updated information from Sherman. But like Jess mentioned, this was the, one of the first confirmed tornadoes uh, for our coverage tonight. But again, reporting live in Sherman, I'm Chance Sicklin, WCIA3, your local news leader. Jess, back to you. All right, Chance, thanks so much. Just another recap from that area. Shortly after that damage in Sherman, we heard of damage in Riverton as well. We have a picture or video we're going to try to get up here in just a second of Parks Place Child Care Center. There it is in Riverton. It's hard to tell in this photo. We do have some video. We'll try and get you later tonight. Oh, we do have some video. Let's see if we can roll that. A little dark there. Hard to tell, but the roof of that building caved in from the storm. Thankfully, nobody was inside at the time. Final pickups at that child care center took place around 430. And then about an hour later, the storm started to hit Riverton. The owners say Monday was their fifth anniversary. So a lot of cleanup going on there at Parks Place Child Care Center in Riverton. We're going to work on getting more updates from all of this damage around the area. Of course, as soon as that sun starts to peak out tomorrow morning, we'll start to see really the effects of what happened here tonight in central Illinois. For now, we're going to send it over to Jacob. Yeah, so um, I want to spend a little time here and talk about another serious situation I think is unfolding. This is going to be for Crawford County. Now, it's very far southeast of our viewing area, but I know we have folks down in Oblong and in Robinson. 
Robinson. And this particular storm here is a large, reported as a large, extremely dangerous tornado now in Crawford County, moving very near Robinson, uh, somewhere south of Oblong by not much. If you know anyone, Robinson, Honey Creek, Hudsonville, Oblong, you got a chance to text them. Go ahead and do that. Give them a heads up to watch. We are streaming on Facebook and we'll continue to watch that warning closely. Once it gets across the river into Indiana, then that's hopefully with the end of the, the threat for tornadoes tonight. Uh, there's not a lot of real estate left here for the severe weather threat, which is good news. We, we like to hear that. Uh, the National Weather Service here just kind of opening up my um, chat really quick and checking things out. The National Weather Service um, still, though, warning the line for winds. In fact, there was just a... Um, 58 mile an hour wind, let's see, 58 knots. That's about 65 mile an hour wind gust in the Mattoon Charleston area. Um, straight line wind damage now occurring northeast of Effingham. They're getting reports of that. And they continue to say a, for that tornado warning in Crawford County, a large and extremely dangerous tornado. 67 mile per hour wind gust in Coles County, I should say. I think the highest I've seen is, is a 73 in Champaign County. Uh, these have been some windy storms here as expected. So uh, we'll continue to watch that. They just extended that tornado warning into um, Indiana as well for that Robinson storm. Now, um, Kevin or Jess, who, who do I need to send it to here now? I'm going to send it to Kevin. Kevin, I'm going to send it to you. Go ahead and talk more of what we are looking at. I know Jess had something as well to share. So, Kevin, you're kind of watching that well, storm as well. Yeah, uh, keeping an eye on that storm down there. Um, some really high indications uh, of extremely strong rotation with that. Uh, but uh, listen, uh, this line here is still really intense. The line that came through Effingham, we were showing you power flashes live on the air earlier, and uh, boy, that that was some really in, those were some really intense winds that came through down there. I just want to kind of come back through and once again just kind of look at what we've got right now on radar. Uh, with the storm. We're going down to that uh, uh, Cra uh, <laughs> Crawford and Jasper County storm here in a second. But Chrisman, you guys are getting this. But Redmond right now, you're pr probably going to see those winds really begin to pick up here. We'll just kind of do a little panning tour along. There's Ashmore. Westfield, you haven't been hit yet, but it's literally on top of you. Uh, Oakland to Ashmore and Westfield. And then we stretch back here just west of Casey Clark County. You're going to start to get in on this green up in Cumberland County. And we're going to see that all the way down here now getting out of Effingham County in Diedrich. And then here is the large storm. Look at the donut hole that's almost kind of opening up here, which is not a good sign. Robinson, and Jacob was talking about that. Man, you need to be taking shelter down there. Absolutely. This thing is confirmed. Um, let's, I'm going to see. I, I, I'm not sure if this is going to pick up on the uh, Evansville radar or not, but even if it's not, uh, this is really strong. I think that might actually be the Evansville radar. Uh, this is extremely strong rotation that is uh, showing up here, and this is going to come right into the Robinson area. I've been checking uh, for the debris signatures there, and on the Evansville radar there? Yeah. Evansville, south of Stoy, southeast of Oblong. Um, man, Robinson is is in, in some trouble here. Oh, wow, I, Kevin. I would, I would venture to say... Hey, it's a debris ball at this point, Kevin. Do you want me to put yeah. it on GR for you? Yeah, uh, throw GR there. I would venture to say this is the strongest... This absolutely is the strongest rotation we have seen on radar uh, tonight. That Look at that. That is the debris signature... This thing is coming right into Robinson. That's your debris ball. Wow. That's a debris ball right there. That's debris, okay, that the reflectivity is picking up, okay, and that's Robinson. And this is coming right in there. Again, this is on our extreme southern portion of our area, but we do have uh, uh, some people that do watch us down there. The Terror Hope Market does kind of cover this, but um, it is just kind of on the edge for us. But this is such an extremely large, dangerous tornado. We want to mention it. That thing's going to... That, uh, unfortunately, you can see in some more rural portions down there of Crawford County. But that, if that goes through Robinson oh, man, Kevin. at that strength, that's going to be a, a, a bad Kevin, deal. There's a, there's a big oil refinery there's plant a huge, down there, too. Huge oil refinery yeah. plant that's down there. It's one of the largest, um, uh, you know, uh, reason people have jobs down there and, and whatnot. Um, that would not be good. 
that comes through down there. We need to monitor that, and we're going to know in the next 10 minutes or so. Debris signature is here. Um, you're going to see probably that tornado is probably right about here uh, by now. And if this stays as strong as it is, that could make a direct impact into Robinson and Crawford County. If this grows, if you see this purple little debris ball grow when it gets here, we, we've got a bad situation on our hands down here in Robinson. Um, so there it is on radar, already got got debris. And this is this is through some more rural areas of Crawford County. You know, there are some houses and whatnot, but this is is, is the biggest town um, in Crawford County. And so that is going to be a big deal there. And if that grows even more and spreads out. Um, kind of looking up at it, Kevin, that looks like perhaps there might be debris 12 to 15,000 feet up. Okay, so you, you get to that, you're talking an EF3 tornado possibly. Um, okay, there, it's okay, so maybe just south of town, barely? Too, too close to call. <laughs> Wait, yeah, because that could be displaced off um, based upon... And if uh, it is south of town, then that's going right yeah. for the refinery down there. Uh, that is not good. Can we... Can, um, I know you can you can see that refinery. Can you pull up um, or, or go and take the radar off? And then, yeah, yeah. So look at that right there. You see all of this right here? Oh, man, this would be really bad. Oh, my goodness. If that comes right there over the refinery, um, that's that's... That's not good, folks. Um, wow. We're going to be watching this carefully. This is really concerning to me down in Robinson. Again, for those of you, um, you may be going, Robinson, where is that? It's Crawford County. Um, it is uh, uh, down there. Um, yeah, let me zoom out of Terre Haute. Yeah, so you can you zoom out and kind of see uh, where we're at here. So that Terre Haute is here. Okay, Robinson is all the way down. It's, it's so Marshall uh, and Casey up here. It, it's it's the county just south of that. Okay, Kevin, I th I th yeah. believe I believe that they just pulled the catastrophic tornado okay. emergency for Robinson. Tornado, tornado emergency. emergency for tornado Robinson. Tornado emergency. This is. This is as bad as it gets. This is as bad as it gets for a tornado, a tor tornado emergency. There's been a handful of times there's ever been issued a tornado emergency. I'm guaranteeing they're issuing this because this is coming through over the refinery in Robinson. I'd be curious, um, get the, into the chat there um, and, and see what they're saying um, about that because this could be, this might turn out to be the biggest story of, of the day if a large tornado goes over Robinson on the southeast side there of town, over that oil refinery down there, that would be really bad, okay? Yeah, real quick, Kevin, can I talk quickly yeah. about the tornado emergency, what that means? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Um, boy, I, I made this graphic and I hope I never had to share it here. A strong to violent tornado with an emergency situation now for Crawford County, Robinson, Palestine, Trimble. Uh, if you know anyone down there, send them an alert here. This will be heading towards the intersection of Route 1 and uh, State Route 33. That's in the east of Robinson. It's moving through the south side of Robinson now. A large flying debris, wind damage in areas nearby from that. Uh, we're seeing debris lofted several miles. This here is the most dangerous type of tornado with the tornado emergency in Robinson and um, you know this this tornado is at a, a different tier than the tornado that we've had uh, today in Sherman and in Ludlow and those have been terrible tornadoes uh, but this supercell storm now uh, the next scan coming it moved in over it moved directly over it it did didn't it yeah it moved directly over that news I've got my new scan yeah go ahead and take uh, Kevin now on that um, and okay um, if you could, are you able to pull up uh, the max? Two? Yeah, just a uh, back button once. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Back button once here. Oh, um, that's max one. You're on max one still. Click the max two button. Yeah, I've got max two there pulled up. It's not. Uh, there it is. Okay, there we go. Um, and then, and if you can, uh, click up on that uh, toolbar there for me to, sure thing. to launch that. Um, that right there, that new scan, it went directly over uh, the ref refinery down there. The debris signature from that, this is a bad situation down here. You can see already how it's already passed, uh, but there it is. And I'm going to switch over to that uh, debris signature. Once That's at again. 1 and 33 there, yeah. Uh, yes, at 1 and 33, it's exactly right. Um, and I think that must still be pulling off of the, uh, the other radar there. So I think maybe we will probably have to just keep Let, it on. You want me to go in and manually? Keep it on the, well, if you, yeah, manually. 
show that this is a tornado emergency. Jacob was just showing you how rare that is, but that just came through uh, down there in Robinson at one in 33. There's still a gas on the ground. I've been at before one time. And yeah. The huge uh, debris signature showing up there. That's eventually going to be going towards uh, the Palestine area. Um, man, bad news down there. Uh, our crews um, should uh, call down there here in a little hey, bit. Hey, real quick, Kevin, we got a new tornado warning for Edgar County in our area um, to yeah. the north. New tornado warning for Edgar County. Um, this is going to be for east of Kansas, uh, going to include the city of Paris. It'll stay south of Christmas. Just wanted to bring that to your attention and give you a chance to zoom out on that. Uh, that tornado warning, a possible tornado in rural areas of Edgar County between Paris and Kansas moving off to the north and east at 60 miles per hour. Uh, new tornado warning, Edgar County. We got to get this line out of here before hey. anything else happens, Kevin. Uh, you got that up now. Go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so it's right there, a little rotation that is going to be south and west of Paris. If you're in Paris now, you got to take shelter, okay? We're, we're doing this once again. Uh, the rotation is, 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 is broadly defined right now, but we'll just kind of come in even more to show you this um, as the radar kind of updates here. But it's going to be there east of Kansas. 16 that comes right up and into the gut of, of Paris there. Um, that's where this is. And so this is the newest tornado warning. If you are in Edgar County, if you are in Paris, let me get out of the way so you can kind of see Paris uh, there and along um, oh, the 150 there, uh, Route 1 there as well. This is uh, concerning there, Highway 133. Oh, man, I tell you, another rotating thunderstorm that uh, we are dealing with here tonight. Sorry about that, hit the wrong button there. Um, back over to the radar here, and you can see what we've got. We're so close to being done. We're so close. Look at this here. We just got to get this pushed into Indiana. We're not done yet. Clark, uh, that, look at that storm that's down there um, at, moving out of Robinson. It's already moving over there into Indiana, but uh, still a high concern here. Coming into Paris, uh, this thing is not done just yet. Still seeing some signs of rotation. East of Redmond, okay, it's not uh, quite there just yet to Paris, but again, we this whole night we've had to kind of take some of the radar views with a grain of salt, knowing that there's probably um, it being a little bit offset, but there's something right there on 16. I got to tell you, it's, it's coming into Paris. If you're in Paris right now, um, you've got a few minutes. Take shelter, lowest level of your home. Basement's best. If not, uh, closet, okay, stairs. Interior room is the kind of the biggest thing. Uh, but we're seeing that rotating part of the thunderstorm once again spin up along this long squall line of thunderstorms. And this is going to go right into Paris, it looks like. Hopefully, it can weaken, but we have to treat this as if it's not and is potentially strengthening uh, here. Uh, so this storm racing off here to the east and going to be into Paris, because I think some of the latest movements on these were like 60 to 70 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> some of the, the movements. So it's not going to take long, and suddenly, boom, that thing's going to be right on top of you over in Paris. As we'll uh, click things back over to the radar view, and there it is coming across. And that's now that leading edge. Now you're going to get some strong winds with that. Looks like maybe even a little bit of hail in that purple color that is showing up. And then that's going to roll right across and probably be actually out of the state of Illinois or out of Edgar County, I'm guessing, in the next 20 minutes. That's how fast this is moving. In 20 minutes, this thing may make it uh, to the state line. So fast-moving storm, but may have some embedded circulations associated with it. But we need the back edge to get through. Just some general light or to moderate rain, Vermilion County, Champaign. Here's the thing. You can, I can basically tell you that, and I'm going to pull up my little tool here, tool here uh, to draw, but anywhere that is down here and, 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 and west of this line here is my thing, got a little thing, thing on uh, for me there. Um, this, this thing doesn't always work the way we want it to. Um, if you're west of 57, we'll put it that way. I don't need to draw and be fancy about it. If you're west of 57, uh, you're in the clear here for tonight. Uh, the severe weather threat is done west of I-57. And uh, even for areas here, probably 
you know, getting into Douglas and uh, Coles County, you're seeing the back edge to come through. Right now, I would say four counties we're watching, Edgar County, Clark County, uh, still Crawford, Jasper County, as the storms kind of exit the area. That, that's about it. That's that's the last little bit of real estate that we that we have to worry about here um, from the WCIA market. Indiana, though, going to be dealing with these storms here all night tonight. That still is that concerning storm. Um, let us know if you guys are getting any reports of what happened down in Robinson. Uh, and got a feeling that they have damage down there. I don't know if you guys have, have heard anything. Um, Jessica, um, what have you heard out there? From so we actually, we've been trying to get some information. Our reporters are calling. Fire department picked up, said hello, and then said we need to go now. They raced off of the phone. I think that's just as a tornado was passing through and police numbers aren't working. So we are working to get information about what's happened in Robinson, but don't have anything I, just yet, Kevin. I don't I don't think that they have power down there. I uh, think yeah. that they've probably lost power. They probably um, the phone lines, um, power lines down. They may be you know, trying to communicate via ham radio or the cell phone towers. I, we had a tornado come through there on the southeast side of town. Um, so that's going to be concerning. Concerning here. Um, let's see. Let's go back out to Brandon here, right now. Brandon, you're at the scene of that I-57 accident. Two semis, two of bus roll over. Uh, looks like you've got somebody there with you. Um, who do you got there? And uh, let us know what you're, what you're finding out. Yeah, Kevin. So we were talking about that tour bus earlier. This is Pat McNeely. He's the father of one of the people who was on that bus. There's roughly 30 or so people on there, some of them taken to the sports complex. This is Pat McNeely. And, and Pat, tell me the, the conversation you had with your son and, and, and kind of what was going on as that tornado came through. He's headed back from Champaign to Kankakee with uh, his girlfriend. Um, he said the bus pulled over on the side of the highway, stop, wait for the storm to pass. And it seems like a tornado or a, 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 a burst of wind from the tornado pushed the bus on its side as they were sitting stationary. And it, it, did he talk about any injuries that he... He said it didn't seem like anyone was hurt. He thought maybe one woman had a separated shoulder, um, but he wasn't clear on that, so I'm not 100% there. And how's your son doing tonight? He's, he's fine, just probably a little shaken, ready to go home. As I imagine everyone else is on that, right. that was on that bus and yeah. those two semis right there. Yeah, what a what a terrible evening. Yep. That's that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, hopefully uh, he gets up here safely. This semi right here actually is overturned on a power line. Now I'm going to run down some information for you from uh, Illinois State Police as well. They just wanted to reiterate the Interstate 57 is closed between Paxton and Rantoul due to that weather-related incident. Now, you can take 45 south to Route 136 and back on southbound 57 or Route 9 westbound to 47 southbound to I-74. So this closure is going to last several hours. These cars are not going anywhere. First responders still on the scene here. A few ambulances coming in and out pretty steadily. So we'll make sure to keep you updated on this situation as it develops. And thank you so much for talking with us, and we're so glad your son is safe. Thank you very much, you guys. Have a good evening. All right. We'll send it back to you all in the studio. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it uh, out there, I-57 there, uh, south of Ludlow. All right. Uh, just back to the weather here real quick. Tornado warning does continue for Edgar County, Paris. That storm on top of you. It is coming down, pouring in Paris. Uh, and we got a lot of uh, viewers that watch us down there in Edgar County. We appreciate you guys. Hope you guys are staying safe. But you should still be in your shelter right now. Uh, we are not given the clear yet. And in, even east of Paris there in eastern Edgar County, still dealing with this, still very intense line of storms, a lot of lightning, very strong winds. We saw some power flashes earlier with a similar line that came through down in Effingham County. And uh, Jacob, I know that Jacob has some other reports uh, coming into us here of some damage and, and some other things that have occurred. Uh, Jacob, um, this came through, you know, some of our other counties here to the west just in the past half an hour, and they've had some other damage tonight. What have you heard? Let's get my mic. There we go. Um, just kind of checking through some of the reports. First off, National Weather Service saying they can't read their their automated weather site in Robinson. They think that the circulation passed very near where it was. A lot of reports starting to come in. We've got power lines down on Catlin Indianola Road, west of Georgetown. Uh, there's a farmstead four miles south of Rankin with 
Heavy damage reported, a machine shed destroyed on Route 1 in Iroquois County Road. Um, the tornado warning for Edgar County is going to expire here as the storm moving quickly on through. We've had a number of folks say on Facebook uh, that they are... Um, They've lost power in that area, and I'm continuing to check those as well here on the live stream. Uh, lights flickering in Paris, latest check here. Um, power out in the Robinson area. I've seen a few folks say that there has been... Um, seeing some reports of Robinson damage now starting to trickle on in, and, and that's concerning. Uh, in Neoga area, there's reports of semis that are blown over on the interstate from the straight line winds. Uh, I want to mention also, Kevin, and if the news team is listening, this is from the Chicago area. Our next star affiliate to my state line, uh, that's going to be uh, WTVO in Rockford. Uh, they are reporting that a theater in Belvedere, that is the northwest Chicago suburbs, it's on the, the interstate 90 that takes you up towards uh, Rockford. They are reporting that that um, a roof collapsed on concert goers as high winds swept through the area. There was a heavy, uh, there was a band scheduled to perform. Uh, 20 ambulances have been called to the scene up there. So there's a lot of damage and a lot of devastation everywhere. We also can, if we can, just show that the scenes here from Ludlow. Uh, so far, the reports are a handful of minor injuries um, in that area. And so if we bring that uh, camera, the uh, um, Bring that shot from Ludlow Falls, if you can, can look at it with what's going on. Um, if we can bring that, yeah, I just want to, I just want to see what they're looking at here. You know, for that bus to roll over with 32 people on board, and the latest we've heard, only two injuries or, or two, maybe three out of that. that. That's pretty fortunate for us here in Central Illinois. The Sangamon County Sheriff saying no injuries there. Um, this has been a this has been a wicked storm here for the area that's moving on through. I think the reports from Robinson as they come on in are not going to be good based on the track of that storm. They issued a tornado emergency for that. That is the only the fourth tornado emergency for in an Illinois area uh, since they were created in 1999. Um, and one of those was Taylorville back in five years ago. So you think about the type of tornado we're talking about. Um, you know, quite a. a, a, a not, not a great day here for, for lots of folks in central Illinois. Time now is 929. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take over on Max 1 and uh, work on some graphics here and kind of show what's going on. First off, a lot of folks are all clear now. Vermilion County, Douglas County, Coles County, Effingham County, all clear. In fact, that warning polygon just dropped. We are working on a sliver now for basically Edgar County uh, and then areas east of Cumberland County towards the state line. Notice that cell out ahead here. There's still a confirmed tornado. That tornado touched down west of Robinson um, from the initial reports has at least damaged in the area of Robinson and carrying off to the east and it will continue to do so here. A lot of folks are clear. A lot of folks are just fine on the back side of this. Now, I do want to mention here, let's pull up the wind real fast. You know, we talk a little bit about the wind on the back side of this. Uh, some of these measured wind gusts recently here, the wind switched to the west behind that line. Still a bit of a south and west component, but as it does so, we may still have some wind sustained 30 to 40 miles an hour overnight tonight. And some of the gusts out there have been even higher. Notice those gusts turning more westerly here. There's a lot of gusts here, 30 to 40, and some spots will be higher than that. There's more wind energy that will fill in as that front swings on through. So while while the severe threat is over for a lot of us. There still are going to be strong gusty winds as things move on through something that we're going to keep an eye on. I'm going to take a look at regionally here. We have spent a lot of time in central Illinois and rightfully so. Uh, but from earlier this afternoon, I know there's been bad storms down from Arkansas and into North Memphis where they've had significant damage. Um, Little Rock got hit hard. We've had a lot of damage in Iowa and northwest Illinois, and we've had these storms rotate on through. Very powerful low pressure here. They've had a blizzard warning in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and it's the last day of March here, just to give you an idea of how strong this is. And we'll get this out of here and be finished for the night, and then things will be quiet as far as the severe weather front goes through the weekend, although there will be a lot of cleanup and a lot of reports from the news team about what happens across the region here in central Illinois. So I wanted to share that as we are winding things down here, and we'll be winding things down in time for the 10 o'clock newscast as well, just so, so we're aware of that. Uh, it will probably be 
be an extended coverage version. You know, I know there's some news to talk about, but the news tonight is weather, folks, for a lot of areas, not only here in Central Illinois, but across the um, across the region where we've had those issues. Let's talk here real quick. Severe thunderstorm warning continues uh, for a few areas. Of, you know. East of Paris now, getting that line out of here. Five minutes, it'll be across the state line. Even down here in parts of uh, Jasper, Crawford counties, we get that line out. Uh, things will be wrapping up on the severe weather front here in a little bit, but I know that we'll have a lot of uh, stories to tell, and I know a lot of folks that have been uh, in today's <clears throat> storms are going to have stories to tell here uh, moving on forth. So, real quick, the tornado watch is being... Oops, let me... That's on me there. Let me... Real quick, get that up. And that tornado watch is going to... Trying to fix things here. There it is. The tornado watch is technically still in effect for a large swath of our area. Now, the National Weather Service, they've had their hands full in these storms down here. We're going to see a lot of these counties clear. Now, in the bottom corner of your screen right here, uh, there's been that crawl that's close. been pushing on through uh, with the watches and whatnot. There still is technically the tornado watch, but we're done for most all of Central Illinois. Watching Clark, Crawford, maybe a little bit of Jasper County here, not much longer, even a sliver of Edgar County, and then that line will, will continue to push on through. So, Kevin, uh, we're about to wrap up in the severe threat side of things here, but certainly a lot of cleanup. Uh, it's been a, a very violent day for folks, not only here in Central Illinois, but also across the region. A lot of people impacted by uh, one of the largest, I think could go down, one of, one of the larger tornado outbreaks we've had in a while, not just for Illinois, but like you said, all those other states as well. But we are entering the, the final stretch here, as Jacob was showing us. We're still just kind of watching this area into southeastern Edgar County, just that back edge now pushing through Paris, but rural portions of Edgar County there uh, along I-70 to Marshall, still some pretty strong winds and stretching down there uh, to the south into, uh, again, Jasper and Crawford County still dealing with some of those uh, other thunderstorms along that uh, kind of secondary line. That initial cell that came through Robinson that we are pretty confident has done some damage now well off into Indiana uh, but this is kind of the back edge so again what we're probably going to be doing here in the next few minutes is, is is taking coverage back and I know a lot of you possibly you know missed your shows for tonight and and uh, we apologize for that but we needed to get on this uh, vital information that hopefully helped a lot of people you know stay safe and informed and you know maybe not scared because we were able to let them know uh, what was going on uh, with these storms and so again we're just going to watch this uh, storm is now on the indiana illinois state line there into edgar county and into clark county down there so a lot of this pushing off to the east and yes it is some great news that uh, things will be winding down tonight but we do have a feeling that people will, could be waking up to damage in the morning in some areas that you know it was dark when these storms came through maybe they don't know about the damage and we've not heard about a lot of reports because of power outages maybe cell phone towers impacted by these storms and so i think a lot's going to start to trickle in for us here tonight into tomorrow morning and we're going to try to gather up as much information as we can for you coming up in our 10 o'clock newscast um, so we're going to be wrapping up our coverage here Tune back in at 10 o'clock. We all got to catch our breath. We've been going live here for over four and a half hours, and we're going to try to gather up as much as we can here for the 10 o'clock newscast. An update along I-57 there where the accident occurred uh, with that tour bus and a couple of semis. An update from Sherman where the first tornadoes occurred earlier uh, tonight and uh, a lot of other things in between that have occurred as well we hope to bring to you. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and uh, just uh, let things... Uh, kind of go back to regular programming as we watch that line clear the area stay with us for a complete update at 10 o'clock tonight i hope you all stayed safe with us we've got much more coming up in the meantime we'll send you back to regular programming have a good rest of your night